Hello fellow survivors and welcome to an interloper walkthrough video where we're going to go through a random spawn and then go all the way up to killing a bear. Maybe even more than one bear? We'll have to see. And uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. If you this is your first time you're watching my channel, I have multiple videos are showing how to master interloper and have different spawns like ash canyon tim wolf mountain hrv and also the desolation point one and this one is basically another one of those except we're doing a random one and also i'm going to play it more risky and more greedily more in line with how i normally play myself and i'm going to show you how you can actually get fairly good loot and warmth and the bow pretty easy if you plan ahead you do need to take some risks but it will be worth it if you can manage that being said though you can also just watch this video for entertainment and it's not meant to be a guide that you have to follow it's just a way that you can play interloper if you would like to do so so in this uh, walkthrough we're going to show you how to use blizzards to your advantage uh, how to collect pelts and guts early on how to scare off wolves, how to hunt wolves, as well as hunting bears and dares and rabbits and quite a few other things. I'm going to do this in a 16 day interloper walkthrough, which might lead to a part two if you're interested. Anyway, that's enough of this intro. I hope you enjoy the video and stay awesome, survivors. Hello fellow survivors and welcome to Interloper Made Easy. Today we're going to start a brand new Interloper run and you can join me on this journey and I will show you how to do it and I'll explain everything I'm doing along the way. Before I hop in, if you're new to this channel, I have very many other videos about Interloper with specific spawn locations, especially Tim Wolf Mountain, Ash Canyon and Hush River Valley. So you might want to check those out for those specific uh, spawn locations. In fact, if I spawn in those regions in this run, I will restart just so we can have a different spawn location. And uh, with that in mind, we're going to hop into a random interloper run. I am going to play it a bit differently than my other videos. I'm going to play it a bit more greedily, how I often do things. Um, but that's to show you how you can play interloper, how you can get things going fairly quickly and be you don't really have to be afraid of anything if you know what you're doing sometimes there's luck involved but for the most part it's just knowing where to go and what to do so if you're new to interloper then this video might help you get better and if you're not new to interloper if you just enjoy watching then uh, <laughs> yeah i hope you enjoy the ride but yeah anyway let's hop right in uh, we're going to start a new game and we're going to go interloper and we're going to, uh, 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 this is always a tricky wing. The, the, there's no difference between them, but uh, most people prefer Astrid. I used to prefer Will, but I now have moved over to Astrid just because Will, when he gets tired, he pants very loudly and it's a bit distracting. So we're gonna go for Astrid. And then we have the feats. Uh, it doesn't really matter which feats you go for because they have minimal impact on the game. A very common one to go for is this one, the Fire Master, which will allow you to bypass using Tinder and start fires more regularly. But as I'm going to show you, that's not really necessary. You can easily uh, master fire without having this skill. One second. Yeah. <clears throat> Another popular one is this one. If you struggle with food, you should consider maybe having this. But uh, it's again not strictly necessary although if you do have this one um, then it can be useful but if you have survived 500 days you probably know what you're doing by then this one is the best one in the game in my opinion so i always go for this this is called fusion it doesn't sound like much it only gives you two percent permanent warmth bonus doesn't sound like much but it helps a lot because in the early game it, it might make the difference between being cold or warm when you enter a cave or a house 
because often you will balance along the zero point uh, in the early game. And in the late game, it, it might uh, impact your coldness as well, because if, if you're out in the afternoon in the late game and you are fully geared with bare uh, coats and everything, you can be warm or almost warm. So if you have this, you might be warm going outside an interloper, if you can imagine such a thing. So I'm going to have that, and the other, the other one doesn't really matter that much, but I usually go for this one, the Snow Walker, because it recharges stamina faster, which means you can sprint more. Useful in the early game, because you're going to sprint a lot to avoid the cold, um, and somewhat useful in the late game if you want to move between bases. So we're going to go for those. All right, and we'll call this Europa Made Easy. It would be embarrassing if I died. So let's see where we spawn. It will always be random when interloper. You can spawn anywhere in the world except uh, Bleak Inlet. You can't spawn there. I have heard a few people say it has happened to them, but that's probably a bug. You can do it on custom, though. On regular interloper, you should not spawn there. It has never happened, and I never met any streamers who's ever had that happen to them. But uh, it, so if, it's probably a bug if it's happened to you. But we can spawn anywhere else in the world, and we will always spawn outside. So let's see where we are. And again, if I spawn in HRV, uh, Tim Wolf Mountain, or Ash Canyon, I'm going to restart, and I'll just cut that part out. So let's go. All right, this looks like Pleasant Valley. Which it is. This is actually where I spawned on my 500 day run. So we're going to go, uh, I think we're going to go to the plane crash right away, which is up here. So we can go straight down here to the river, but I'm going to head up to the plane crash right away. Because then I can get some good clothing very early, which would be fantastic. It should be up here. It's not too hard to get to. By the way, uh, if you're still watching, hopefully you are. Uh, I failed to spawn four times. <laughs> I said if I spawned in uh, Tim Wolf Mountain, Ash Canyon, or Hush River, I would restart just to have a different spawn. And sure enough, I spawned in Ash Canyon twice, and then Tim Wolf Mountain, and then Hush River Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to restart. Uh, I had to uh, restart uh, four times just to get a different spawn. Uh, just because I wanted something different. I've done those regions so many times. But now we have Pleasant Valley. We're heading for the, the plane crash, which is over here. If you get this spawn, however, you can also just head down to the river. Just right down here is the river. And once you find that, you can easily find the uh, farm. And it should not be an issue at all. But we're going to head over this hill here and find the, the plane crash. We're going to take some coal damage, but that's okay. We just want the clothing. That's what we want. See, now we're approaching the plane crash. Right down here is the path to the farm. You might actually be able to see the farm from here. Uh, it's kind of like in the distance between the trees over there. It's too cold. Yeah, so you are going to be cold for a little while. So you're just going to have to bear with. And uh, I'll make you. I'll make it up to you, you know. So here we are. We are at the plane crash. I'm actually going to do this that's better and then i'm changing the light in my room oh that's better okay so here we are at the plane crash uh let's grab all the berries that we can because we can use these for well they can be used for medicine to cure pain but they are most importantly used to level up cooking and also keep us warm mm. okay. of course we can't make a fire yet because we don't have matches any colon? No. There's also a deer carcass here usually, which we could harvest, but I don't have uh, matches yet, so we're going to leave uh, that. But usually there is a deer carcass right here. Yeah. We might come back to this deer carcass if it doesn't uh, despawn. Just a disclaimer, I am playing on version 199, and there is a hotfix planned soon that might address the carcass thing. So if you're watching this, it's quite likely that the carcasses will not despawn, they have fixed that, but um, as of this version, they sometimes do despawn as like a bug. Let's grab all the feathers, all the feathers we find. 
because the feathers will be used for arrow crafting later, which we need to do. So this is a good spawn because we have these suitcases right away and we're going to start warming up right away. Baseball cap, which we'll put on to avoid frostbite. I'm going to loot all these suitcases. And we might find, uh, if we're lucky, we'll find a wool toque, which would be great. And how are we doing with coal? Yeah, so I would prefer to not get hypothermia. But if I do, then I do. Jeans, that's great. I think there is a suitcase over here, isn't there? No, but there's a stick. You always want to pick up all the sticks you can. There's never enough sticks in this game. Vest. See, this is a great spawn, isn't it? A lot of people don't go here when they spawn in Pleasant Valley, but it's a really, really good spawn for this particular reason. People are often a bit afraid of the cold, but you shouldn't be, because health lost is health to be recovered. That's something that you need to learn when you play Interloper. You have to learn to not be afraid of the cold. Yes, cold is the biggest, um, the biggest danger to your health, other than an animal attack, of course. But you can heal, remember. Uh, you can't heal it in one day. If you if you become low on health, you're going to need two or three days to heal up fully. But you can heal. So don't be afraid of it. Some people are highly averse to uh, taking damage, and it is run from... Uh, shelter to shelter and of course that's absolutely fine I mean it's 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 not the wrong way to play the game because you need to survive and a general rule is if you are still alive then you are not playing the game wrong <laughs> because you are alive but uh, in order to really take advantage of especially the early game of interloper you need to be aware that taking a little bit of cold damage is fine because you can just recover it as long as you don't take so much that you're going to struggle to survive, is the thing. <clears throat> and now if I can, I would like to go to Skeeter's Ridge over here, where there is uh, tools. But it might depend on the wolves that are there. Did I loot this one? No. Scarf. And we have the Polaroid which looks to be a single hill. We might go there. Nothing else. Let's get this corpse here. Nothing there. Let me see another suitcase. There's the wool toque. Nice. And then over here, by Skeeter's Ridge, there's always tools and a first aid kit, which may not have anything useful. Only problem is there's usually a wolf or two here, so we have to be a little bit careful here. There's one wolf. We can sneak past it though. We don't have any weapons or fire or anything to fend off the wolf, so we have to be a little bit careful here. How are we doing? Yeah, we're fine. I'm going to try to get past him. First I want to check out this burned out house over here. And then I want to go to the basement. Once I'm out of this region, the wolf won't be an issue. It's not really going to follow me, at least not much. There we are, the wolf has his back to me, kind of. Yeah. I'm not too worried about him aggroing me as long as uh, I have space to move. It's kind of patrolling at the moment. If you crouch, the wolf has severely reduced aggro range. So if you're near an animal and you crouch, it's way less likely that the wolf is going to detect you, or any animal for that matter. So if you crouch, uh, he's not going to see you until you get very close. He could still smell you though and detect you and start moving towards you. And once he gets close enough, he's going to see you, whether you're crouched or not. And be especially careful if you have your back turned like I am now. It could just show up around the corner. Yeah, and there should be tools. Has tools, quality tools. That's okay. great. We'll grab those that might be useful for arrow crafting. And then there is also this. Got some food there. The wolf. Only problem is the wolf is right now exactly where I want to go. I want to go into this basement over there. Okay, 
that was a little bit lucky that the wolf ran, ran away. Uh, if he had done that, I would have uh, I would have waited a little bit for him to pass, or I would have just ignored this place. But yeah, we're gonna go in here. Let's see if we can warm up in here, which we can. We're now warming up. Uh, let's loot this, and then we'll sort ourselves out. Accelerant, that's great. This we don't really Nobody need. Nobody needs this anymore. And we'll loot this and this, and we're going to head to the farm, we're going to loot Pleasant Valley. And uh, then we're going to start moving to a forge if we find a hammer. But if not, we'll probably head somewhere else and find a bedroll. We might head to Riken Forge, for example. Let's see. Now, this game loves to hide stuff, so look, make sure you check everywhere around corners and things. There might be something you missed. And... I wouldn't be surprised if I missed something, so if you see something that I missed, feel free to shout it out, because it happens all the time. Okay, let's sort this out a bit. So we got two different vests, but I'm pretty sure this is worse. We found some gloves, and we found boots, or shoes rather, that I think are slightly better, so we'll put those on. You can see we have plus 7 degrees warmth bonus already, because of the stuff we found. And we no longer have frostbite risk. I mean, we do, but... It's for the hands, and I just put gloves on. So I'm not going to get frostbite at any point now. That was a, a risk. I was getting quite close to that. And if this had been higher, uh, I would have rushed a bit faster through the plane and gotten indoors much faster. Because if you, if you get frostbite, you lose the health permanently. This was a little bit close, but because I found the gloves and I could get in here, uh, it was fine. All right, we're warming up, but uh, I think I'm still going to go outside. I don't really want to wait around in here, especially with the weather being fairly clear. Before you leave, because there's a wolf around, make sure you crouch before you leave to reduce aggro range in case a wolf is outside. <coughs> All right, then we can head down. You can actually Skyrim or Billy Goat down over an edge over here, but we're not going to do that. We're going to just head the usual way, which is over here. And we're going to start moving towards the farm. <clears throat> I'll try not to cough too much into the mic. It's one of those things that I do, but you, you'll hear it now and then. <laughs> okay, so interloper is one of those difficulties that often is intimidating to people, but once you try it out, you start getting a feel for it, and it's not actually that hard. You might struggle a little bit here and there, but... It's okay to die. Remember that it's okay to die and you don't have to feel like you've done something wrong. When you try out interloper for the first time, you're going to die a lot. That's why there's an achievement in the game to survive one day an interloper. That's because it's so hard. <laughs> People die in it all the time. So when you try it out, you know, regardless of whether you finish this video or maybe you're trying it out right now, you should always give yourself a little bit of credit because it's difficult and you will die a lot. You will make a mistake uh, early on. You'll get frostbite, you'll get cold, you won't find enough food, you didn't keep moving enough, you won't find a hammer. A sudden wolf came over the hill when you didn't expect it and suddenly before you know it, uh, you're dead. These things happen all the time and Every time you die an interloper, you're going to learn something new. Every death is a lesson. Every death marks an improvement in the game. So when you die, you just think, why did I die there? What happened? Okay, what happened was I got cold. How can I fix that next time? And so on. So you just figure out why you died and then try to avoid that next time. And next time maybe you die from something else. But... Each death is a slight improvement towards it. I will tell you though that the key to surviving interloper in the beginning is to keep moving and also map knowledge. You need to know where to go. If you don't know the maps in the long dark, then interloper probably isn't the best difficulty for you because you don't know where things are. You don't know it. If you don't know the entire world, but you know most of it, yeah, then sure, you can try it. You don't need to know every single region but you need to know like the key ones you need to know at least uh something like 
Coastal Highway, Fall on Muskeg, and Mystery Lake fairly well. Uh, you should ideally know uh, the, the Timwolf Mountain so you can get to the summit, things like that. <clears throat> you don't need to know everything, but you need to at least feel comfortable moving around the world so you know where to go. And you need to always keep moving in the early game. Don't set up a base. On any other difficulty, including Stalker, you can stay in one region. You can stay in the region you spawn, especially if you find a weapon in that region, and you can just stay there. But on Interloper, you can't do that. It will be very temporary because you need to make the bow as soon as you can. It's not that you're dependent on it. It is possible to survive without weapons in this game uh, by harvesting uh, plants and by getting wolves to hunt for you. But that's kind of a backwards way of doing it, but it is possible. I'm harvesting these curtains to get cloth, which I can use to repair things when we get to the farm, because there's usually a sewing kit to be found at the farm. I think that's it for the stuff. I want to see if I can also snag maybe a rabbit or something. <clears throat> uh, we also have a bunch of mushrooms here that we can try and grab. Like the Fermi risk is cured, but that's going to come back. <laughs> I'm grabbing all these mushrooms just because we want to cook them. And then we're going to keep moving. So let's see here. Uh, I, sp I hope there's some stones there, and then I can grab these, these rabbits. Uh, otherwise, I can't grab them. A load of mushrooms here. So we're going to grab all of these just to level up cooking and also um, get some warmth. Because the thing about making teas, if you cook teas, they will actually um, warm you up if you drink them when you're hot. All right, I'm gonna grab these. This will attract wolves, but uh, the, the fire will not be an issue until I get to the farm. <sighs> I think there were two rabbits, weren't there? Or was it just one? I thought I saw two, but I could be wrong about that. This rabbit kill can uh, attract wolves. So I'm going to use this deer to scare it in the direction I want to go. And I actually don't want to go that way. I wanted to go up there, but okay. Because of that, and I'm going to change the plan a bit. So now we're heading towards the uh, farm. We're going to head the ASAP. We're going to find quite a lot of loot there. And we're going to get settled and figure out a plan. If I hadn't found these gloves here, uh, what I would have done is I would have gone to Skeeter's Ridge. And I would have stayed there a bit longer to start warming up to get rid of the frostbite risk. And then I would have moved to this hut that I was in just now. And I would have probably slept maybe an hour or two in the bed just to get rid of the frostbite risk. And then I would have moved on to the farm. And at the farm, it would have been very likely that I found a sewing kit. Or at the very least, I can find some more cloth. And I'll probably find a sewing kit either in the farm or signal hill or something like that. And then I can make some gloves or a hat and the frostbite risk would go away. You can also just get rid of it by just sleeping. We're gonna grab all these cattails. Uh, that's another thing for interloper if you're not familiar with it already. The bread and butter of interloper are cattails. Cattails weigh very little and they give 150 calories each and there's loads of them. There's about uh, one, almost 2,000 of these in the game in total on Interloper. So you can survive for quite a long time. And if you use a starvation tactic, you can survive for probably hundreds of days on just cattails. The starvation tactic is that you, you deliberately starve yourself. You don't eat any food at all, and then you only eat before sleeping. Uh, doing that tactic can be useful if you are struggling with food and if you feel that your biggest issue in interloper is food then you 
could consider doing this. Basically how it works is that hunger will only reduce your, your condition by 1% per hour. So if you're awake for 15 hours in the game, you're only going to lose 15% health. That's not that much. So one thing you can do if you struggle with food <clears throat> is to just don't eat during the day, take the 15% damage, and then when it's evening, you eat enough calories so that all your meters are full enough and you have enough calories to sleep, and then you sleep for 10 hours. And if you sleep for 10 hours on interloper, you will regenerate 32% health. So you restore all the health you lost. So that is one way that you can conserve food and you can live longer by eating only before sleeping. That is one way to do that. However, uh, I'm going to go for well-fed right away and basically try and get the well-fed bonus immediately. The reason I want to do that is that it increases my carry capacity and early in the game you will uh, you'll be carrying a lot of stuff that you find. So I want to be able to carry as much as I can as soon as possible. I'm going this route over these little rocks because there could be wolves there and I'm carrying a rabbit and I don't want a wolf to suddenly ambush me. Looks like there's no wolves today. How are we doing with hypothermia? We're fine. We'll ch quickly check over here. This is presumably a deer carcass. And we'll quickly just check to see what we got there. And we'll get these feathers. We can't harvest this, at least not yet, but I might go out and do it in a minute. Have a couple of stones. Sometimes there's a little misglute in here. Not today. And before I go inside and check the farm out, I always check these little this little campsite area here. Because um, sometimes you'll find little bit of things. So here's some wood. Uh, you can sometimes find like a drink or something here, but not today. Okay, so we're going to go inside. And this should warm us up. In the basement here, in this house, you'll find the only guaranteed matches in Pleasant Valley. So if you do spawn in Pleasant Valley, your priority should be to get here to the farm. That's your number one priority. Get here first. Get here as fast as you can. Because once you get to the farm, you can get into the basement, move over here, and right here on these shelves, there'll be matches. And these matches are this always really there. Really. And now you can make fire and that's great i'm gonna loot the rest also i'm just gonna see here i always want to loot this first because it's easy to forget there we have our sewing kit fantastic so we can already now start repairing a few things let's start looting everything here okay, anything now. we have a hacksaw that's great this is one of the possible hacksaw spawns uh it is possible i'll just mention this now it is possible to look up where all of your loot is. So if you are playing on Interloper and you're struggling to find the tools you want, such as hammers and hacksaws and so on, what you can do is try and look around until you find one of those things, until you find one hacksaw or one hammer or one bedroll or, or a mag lens, one of those high tier items. If you do that, you can then go on something called the loot table, which you just Google it. Uh, well, actually, I can put a link in the description of this video. There's a spreadsheet put together by some streamers uh, that tells you where all the loot is. The way the loot works in the long dark on Interloper is that the world will randomly choose one of four sets of loot spawns. So uh, that means that there's four different sets of loot spawns. So for example, if this hacksaw is here, that means that the hammer will be in a specific location somewhere else and the bed will be in a specific location somewhere else again and so on. So uh, that means it's already predetermined where all of the major loot is going to be. You can still find lots of random loot all over the place, but the major loot like hacksaws, hammers, bedrolls, maglands, uh, fire strikers and some other stuff, they will all be in predetermined locations. And if you struggle to find your loot, what you can do is look up those loot tables. And then now, for example, if you found this hacksaw, I can look up on the loot table. Okay, I found a hacksaw in Pleasant Valley Farm in the basement. 
and then it will tell you where all the other loot in the world is. So if you find it very hard to find your tools, you can do that. I'm not going to do that, and I don't actually know the loot tables by heart. I know a few of a couple things by heart just from experience, but I don't know them. And the reason I don't know them is because I find it more immersive to not know where they are. If I were to memorize it, then it would kind of break the immersion. Once I find one item, I'd be like, "Oh, I'm on loot table three. Snow now the bedroom will be me. there, and the hammer will be there, and that's not so much fun. I prefer just looting the world naturally. Of course, through experience, you learn where to look. You learn where things can spawn and you start looking those places. But I don't know what loot table this is. I don't know now where the hammer is or the bedroll and that sort of thing is. I don't know. I know several locations where they can be and we'll check those out, but I don't know where the spawn is. How you want to play it though is completely up to you. You can use the loot tables or you cannot do it. You decide. There's no wrong way to play this game. Not really. <laughs> and I'm just mentioning these things so you know these options exist if you do want to use them. We need a pry bar, so we have not opened that locker, so we need to find a pry bar. <coughs> there is a whetstone. There's often a book here as well. Uh, quality tools, <laughs> again, as the book, shooting guide, which we won't be needing that, so we're going to burn that, most likely. No clothing. Alright, now we can head upstairs and see what we got. I also like to pick up the scrap metal I find, because this can be used for crafting arrows and things. We can still get scrap metal by just using our hacksaw, which we'll probably end up doing, but we don't need to do it right now. Okay, another benefit of actually spawning Pleasant Valley. A lot of people hate Pleasant Valley. It's one of the regions people really don't like uh, because it's it's big. Yeah, I think it's actually the biggest region in uh, the game, and it has so many blizzards. You know, people really hate that. Uh, but the one benefit is that there will be a can opener somewhere. There's usually always a can opener in. Uh, oh, here we are in the farm. The, it's you can usually find maybe four can openers in uh, in the game on Interloper, and one of them will always be in the farm. So there's a few things you always find in the farm, and that's the can opener and also the uh, matches. So that this makes it worth going, going here because that means I can now open these. If I didn't have the can opener, then if I open these, I will smash them open and I will lose calories. And you don't want that. You can look in here, but it doesn't look like there's anything. We're running a bit low on uh, drink, so we need to make some water soon. We're warming up now. We'll probably sleep here for a bit too. Then we have the cooking pot. Let's see how we do. We have a drink. We'll drink. This has low condition, 20%, so it has a risk of food poisoning. But with drinks, you don't actually get food poisoning. So even though it has low condition, you should be fine. So we're going to drink that. And the pot is great. We're going to take that. Some people don't like using the pot. Uh, oh, maple. But I do. It's heavier, but you can cook just so much more. Let's see. Maybe I'll take the note. And while we explore the rest, we're actually going to make some water. So I can't make any torches. So we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. We're going to use a book. And we won't use the accelerant because we got 80% chance. So we'll just do... Do it normally. Actually, let's take the charcoal first. Because I might use it for mapping later. Okay, so let's start a fire. 80% chance. Let's go. And we made it. So let's put on uh, this, the fur. The fur is very heavy, so I like to get rid of that. And I'm also going to grab a few torches. It's always good to have quite a few torches. I like to have at least three, but in the early game, uh, I like having more than three because you can use these torches now to make a fire without spending matches. And you can also chain torch them. You can throw a torch on the ground and light another torch with it. 
That means you can carry the fire for a long time. Uh, this is probably how many of these? We'll, we'll grab one more. <clears throat> we might actually grab one to go around the house to see better. So let's put all this stuff on. Oops. Yeah, good. And we're gonna make some water. It's gonna take two hours to do, but these are going to take 40 minutes. Let's put on some sticks. And let's grab a torch just for some extra lighting, and we're gonna look around some more, see what else we can find. We have the backpack. Uh, we don't need that. Sometimes there's loot under here, like a little ketchup chips or something. Uh, on low difficulties, you often find a rifle around there. Then we have another sewing kit, that's great. A hat. And let's check the cabinet, nothing there. Uh, more wood. Uh, sometimes there's like a chocolate around here. Man, I could eat anything. Doesn't seem like there's anything today. We got a book. Uh, cooking book, that's great. Because we do want to get cooking to level 5 as soon as possible. Because once you get to cooking level 5, then you become immune to parasites. Which means now you can eat uh, bear meat and wolf meat without any risk. You can still eat bear meat and wolf meat now, of course, but there will be a risk that you get parasites if you do that. So it's uh, getting cooking level 5 will make things a lot better. Right, let's check upstairs. How much water do we have? Not much, uh, nothing at all, but we're making some. But we can also get water through the toilets. Looks like we have a ski jacket here. I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. What else have we got? Some of the socks there. Doesn't seem like the socks today. And we'll check here as well. Uh, I don't think we'll need any toilet water. Actually, we'll take half a liter of yummy toilet water, and I'll just drink it right now. Just to get hydration going. And we'll check this out. And the drawer. And then we'll see where there should be a plastic container. Here's one. I saw some ketchup chips. Okay. And here we have a container. Cabinet. Let's loot all this stuff. Uh, I don't know if we need anything else really now. We can loot some more cloth if we need to, but we don't really need to do that right now. I think we might do some repairs and then sleep one a night and then we'll go back Take out. Oh, coffee! That's great. That's going to make things easier travel-wise. Coffee is uh, limited on this difficulty. You'll probably find maybe five or six of those coffee cans. Uh, oh. So there's definitely, you know, they're quite limited, but they are very good. But you shouldn't be afraid to use them in the early game. I would like, I would recommend trying to save one or two for the end game just to have it in an emergency, but just use them. All right, we looted everything. Let's sort ourselves out. This is spoiled perfect. So let's make some more water. And we'll organize ourselves a bit. Let's start by eating something. <clears throat> and also we need to harvest this. We'll cook this. So if you want to level up cooking faster, you can use a tactical shredding. This is a good example of that. So normally, if I now click here, you can get half a kilo, or I can make one kilo. However, cooking is determined by a number of items cooked. So if you would like to level up cooking faster, there is an exploit you can use where you cook smaller meat. So one way to do it is to go up here to the max, 1.1. If you now go back, boom, boom, you see it will allow you to harvest 0 0.1 kilos of meat. And you can then harvest that like this. And then you get this tiny piece of meat, which you can then cook. And then that will give you a cooking point. And that's how you level up the skill faster. Uh, I don't do that because I think it's kind of an exploit. Like it doesn't really make sense to me that you level up faster. Uh, but it is one way to play the game. And a lot of people use it. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no judging in this game. So if you 
if you cook by shredding, if you look up loot tables, if you look up maps, if you alt F4 when a wolf is charging you, you know, that's your way of playing the game. And there is nothing wrong with that. You play it how, how you want. Okay. Uh, then we also, we have some more to harvest here. So let's do that, 15 minutes. And I would like to get the hide. That's going to take 40 minutes. Yep. So that's a good timing. We'll grab this. Let's make some more water while we're after. If you have free time and a fire going, make water. That's a good rule. Let's harvest this as well. So Don't get too drained now. There we are. This should all be done. Uh, we have a lot of water now, but we can still make more while the fire is burning. So we're just going to keep doing it while we do other stuff. Let's put some more wood on here. Put that on and this. And let's eat something. Uh, and let's also cook the food I just harvested, which is this. It's going to take 40 minutes. And I'm going to eat something. I'm going to eat... Uh, mm, I think it'll be alright if we get food poisoning, but I'll start by eating this. I'll wait a little bit. And let's harvest the guts here. Let's drop this to cure while we will do that. And let's get this. Should take 30 minutes, that's fine. <clears throat> Frost spider risk is gone. We'll drop this too. And there we are. Nice. And let's try. I don't think we need more water now. Let's get this and we'll eat this right away as well. There we are. Get that. Alright, so now let's get situated a bit. Uh, so, we have a few items here, and this is the best, and then after that it's this this one here, the cotton toque, so we're going to equip that. And we found a ski jacket, and then we found a thin wool sweater, and I think this one is... no, it's worse. And then we have these shoes, which are mostly terrible. So we're going to do some repairs, because we have quite a bit of cloth, we have 12 cloths, and we can get more as well. The wool toque is the best hat in the game. If you get two of these or one and a rabbit hat, you got great stuff going. So I'm going to repair this. It's going to take 30 minutes, but it's going to give us basically one degree warmth. So we're going to do that. We're spending. Oh, it's all failing. How's this looking? 47. Okay. Let's keep trying. We're basically going to get one warmth. Uh, oh wow, it's really struggling today. There we are. Now it worked. So we have a new one. We have more warmth. This one also is in bad conditions. So I'm going to repair that too. And one other thing that would be good to do while we are doing this is we can craft some of these things. Because uh, we have plants and so we can make tea. We have bandages actually. We don't have bandages. So we're going to make some bandages too. Let's see. Yes, we'll just do that first. So I don't forget. I am too tired to think straight. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open some of these cans we can cook, because these will uh, we have the can opener, so this will give us a cooking point. You can eat these without cooking them, but you won't level up cooking if you do so. So we're going to put these to cook. Let's put all of them. I think there's three. And then while it takes about 15 minutes for them to cook, so I'm gonna make a Raishi tea or cut these things rather while we wait. There we are. There we go. And now these are ready. I'm gonna pick it up, I get a cooking skill. And if you want to keep these warm, what you can do is you can actually place them next to the fire like this. Let's keep this fire going. I would like to keep this going for a little while at least. And see now it's uh, staying warm. So you can actually place these things here to heat up. And then they will stay warm until you use them. Of course they will burn. But you can actually get around that by resetting it like this. See I, I right clicked it. And then I placed it again. And then it, it will restart the timer. 
Alternatively, you can just move it outside of the fire like this and then move it back in and it will do the same. As you can see, it's a little bit inconsistent what it does, but that's just how the game is at the moment. This is something they'll probably change at some point. They tried changing it before, so at some point this might be different. So if you're watching this in the near future, for all I know, it's not working like this any anymore. But it doesn't change anything uh, because the point of it is that you can keep things warm. We don't need that though, so we're just going to take it. Okay, let's make a tea. Now we can start a chain reaction type of thing where we can put a tea here to uh, to cook, which will take roughly 15 minutes. And while we wait for that to cook, we'll cut some more of these mushrooms. And we can kind of do that as long as we want. So here's one that's done, and then we'll put the next one on, and then we'll do the same, and we'll just keep doing this. And that way we get lots of teas. And we can just keep doing this. We're going to keep doing this until we basically run out of fuel or mushrooms. Make sure, however, that you check the stove every now and then, because the fire could go out. And if it does, then you have to actually make a new fire. And you don't really want that. We're going to keep going. <laughs> we can make another one, then we'll put some more on. Okay, we now have finished all the mushrooms, but we can make rose hips instead. With your pain. Having the uh, uh, mushroom teas is also very helpful. Because... Now we can cure food poisoning. So if I eat something now that gives food poisoning, I can drink these and it will cure it. I still need to sleep it off though, but that means I can now eat something and if I get food poisoning, then so. meh, so what? Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna keep doing this for a little while. We can make two more, that's great. We get a whole bunch of teas. <clears throat> and there we go. Let's keep this out. It does cost 0.25 liters of water, so uh, that's another reason why we had so much. Very much more. Okay, we can put another one. I want to make some coffees too, so we'll put this on. Uh, there's nothing else to like craft now, I guess. I think I'm gonna make some more bandages though, because it's handy to have four bandages, because then you have them for bleeds if you get attacked, but also for sprains if you want. That. So that's all the plants, but I'm gonna make a couple coffees as well. Is there anything small I can do while we wait? Oh yeah, we can harvest this. Gives you a stick. <coughs> I don't think there's anything else of small things to do. Mm, we can harvest this. Uh, harvest takes 10 minutes, that's good, yeah. Get rid of some clothing that we're not going to use. And let's make another one. And we can harvest some more stuff. We'll do some more repairs in the morning. And I think we'll make one more of these coffees. Let's put a stick on there. And I think that's enough. And we can harvest one more thing. We can harvest, I think this is not that good. Oh, it takes 45 minutes. Okay, don't forget that. Yeah, we'll leave the rest then because it's going to take too long. We need to harvest some of these shoes. Uh, they only probably they take a while to do, but that's uh, okay. Well, let's do this then. Take that. Uh, let's just grab a torch. We'll leave these secure. Uh, we can cure them here, but I like having them over here. A little bit more overviewable that way. And I might go out in the morning and try and grab this uh, deer, but we'll, we'll see. So now I'm going to sleep and recover some health. I'm also going to fill up my hunger meter. And if I get food poisoning, I can cure that food poisoning now. So let's sort ourselves out food wise first. Uh, I think I'm going to eat most of these low condition things because then I get rid of them. Some of them are quite heavy, like these peaches are very heavy. These peaches, for example, yeah, they weigh half a kilo, but yeah, it's the, 
they are quite heavy for what they are. So let's eat this as well as the peaches. And this one too. And we can have one of these drinks as well. I don't think I'll be needing these cans, but we'll sort that out in the morning. And let's have a drink, make sure we're fully hydrated. And now we'll sleep. We'll sleep for 10 hours. The maximum you should sleep on interloper is 10 hours. The perfect number is something like nine and a half hours, but uh, we can't do that. So basically that means you will get dehydrated right at the end and you will recover the maximum amount. If all your meters are full, you will recover, I think it's 32% if you sleep 10 hours because of sleep multipliers. The way the game works is that the longer you sleep, the more health you regenerate per hour. Uh, on Voyager, you can recover all your health by sleeping 12 hours, as long as your meters are fine. And on Stalker, you can more or less do the same, but it won't be completely full. On Interlope, you can't do that. You can't get more than 32% health in, in one sitting unless you use a herbal tea or birch bark tea to boost things up, but we don't have that. So we're gonna sleep 10 hours and we should recover about 30% or so. This is why I said, don't worry about the cold, just take the damage and then regenerate it later. You do want to avoid getting frostbite though, but that's about it. All right, so we're going to have another drink here and then we're gonna sleep two more hours just to get our stamina back. So let's do that. <clears throat> and then we'll do a little bit of repairing while we have daylight before we keep moving. Because the more warmth I can get, the easier it will be to traverse. So we're going to repair this. This has 24. So let's do that. It failed, of course. And it failed again. At the lower level of repairs, it uh, fails all the time. Try it again, repair some more. Uh, mending is probably the last skill you're going to get to level five because it's going to take a while. All right, uh, how long to harvest this? 20 minutes. Uh, let's not do that then, let's repair this instead. It is worth repairing uh, clothing in the very early game. Oh, it's failing all the time. But it's worth trying to do this because of how the warmth works on Interloper. On Interloper, the world gets gradually colder every single day until you get to day 50, and it will decrease by 20 degrees in 50 days. So that means that right now, uh, let's say we're outdoors, we're indoors now, but let's say we were outdoors and the temperature was 13 degrees. That means that 50 days from now, if I step outdoors, it's going to be minus seven because the world has gotten colder. Uh, that means that, to simplify things, it basically means that the world gets half a degree colder every day. That means that if you are in the early game of Interloper, and right now we're on day two, if I can get a warmth bonus up pretty high uh, quickly, then I'm ahead of the curve. So if I can get 10 degrees bonus warmth, which I have now, I'm kind of 10 degrees ahead of the game and it's likely that I can walk around and not get cold as easy. So that's why I'm repairing these things. At the very least, the things I think I'm going to use. So Ski Jack is very good. I'm probably gonna be using that for a while. I'm definitely gonna be using this one. The sweater here is also very good. So I'm going to repair that too. It's gonna to take an hour, but it's worth it. That's good enough. Let's have a drink. See, we made a lot of water, but we, we needed it. And then uh, these ones, oh, they're fully repaired. The other stuff, I don't think it's worth. Well. These will be replaced eventually. These socks are terrible. Uh, these are looking good already. This one is okay. Uh, these shoes uh, are not the greatest, and I'm gonna find better ones, but they are pretty close. So I got 11 degrees warmth bonus now, which is fantastic. And we're on day two. <clears throat> so let's get ourselves situated a bit. This will be a temporary base uh, where we're gonna leave a few things. So we're going to put a few things in here that we don't need. So we have a few duplicates of things. So we don't need, uh, I guess we don't need this book at least for now. We can leave this as well. Uh, we'll take all of this. We have some extra, we don't need these shoes. We could harvest these shoes for cured leather which we can use to repair uh, better shoes that we eventually find. 
but I don't think that's necessary. It's not really worth doing. It takes so long to break down. We can just uh, <clears throat> we can just come back here one day when these are probably going to be ruined, and we'll harvest them then. And we might not even need it. We'll take all the food with us. Uh, we got an extra uh, tool, so we don't need that. We have some extra cans we don't need. Uh, I guess the rest is okay. And feathers, and that will take all of this too. So a little bit of stuff to take with. We're also going to take this with us. And we're also going to now have a look at our food situation. Let's eat a few things to keep moving, because I want to stay ahead of the well-fed. So let's open this dog, this dog food. Some yummy stuff. <laughs> And uh, let's drink this. You are not thirsty, okay. Uh, well, we'll keep this then. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna keep moving and we're gonna get more loot. We're gonna find a hammer. So I want to look for the hammer in Signal Hill and also in the barn. Uh, maybe we'll go to Thompson's Crossing, but we'll see. How much water do you have? Two point, we might take some toilet water actually. We'll take all of this. You can never have uh, too much water, yeah, really. Okay. Let's have a look at this deer outside, because if it's not terrible weather, I might try and harvest it. By the way, this little porch here, where we are right now, uh, this counts as indoors. So if you get cabin fever and you stay here, not going to do anything. Let's go outside, and as you can see, because of the repairs I did and the warmth bonus, it's now late afternoon and I'm barely cold. It's great. It's uh, really, really good. And let's see here. What's this? Nothing. And I think I am going to harvest this deer probably. Let's see. How long does this take? It takes a long time. But the weather is so good, we might not even need a fire to do this. So we're going to try. We're going to try and do exactly that. It's frozen, so it's going to take a long time to do. But because, uh, because we are so doing so well with the uh, warmth we might not need it but we're going to try though let's do 10 minutes first and see if we get cold doing that uh, it doesn't seem like it so i might try this we're going to drop this food and guts because it's going to attract wolves if i carry it so i'm just going to drop it down then we'll try and grab this hide if i could warm this up that would be better as you can see because of the clothing i found i am not cold so i got that and i'm also going to try and do these guts Yes. And we spent two hours doing this, but we didn't need a fire because of the warmth. It's starting to get cold now, though. There we go. Now we have that as well. We smell a lot, but that's okay, because if necessary, we'll light the torch. However, I would, generally speaking, recommend not carrying a torch as you move around like this. Because it takes nothing that you try to loot something and then you accidentally try to light the torch instead. And if you try to light the torch and you fail, then you're going to waste the match. Uh, the only exception in the game is if you have a noise maker and you light it, you don't actually use a match for that for some reason. But um, other than that, so walking around with uh, the, the torch like this can lead to errors where you lose a match. So it's best to take it away. And maybe equip it if you see a wolf or think a wolf is going to come at you or something like that. We're going to go this way towards the barn because often there's rabbits here. I don't see anything right now though. Okay, then we'll head towards the barn. Uh, we might go via the birch forest. Uh, we don't really need to, but in the birch forest over there, uh, you'll find a bear and sometimes a moose, so it's not a very hospitable place, but you'll find a bunch of birch, and you can use that to make birch tea, which will regenerate health and make it even easier to travel. Now I can hear wolves here. And they can probably smell me from miles and miles away because of what I'm carrying. And that is one reason why you normally might want to not do what I'm doing. Because here it comes, you can smell me, as you can see. Because, see, I smell so much. Because I picked up these guts and these rabbit hides and things. So the wolves are going to detect me from miles away. Um, so that's the danger of doing this. 
However, wolves are actually not that much of a threat. You can just uh, scare them off with a torch. So I'm not too worried about them right now. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna check in here quick because there might be wood in here. And worst case, if a wolf came after me right now, I would probably try and lure it towards its deer, and then I would try and get the meat from the wolf. <clears throat> Nothing here. All right. There's the other wolf. I'm not going to encounter this wolf right now. I'm just going to go inside and deal with this wolf later. <clears throat> All right, let's check in here. There's usually tools there always. We already have tools, but I might just take it. It's simple tools. Uh, we'll see if we carry it, though. And in here in the barn, there is a guaranteed stim. There are, uh, let's see, I think it's 12 guaranteed stims in the game on Interloper. The stims will always be in the same locations, except for two that are bonuses that uh, are random, kind of. So uh, the stims will always be in the same locations. They might vary where they are in that location. And one of them is here. Let's find it first, and I'll tell you where the other ones are. Uh, I think it's one in four places it can be here. Let's open these. You won't find tools in these, but you can find other things. Uh, let's also, before I, if I, in case I stay here for a while, I'm going to drop these things so they can cure. Nice. And then we'll go and check around here if there's anything. The stim is usually inside the car or on a shelf or underneath a, um, a, uh, uh, workbench. Let's see here. Nothing on him. Let's check the car. See what we got inside here. Nothing here, but we'll check this. If you want, you can sleep here. Even though you don't have a bedroll, you can sleep in cars. So you can just choose uh, with the radial menu, choose campcraft and bedroll. So it says you have a bedroll, even though you don't, you don't actually have one. But it's basically letting you sleep on the car seats. So I can sleep here if I want. And you warm up. Uh, in a pinch, if you're outdoors and you don't have a bedroll and you don't have shelter, if you find a car, what you can do is you can start a fire next to the car, then go inside the car and then sleep, and then you'll be warm sleeping in the car, provided the fire doesn't burn out, of course. <clears throat> Where we go? Here we go. These, which um, we could take these, but it's not really much point to it because the only real use these have, you can make gunpowder, which we, you can use as accelerant. And if you get the noisemaker in Blackrock, you can use this to make gunpowder and then make the noisemakers. So uh, in the long run, there is an argument for picking this up, but for now, we don't really need it, so we're gonna leave it behind. Instead, we're gonna find this stim. We might come back to it. If you, if you want to remember, where this is, like I let's not forget that it's there. What you can do, and what you maybe should do, you should use your journal more often. Go in the journal and you write something like uh, loot to pick up later, um, uh, fertilize. I think that's what it was in barn, for example. Uh, also, like uh, quality tools in PV farm, right. And then you know what to do later. So you should use the journal if you can. If you're playing on console, then I get you, then that's a bit harder to type, or you can use your phone or something. All right, so let's see here. Uh, it's the container. There should be one, one or two of these are usually locked. This one's locked. This one's not locked. This Another two. We don't really need that, but we'll take it. And then I think the stim now is underneath this uh, thing here. Underneath uh, here is usually the stim. Yep, there it is. This one's very hidden, so easy to miss. So let me tell you about the stims then. <clears throat> if you want to use the stims in the early game to get some health or maybe climb up a rope if you're tired, go for it, just do it. But if you can, try and save them because they are great for emergencies. If you suddenly ran into a wolf or a bear, you didn't expect it, you're bleeding out, you need to get out of there, you can pop a stim and just run away. So these are great to just have on you as an emergency. Uh, now, where are they? They spawn in fixed locations in the world. So let's just go through it. 
using the map. Let's get this chocolate bar also. Let's go on the world. So <clears throat> where are the stims? We'll start in Desolation Point. In Desolation Point, there is a stim in the lighthouse. I can't go closer because I don't have the, it mapped out. But there's a stim in the lighthouse. Crumbly Highway, no stims. In Coastal Highway, there's no stims. However, in the cave, the Cinder Hills Mine, between Coastal Highway and Pleasant Valley that connects like this, there is a stim inside those mines. So many people consider that the Coastal Highway stim, so to speak. Bleak Inlet doesn't have a stim unless you randomly get one in a first aid kit. The ravine does have a stim. We'll probably go get it. It's down here where the train crashes. You need a rope to attach to the rope anchor. And then you climb down and you'll find a flare gun and a stim in there. Pleasant Valley has a stim in the barn where we just went. Tim Wolf Mountain has a stim on the summit. Ash Canyon has a stim uh, just before the gold mine. When you go into this little area where you can also find a bear coat on the way to the gold mine, you head over towards the rope anchor where you go down to the gold mine. But before you get there, there's like a little cave. And just up from that cave where you came from, there is a stim laying on a little in the snow. Some people have said it's not there, but I have never not found it there. But if you don't find it there, you'll usually find a stim in the first aid kit in Molly's uh, Miner's Folly instead. Black Rock has a stim in the uh, prison, usually near where you find the vest. Mystery Lake does not have a stim. Fallen Muskeg has a stim on Marsh Ridge, or where it's called. It's up here. That's where you go. If you go to Milton, like if you're going to Mountain Town, you have to go through there. And this little like little cave there, uh, where there's a backpack and a campfire, you'll find a stim there. Or the Broken Railroad last. Mountain Town has a stim in the plane crash. So if you played story mode, you know where the plane crashes when you're playing as Will. Um, that one has a stim there. Ash River Valley does not have a stim. So you won't find one there. Broken Railroad is unique. You can find up to three stims here. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit weird. You will usually find one stim in the hunting lodge and the other one will be in the ravine down here. You have to climb, attach a rope and climb down to the ravine. You'll usually find a stim there. And you can also find a stim inside a crate uh, in the maintenance yard. This is a specific crate. Um, at the back of the maintenance yard, you go up some planks and at the top of it, there are some uh, green boxes and the green box all the way at the end a smaller box can have a stim in it. So those are all the stims. I hope that was useful. And it got dark because I was talking so long. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna light the torch because we need to cook a few things anyway. We got some meat and things. So we'll just light the torch. <clears throat> I also need to check a few more places. Let's see here. Yes. This is now that possible hammer spawn, so we found the hammer. Perfect. So we are now good to start forging, and we're going to do that right away. I didn't open these, I don't think, so let's do that. There we are. And this, so that's everything looted here, I think. Yes, so let's go down and make a fire then. Uh, we use the book and this, we won't use accelerants, no point. So I, I spent quite a lot of time talking there, so I uh, <laughs> I uh, kind of lost track of, Come on, little fire. of the time. Come on. We're going to make a little fire, warm up some teas and things. There we are. And I did put some stuff here to cure, didn't I? Yeah, so that's curing there. So let's put the raw meat on here. Let's get this and we can maybe put something else on here like we can put... Uh, we don't really need to make a coffee but we don't have that much. Well, I have a bit. Well, let's make one liter of water. Let's put on some sticks. Let's harvest the bad stick. And I think we'll probably keep moving. I don't think there's any point staying here really uh, at least not for now we might have to do Thompson's Crossing uh, but I think we'll probably because we have the hammer now 
I think I want to head to Signal Hill because it's just uh, easier. It's dark, but it's not that dark, so we're going to wait these 40 minutes until that's ready. Let's have a little look here. Uh, we might make a coffee. God, anything right about now. Let's see. Let's first eat some other stuff. We'll eat. Uh, we'll eat this. And also this. And a few of these. And I'll also drink one of these. Alright. Is there anything else? I think we're good. Yeah, pretty much good. How long has this got? 30, 30 minutes. I uh, could maybe... I can't read. That takes an hour. I don't think there's really anything to do. I could repair something, but it's not really worth it. How long does this take to repair? 30 minutes. I mean, I guess we could do it. It will get slightly more warm for doing it. Yeah, okay, we got that. Oh, it sounds like it's a blizzard outside. And uh, you know what? <clears throat> this is going to sound very strange. But it's actually a good thing that it's blizzard outside. Because then we can... Um, let's eat this right away. We can travel while having all this smelly meat on us and not have to worry about wolves. It's not great. <laughs> so we're going to do that. Uh, if you are new to Interloper, don't do that because if you get lost it's going to be very painful. But if you know where you're going it's not a harm. The easiest way to do it is to just head out of this barn and find a road and then follow the roads and when you find it turning to the right you follow that and eventually you'll get to Signal Hill. We might not even need to go to Signal Hill because we have everything so we might just head to Mystery Lake and head towards the forge right away. Uh, I might actually do that. Signal Hill has great loot but we don't really need to go there so uh, we might just head to Mystery Lake right now. It, it should be possible to do it. Let's grab all of these. I'm probably going to drink a coffee. And let's grab all of these as well. Welcome to Zach's uh, walkthrough where he says, Oh, it's a blizzard. That's a good, that's great. All right, so we're going to try and find the road out. Here we have these like house things. And we're going to head through find the road. So you can see this little dent on the, on the side here. That means I'm following a road. I'm going to get that to find the main road. I mean, I know more or less where to go anyway, but I'm going to do it the easier way. Which is to follow the, the main road. Look for the sides. To my left and right, there's these like little lumps of snow. That means I'm following a road. There we are. So we found the main road. Now you want to turn left. Let's drink a hot coffee. And you'll see we'll gain some warmth. And I'm going to wait for this to recharge. We're going to follow this. Uh, the, the fastest way right now would be to go straight this way. But because you, if you're watching this, you maybe aren't that confident in doing it, we're going to do it a different way. We're going to just follow the road instead. Now, wolves will not be out in the blizzard. You will not be bothered by the wolves uh, or bears or anything. Unless the wolves were already near you when the blizzard started. In my case, they weren't because they were... Um, I was indoors and I went outdoors. However, if I was outdoors and the wolves were near me, then they could have aggroed me. Uh, but now that won't happen. So we're going to run through this blizzard. Just follow the follow the road until it bends to the right. We're just going to follow this for a little while. We're taking a slight detour, but it's just easier to navigate this way. We're still not cold because we're drinking our teas. It's the benefit of having all these teas. Did I just 
I hate being cold. So let's keep There's going. Really it should be coming up soon. I think it's there we are. I think this is this is it. So if you continue along this road now, let's drink the tea. If you continue straight ahead now on this road, then you'll get to Thompson's Crossing and you can stay there. But you can also go this way. This should be the road right here. And this will eventually lead you to Signal Hill. If you played episode three, <coughs> you'll know this is the route you take to Signal Hill. You'll often get ambushed by timber wolves going here. But this will also take you through to the cave that leads to Mystery Lake. If you try this out and you get lost, and it's perfectly okay if you do, uh, and I, it has happened to me too, I have a few times done this and then I got turned around, like especially in places like Hush River Valley, and I'm like, oh, where was I again? Uh, if this happens to you, just find a or shelter if you can but if not just find some cover find a tree or a stone or something and light a fire and get warm and then just stay there and stay warm for as long as you can if the fire burns out and you are cold again then keep moving keep moving and light another fire if you have to and just keep doing that until the blizzard uh, runs out this is probably cold soon, so we can. This is probably the last tea we can drink, and then it's going to be uh, cold. Is the coffee still warm? It is. Let's, no, we're not thirsty. Okay. We should be over the hill here now. And let's head down here. We're going to sleep at the dam, you see. We might even find a bedroll on the way there. Keep looking to your left and your right to see if you see these little hills, these little piles of snow. See on my right, there's these little piles of snow. So that means that I'm following the road. I can still see them on my right. So I'm following the road right now. Is the coffee still hot? It's not. So we're out of tea to drink, but we, we're just now going to start getting cold. We are still not cold otherwise. I'm now going to start hugging the left side of the wall. It's a little bit easier to follow, and eventually we need to turn left as well. Oh so you're looking for a bridge. <clears throat> Once you find a bridge, then the exit to Mystery Lake will be on your left, just after. And on the right, just before the bridge, is the uh is it called pensive pond i think where there's a fishing hut and a potential moose spawn but we're not gonna go there we're gonna head to mystery lake so we're gonna keep running this is why you see why i chose the snow walker uh feet this is why because we basically can run 20 minutes not 20 minutes 20 percent more because i chose that feet that's why it's so good if not, we would still be way, way back there somewhere. Effectively, I can run a, a one-fifth as much, so every fifth run is free, I guess you could say. We're still looking for the bridge. We haven't got there yet, but we're close. Even if we somehow walked over it and missed it, this road would eventually lead us to Signal Hill. Here's the bridge, so we found that. We're crossing a river now. There's a cave just to our left here, which we could enter, but that is a bear cave. The bear won't be there right now, uh, but we could still go there. But I'm going to walk a little bit further until I see some rocks and stuff on my left. Go a little bit further here. Fatigue, yes, that's fine. And it should be over here on my left now. There we go. And here's to see this tree here. This fallen tree, that's a good indicator that we can now turn left. And we're going to head this way. And we should be able to find the exit up here. Let's keep running until we find a wall, pretty much. And it 
should be up here. Uh, we have the corpse there as well. And there we are. We found the cape. <clears throat> there you go. That's how you use a blizzard to your advantage. Of course, as you can see, everything is wet. <laughs> we can do this in the meantime, just to stay slightly warmer, but it doesn't make a big difference though. We need to light a torch because we can't see anything. We could also light the fire to warm up faster, but we don't need to. We're just gonna go through here. We're gonna pick up coal when we find it. And we're going to keep going. Go through Winding River. And then into the dam. But we don't need to sprint here because we'll just drain more of our stamina. And also we'll be warming up faster by just walking instead. But we're gonna go through this. Here we are in the atrium. We should find a few things there. And there's usually some coal on the right here. Coal is really powerful. And you should always carry two of these on you, at least. Uh, if you can. You, know, you might not be able to because you don't have any. But the coal is very strong. If you start a fire and then you put one lump of coal on then you will gain 20 degrees warmth from that fire. So if you are cold, if you're in, for example, this situation now, there's a blizzard going and you're a bit lost and you're not sure where to go. So you, you find, shall you find a little wall like this and you make a fire, you put on a piece of coal and it's gonna warm you up 20 degrees and you'll probably get warm that way, or if not, very close to it. And then you can, you'll survive. You'll be fine. So I highly recommend that you always carry one or two, ideally two, pieces of coal on you if you can. Nothing there, anything here? Nope. Grab these two. This pack is getting We're basically heading to fall on Muskig now. Uh, I would like to find some saplings though, so we're going to do that first before we do um, forging because it will just make things a lot easier. I could go this way, but there is not much there really, there's some cold, so I'm just going to keep going. Sometimes there's a deer carcass in here, so if there is that, I will also take that. There's the other little cave. There's usually some coal here too. Uh, we're going this way, but I'm just going to check over here quick for some more coal. Uh, the coal could be useful for forging also. It is possible to forge uh, with just four pieces of coal. So if you get to the forge, there'll always be at least four pieces at the forge when you get there. You can do it with four pieces. Uh, because it's possible to heat up a fire to 80 degrees before it stops and says you can't get more. If you then heat it up to 80 degrees and you put four pieces of coal on, <laughs> I realize coal on, and coal on, <laughs> um, you will um, warm it up to 160 degrees and then you can forge. Let's see. Uh, I might do this and warm up a couple of teas and then we'll head back out. Uh, yes, that's fine. But uh, generally speaking, that would require having like 80 sticks or a bunch of other wood. So it, it would take a lot of regular wood resources. So I'm not sure how much is worth it. I've never done that myself. I've only seen a streamer do it after we convinced him that like, yes, you can do it. And then he's like, all right. And he did Come it uh, <laughs> after we pushed him in chat. Uh, but uh, uh, usually it's easy to use coal. So uh, it's always nice to have at least six, seven pieces of coal. All right, so now, see, we're barely warming up at 10 degrees. But if I want, I can warm up more, put one piece of coal on. Boom, and it'll go up to 26 degrees. I'm gonna warm up very much. And we're going to actually make uh, 
some more coffees. We don't need to drink them, I don't think. Um, oh wait, that's uh, not right. It's this one. We don't need to drink them, probably, but we'll... Uh, uh, just gonna make them. There's a one wolf here in Winding River. Well, there can be two, but usually not an interloper. And now using the blizzard to our, our advantage, we can once again just uh, avoid the wolf. Winding River is pretty easy to know. You can't, you can't really get lost here. You're just following a linear path. If you come out of this cave and you have no idea where you're going, if you just go left the entire time, you'll still make it to the dam. Sure, you'll get out of the cave, you go the wrong way first, you go left, you get it to a dead end, hug the wall to your left, eventually get to a path, hug that, you'll end up eventually going around and around a bend. Okay, hug that, eventually you get to the dam. So even if you do a couple of wrong turns, if you go out this cave and go left all the time, you will eventually get to the dam. Okay, we're going to wait until we're maximum warmth, I think, and then we'll head out. These still have a little bit before they get burned, so we'll be fine. So we'll just wait a little bit. Let me have a little look at our inventory. We're doing fine with this. Nothing really that needs doing. We could use with some more cattails, I suppose, but that's about it. And now we could also get some old man's lichen, because we don't have uh, infection bandages. But that's about it, really. Cool, so we are pretty much completely warm again. We're also drying our clothes, which we could just do more of. These will dry faster if you take them off and then you leave them next to a fire. Then they will dry faster compared to if you're wearing them. They will also lose condition slightly slower if you don't sleep in the clothes. But most players don't bother with that. I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. Because it's just not worth the, the effort. In case the blizzard stopped and I didn't notice, I'm taking a torch with me. So let's head outside then. There we are. It's still a blizzard. So we can run a bit again. There's a few cattails here which we'll also grab. Should be one more on my right. I think there's some rose sips too. Uh, here. Let's grab all of this. And we can drink a tea already. I might drink one coffee, maybe. We'll see. Uh, in fact, I think we will drink one coffee because then we can sprint a bit more. So I'm gonna go to the right. There we are, now we're blocking the blizzard, but it doesn't really help us much because it's so strong. Let's drink one of the coffees. Get some fatigue back. We can, we don't drain as much when we sprint. We're still gonna drain it pretty fast though, just because we're heavy, but you know, it helps. The less we can stay out in the blizzard, the better, so. We're going to check this cave that's over here, uh, where the rabbits are, because that cave can have um, it can have a bedroll spawn in there. And if so, then that solves the bedroll situation. If not, there'll probably be a bedroll in Mystery Lake in probably the camp office or the hunter's blind or trapper's cabin. I think there's a fourth place it can be. I think it's a... Uh, is it the lookout tower, I think? I can't remember exactly. Well, if we don't find a bedroll here, we'll probably find one in Mystery Lake itself. There's a couple cattail sails I want to grab. This one too. And these rose hips. Let's continue over here. You can take a shortcut over here if you want. Doesn't really do much. This cool factor, but you can go over here. And you'll get to this cave a little bit faster. 
I want to grab uh, these because I want to have an antiseptic bandage ready if this should be necessary. Let's check out this cave over here. I have some more. I want two of these, so I need six in total. So I need two more. Let's eat a tea. Check this guy out. Uh, some feathers here, which we'll also take. And then we'll check out this cave, see if there's a bedroll. I don't think there is a bedroll. No. But there is this container. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to keep moving to the dam, but we're going to take a short detour. Because you can usually find maple here in Winding River by going up this hill on our right here. So if we go up here... Oh, here's two more of these. Fantastic. Drink another tea while we're at it. Drink the roll sips. We'll go up here. It doesn't look particularly traversable, but it is. Just head up here and we'll get to a little hilltop and there's usually two maple there, sometimes three, and some wood as well. Let's have a look here. Uh, oh yeah, there's mushrooms usually too. Which we'll also grab. Let's grab all of these. There's the maple. Speaking of mushroom, let's drink a mushroom tea. No, it got cold. Okay. We ran out, ran out of hot teas. That's fine. We'll start taking some cold damage now, but it will be fine. Let's grab this, these maple. We can start working towards making our bow. Do I, if I don't we do these. And then you just go over here, this little camp. We usually have some woods here. Uh, seems to also be some cans. That's great. Celebrant. Could be useful. And then we're just going to head down. If you're struggling, you can just crouch. Just crouch and you'll go down slower and safer. Less likely to get a sprain this way. There we go. Let's keep going. There's a few cattails around here, but I'm not really going to spend time getting them, except for the ones I just happen across. So let's go ahead. <laughs> it sounded for a second like there was a wolf there, but wasn't. See these rocks on the left there? This is the indication of the bend that's going to go up to the dam. I think we can safely run a little bit. <laughs> Fatigue buff ended, but... Oh. I need to find a place to rest. So let's go up here. Behind us now, up there, there's usually a... Uh, like a... Oops, sorry. Uh, up here. There's usually a deer carcass or sometimes a corpse up here, uh, but we're not going to go for that, of course, because it's, uh, well, it's a blizzard, people. There's also usually a deer carcass outside the dam. I don't think I've ever not seen it. Nah, maybe once. Maybe once I was here and it wasn't there, but it's usually there. We're quite tired, we're basically doing this through the night, but that's okay. And we're gonna keep going and we're gonna loot the dam and everything. The only issue is if there's a, a an aurora. If you are in the dam and an aurora hits, you are a little bit trapped because there are, let's see, I think it's three places. There's three places where you cannot avoid going on the red wires in order to get across the entire dam. And if that's the case, <clears throat> especially when you come from this direction, 
uh, there is a chance of death. The, the red wires will kill you. You can sprint across them and survive, but it's, it's very risky. So uh, if you're in here in the Aurora, it's better to wait it out. Just pass time until the, the blizzard ends. See, yeah, there's usually hidden loot in some of these containers here, but we're not going to go for that because you know, blizzard people, but uh, it's not really worth it anyway. It's like a backpack. We will, however, grab this. And we'll also grab the metal. And then to enter the dam, you now have to go over the ledge here. It's not very intuitive, and it's not particularly safe, but this is the only way you get into the dam. The door you went out, it locks behind you. One-way street, so you have to go this way to get back in. You see, this is a long blizzard. This has lasted quite a long time now. So if I had stayed put in the barn, I would still be in the barn right now. But I could have done that. I could have just stayed in the barn and slept in the car. It would have been perfectly fine. And then I could have gone the next day in the morning. But because I smell and I'm carrying all the stuff, I'm taking advantage of that and uh, covering some, some distance. Here is the deer. As much as I would like to harvest it, I don't think I can. I, I'm actually protected here, but it's not worth doing it. Not with this uh, blizzard this cold. We'll grab this. And we'll grab this as well. <coughs> Oops. And this. And then we'll go inside. And we're inside the dam. Great. All our clothes are wet and everything. Put this back on. Oh, I, I forgot to put this back on when I was out. It doesn't matter because it didn't make any difference. Uh, and actually, it was better to not have it on. Okay. We're now in here. The only issue with the dam is that there is nowhere to sleep. Let's give me one minute here. Uh, there isn't any bed or anything in here. So the way at, the place you need to sleep is actually in the trailers. We're going to look around though. Here's the other pot, which I would like. And then we're going to start searching. <coughs> All right. going to loot the entire dam. Why not take everything? We will loot pretty much everything. Uh, we might find extra hacksaws and things, even though we don't really need that either. But you usually find uh, a hammer or a hacksaw in here very often. It's very rare to find a coffee inside there. Very rare. It does happen though. Okay, we still haven't found a pry bar. So there's going to be some lockers we can't open. Okay, we'll take it. Okay. And let's check this. Uh, under here we have some more quality tools. I think I can use this. Uh, I'll just take it, but if I'm heavy, I'll probably leave it behind. But we're going to head to Fallen Musket to forge now anyway. And on the way there, I'm going to set up a base in either camp office or Trapper's Cabin. Probably Trapper's Cabin because in Trapper's Cabin, um, there's a chance for a moose spawn. There's a chance for a bear spawn. You have rabbits in there nearby. You have the, the coal of the nearby mine in there or the cave there. And there's also... Um, there's also a chance, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, there's also birch there, so I can grab those. I have died here once, I crossed these wires, and as I was crossing it, the aurora hit and I died. Uh, here you can find a hacksaw. It sometimes spawns right here, just so you know. If I hear the aurora, I'm just going to stop and freeze pretty much. How heavy are we? Yeah, fairly heavy. Might not do the entire dime in one go, but probably we will. <laughs> And then we'll sleep at least a little bit. See if we can find some food and things like that. Yeah, so now we're going to walk a bit slowly for a little bit while I'm crossing the dam. So let's 
do this. Well, this stuff uh, will come we in handy. Need, we don't really need that. But... Oh, the hammer. So, as you can see, this is another reason why you want to keep moving. You find all sorts of things. If I hadn't found the hammer back in the uh, the barn, you know, I would have found it here instead. And then you have the hammer. If not here, I would have found it somewhere else, like in the lookout tower, for example. Uh, you can, I think, you, yeah, you can find it in trappers as well. So there's, there's always a reason to keep moving. Oops. You basically want to keep moving until you find these things. So now I found the hacksaw and the hammer very early. But let's just say for the sake of argument that I spawned in Pleasant Valley and I didn't find the hacksaw nor the hammer. They weren't there. I would have done exactly the same thing I'm doing now. I would have head straight here, checked the dam, then I would check Mystery Lake, so you can find hacksaw or hammer there. Then I, if I if I still didn't find it there, I probably would go to uh, Milton or maybe Coastal Highway. Uh, just keep moving from region to region. It doesn't really matter where you go, although it's generally speaking good to have uh, the forge as a goal. So just pick a forge, uh, Broken Railroad, or uh, Fallen Muskeg, or uh, the Reich in a Desolation Point. Just choose one of them and start making your way there and loot everything on your way there. And eventually you will find uh, all the stuff that you want, you will find the tools. And then you can alternatively change plan if you didn't find it on the way to that forge you can change and go somewhere else it's if you didn't find it it's quite likely you probably missed it somewhere but who knows where that was right so you just keep looking so you, you keep moving and you use the resources that you find in order to keep you moving you look everywhere and you find a bag of crisps you find some maple syrup you find a drink you find some crackers you find some cattails and this is buying you time. It's giving you resources to keep moving and loot, 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 move, move, move until eventually you find the hammer and the hacksaw. The hacksaw you don't need to find because uh, you, you will find enough scrap metal. Like so, for example, see now I've found four scrap metal so far. I'm also going to find probably probably another four in... Um, Full on musk itself. So the hacksaw isn't essential, but it does make it a bit easier in that you can start cutting down saplings and stuff like that. But the hacksaw is not that important. The hammer is the most important thing. You really need to find that. So you just loot everything, get food, get resources, and you keep moving until you find what you have. And once you have that, then you're like, right, okay, I have those things now. Now I'm definitely going to this forge and I'm going to start preparing for that. And once you have the bow and you have arrows, you have become self-sustainable. Uh, and that's kind of like the beginning of the real survival experience. Now it is, of course, it is possible to survive an interloper without the bow. And there is an achievement called the No Weapons Challenge. Well, there's an achievement in the game that is to not use a firearm for, I think it's 50 days, or is it 25 days? Uh, but you can do that on any difficulty, so it doesn't matter for Interloper. But um, there is a no weapons challenge that some people have done on Interloper, including myself, where the goal is to spawn on Interloper and then survive for 50 days without using any weapons. No flare gun, no... Uh, um, and no bow. You can, however, kill wolves by struggles, that's fun, or you can lure deer into wolves, or you can kill rabbits with stones. So, unless you want to do a full pacifist and not kill anything. But it is possible to do that. You can survive by eating rabbits, by fishing, by finding plants and cattails, scavenge food. In a pinch, you can get the deer to run into a wolf, and then you uh, get the wolf to kill the deer, and then you scare off the wolf and eat the deer. So it is possible to survive without a bow, but it makes things a lot harder because you're way more limited in your resources. Let's 
let's see. Over there, there's usually some loot right there, that crate, but I don't really bother with it anymore. Back in the day, it was possible to sometimes find a fire striker there, but I have not found a fire striker there in like three years, so I stopped looking for it now. Uh, here there's tools sometimes. Yes, you do have tools. I probably won't take these. I'm just going to leave them by the entrance to the dam. Uh, so I'm not going to take them with me, but uh, they are often there. Not always, but often. Here we have our fire barrel. By the way, I'm sorry it's going very slow right now. But it's just so I can loot this stuff and also tell you things. <clears throat> we might loot the rest of the dam later. Uh, just do the next floor, but not the top floor, just because there's nothing we really need up there. And we're walking very, very slow anyway, so it'll be good to, um, to get to the trailers and get some sleep. It doesn't matter that we sleep through the mornings, because the warmest part of the day is the afternoon. So if we have a decent day in the afternoon, it's going to be just fine. Um, uh, traveling then anyway but I do want to check out some stuff here in this lower area and then we will go into trailers and sleep and then we'll be rested and we can start moving quickly again I could drink a coffee but there's not really any point to it it will just allow me to sprint a little bit it doesn't really achieve anything at this point so we're gonna leave that we'll just take a little bit of fatigue damage but not not much Another reason to not loot everything now is that there's still going to be quite a few lockers that I can't open. I can open this one, but not the middle one, I don't think. Okay, I can. What about this next one? No, can't open that. <clears throat> I will, however, right now, open the safe. Because this safe in this office here, or whatever you want to call this, the control room, it can have an air wrap in it. Air wraps are very rare, especially okay. in Interloper. Oh, that's such uh, you will only find probably three or four of them in total. I think on my main run I had three, but I'm not sure it could have been four. I'm not 100% sure on that. But let's say around around three. So they're very rare, uh, and you should always take care of them. <laughs> Priority to repair those. And you, you will usually get one in the uh, on the summit but it can also spawn in here so let's just try this I usually go quickly to see what it is and then go back looks like it was like 25 or something it was 20 27 27 36. Hopefully this fire won't burn out. Oh, it's 38, okay. Then we do it slowly from now. Until it clicks. I think this torch might burn out, but that's okay. There we are. Let's go. We this got maple syrup. Ready. That's good. No air wrap though. Okay, the rest of the dam uh, we're going to loot later. So a couple of things on the way out, and that's about it. We're gonna head to the trailers and sleep. Those are very heavy, very slow, and we don't need all of this stuff either. Yeah. Classic the long dark, uh, you don't want to leave anything behind, so we all have this sort of loss aversion to uh, to um, to loot. We don't want to leave anything behind, but we don't need it, so let's just, just leave it. I would like a storm lantern if I can find one. There's often one here, but not today. Nobody oh, pry bar. <laughs> now I can actually open these uh, lockers, which is great, but I'm not going to do that right now. But it's now good to have that, though. How is my water doing? I'm fine. Let's also open these while we're looking at it. Oh, herbal tea. Nice. That will make us level cooking and also we can recover more health, which is fantastic. It sounds like maybe the blizzard has ended. Let's open these. 
It doesn't sound particularly windy outside, but it could also be a consequence of me not having stepped outside yet. Okay, let's check this uh, suitcase here. And this, and also the desk, and then that's it. <clears throat> no, I won't do that. There we are. Okay, so we're going to leave a few things here because we don't need it. Uh, so, actually, start a new torch. That's barely any better, but. Alright, so stuff we don't need. We don't need. Uh, we'll take the books, but we don't need. Uh, we can just leave these behind. We don't need to carry it. This I do want to carry, though. Jeans, leave that behind. Uh, we don't need this. We don't need the other quality tools. We don't need two of these. Uh, we don't need two hammers. Uh, I guess that's it for now. The rest is quite heavy, but I would like to take this to the base. The rest can just stay here. Some tools and misc in them. Right. We're moving slightly faster though. Let's see what it's like outside. <clears throat> yeah, the blizzard has ended. I think it's still windy though, so this could blow out my torch. If that is the case, I need to be a bit careful. I might harvest this deer. Let's see, I think this will work, putting it here. Yeah. Oh, it blew out. Okay, well, let's try again. Uh, is this in cover? It's not. We'll try anyway, using a match. So I would like to have this deer. We have two accelerants, so we'll just do that. Uh, go. So we're just going to do this. And we'll harvest all this stuff. Wind ended, fantastic. Well, it slowed down at least. I need to find some place to escape this cold. There we are. Put uh, this on as well. That's 40 minutes. Let's also eat uh, this. It's heavy and everything. And we're gonna get the guts. Uh, one of the guts at least. And while this is missing, uh, not that much, but a little bit, we can make uh, Raishi. <coughs> we'll eat this. Wait for this, eat that. Have a drink. And let's see, we can maybe cook something. This sounds good. Let's make that and also a herbal tea. It takes 10 minutes. This should now take it takes 30 minutes. Okay, well, it's a bit long. Let's do this. Then. Take that and that. I don't think there's anything else we need to like cook. I guess we cooking level two. That's great. We're going to grab this hide. Oh, wind picked up. And we're also going to grab this. It's Must now morning. Alright. We can also, while we have this fire, we can make this. And we'll eat a, we'll drink a herbal tea and sleep quite a bit. It doesn't matter if it gets late in the day. Let's make another herbal tea. Any feathers? Doesn't look like it. Okay, if this torch blows out, I still have the option to go back there to my fire in case a wolf shows up. That was also one of the reasons why I did that, but for the main part, the reason I did what I just did was to take advantage of the carcass before it potentially deteriorates 
and I wanted the hides to start crafting earlier. I do smell a lot because I have the guts. The hides don't really smell, so uh, don't worry too much about the hides. That They're not going to cause a lot of smell. Uh, the guts do, though. So be careful with that. So now it's morning. If I sleep 12 hours now, it's going to be late in the day, but it's okay. We're going to sleep probably 10 hours, actually. So we can get as much health regenerated as possible and we can sp start sprinting towards places. Let's drop everything that needs curing here. Do this. Check all of this out. If there is anything. And then we're going to the sleep here. So let's start also by drinking one of these. No, you're not. Really. Okay. And then we'll just sleep. We'll douse this. I'm actually going to sleep 10 hours. It will be late in the day when we wake up. But that doesn't really matter because we're mostly going to run to the next base and then sleep and organize ourselves there. So that's that's okay. So there we are. It should still be daylight, but barely. And we have healed pretty much everything back up because of uh, because of that herbal tea. You see all of this. Let's also see this one is heavy. Hopefully we don't get food poisoning. That would be annoying, but if we did, we'd, we'd manage. And now we're pretty much full on food again. We can dump these, we don't need that. And we're a little bit lighter. We can also harvest this, we don't really need it. <clears throat> Pretty much full health. Fairly well rested. We're gonna take all of this with us. I wanna see if I can find... Uh, we'll check the other trailer also quickly, in case uh, there's something in there. But for the most part, we're going to pretty much sprint from now on. I would like to see if there's a bedroll somewhere. Uh, this is always there. We don't need it, though. Let's check in here if there's anything. No. In here, I don't see anything. Oh, there we are. Beef jerky. Uh, this, this is literally just a... Uh, Fireball. You can do gunsmithing on interloper if you really want to, uh, but it's kind of pointless. <laughs> but you can do it. You can use the lead of cars and you can make bullets. Pointless to do it, but you, but you can do it. <laughs> Let's get all the mushrooms. We'll level up cooking and get warmth and everything. And there's a lot of mushrooms there as well. Was there a mushroom? I don't think so. I have the work. It doesn't matter. We can also see if there's a moose spawn here because we can check the markings. I don't think there is a moose spawn here. I think I would have seen the markings by now. So that means that the moose in Mystery Lake, if there is one, is going to be at the unnamed pond. It can also be in Trapper's Cabin though. Uh, the, there's two special moose in the game where the moose can spawn independently of other moose. One of them is here. So in Mystery Lake, uh, the, it's the Trapper's Cabin one. So the way it works is that the moose in the long dark, you can always tell where it's going to spawn because it will have the moose markings. So if you look under trees, you'll find these brown markings that indicate that a moose is nearby. It might not be there at that moment, but it will spawn there eventually. So you can find out where the moose is by finding the mo moose markings. Okay, so far so good. However, there's two moose that do not leave markings on the trees. One of them is in Coastal Highway. In Coastal Highway, the moose that's by the uh, uh, by the garage, the Quonset garage, it, do it doesn't leave any any markings. 
So it can spawn there even though you don't see any sign of it. The other one is here in Trappers in Mystery Lake. That one doesn't leave any markings either. And that one is a little bit unique that it can spawn regardless of where else the moose spawns. So if I find a moose spawn here, I find markings here, or by the unnamed pond or whatever, you can still get a moose in Trapper's Cabin as well. So you can have two moose in one region. They won't be up at the same time, but if you kill one, you could get the second moose the next day in the other location, for example. So that's something you need to know. Uh, it can also be extremely rare. Uh, on my main run, where I have survived uh, about a thousand days, uh, I thought I thought it would not spawn at all. Here comes the wolf. Okay, we need to make a fire then, because we are not protected against the wolf right now. So we need to actually get the torch out, because we don't have a uh, flare. So I need to use a torch instead. I want to check for birch first. Any birch here? No. So what I'm going to do instead then is I'm going to find somewhere that has shelter and be ready to light a campfire if necessary. Here he comes. I think I will do that right now. Just light this torch here. Should be good. We're going to light this torch. And then we're going to pick two. Torch is still burning. We're going to scare off this wolf. And he ran away. You can also make a little campfire here. In case my torch blows out. <clears throat> the way this works with wolves uh, is uh, they are always afraid of fire. And you can scare them away like that. If I didn't have the guts and things on me, Wait, that didn't work. then that wouldn't really make any difference. The wolves wouldn't detect me. But because I have two stink lines on me, I'm basically attracting wolves from all over the place. Um, come on, little fire. Come on, Astrid. Uh, but I'm doing it because I'm pretty confident that I can scare them off. If it's windy like this, you need a flare, but I don't have one. So instead I have to make use of the cover that I have and then scare off the wolf. Wow, this fire really does not want to light. Welcome to the long dark. The way it works is that a wolf uh, will, if you aim at the wolf, oh, wow, come on, Nastri, this is insane. Come on, little fire. <clears throat> if you aim at the wolf, it will charge you. So if you aim at the wolf with a stone or a bow or a flare gun or a rifle, whatever, the, bo the, bear, the wolf will start to charge you. However, if you have a fire, so if you have a campfire, Perfect. Or a um, a torch or a flare, then once it gets close to you, it will basically give up because it's uh, it it gets afraid of the fire. Effectively, is what happens. As the wolf, so for example, now here he comes, and I can scare it away. There is, however, a chance that with a campfire, it could change its mind. So here it was okay, it ran off. But sometimes with campfires, but not with torches for some reason, it can roll a die and then it won't actually... Um, it will ignore the threat and attack you anyway. We're going to warm up here a little bit before we keep moving. I'm going to drop my guts so that it won't attract the wolf. The wolf is now not as interested. I'm going to take this opportunity to make a birch. And this is not going to be the last wolf that we encounter, so... <clears throat> Let's make another one of these. We can cook two things. Actually, let's make three. If a wolf is on you, if a wolf has aggroed you, like the one that it did now, if that has happened, then you should never pass time. You should never start crafting or anything, because it can lead the wolf to... Uh, start glitching around you and attack you while you pass time. So if that happens, you should not... Uh, you should be very careful and and not craft, uh, spend any crafting time or passing time. However, if you scare off the wolf and it gets afraid and, you know, runs away, sure I carry much more. then while it's running away, you can safely do crafting and things. 
I think we're going to keep moving soon, but I would really like it if this wind could die out. Because it would make my life easier. Um, I might just sit there and make some teas until this wind dies out. Just because it will be easier to travel. And I'll just take advantage of the fire and I'll make uh, one tea at a time. It does sound like maybe it died. It did. So we're gonna keep moving now. We're gonna grab some more torches too. And I wanna head to camp office. Because I wanna see if there's a bedroll in Alan's cave. Oh, it's not Alan's cave, it's the, the blind. I was hoping to be birch saplings there, which there weren't. Let's get these torches. And now we can go. See, now it's not windy and I have a torch. So now if I encounter a wolf, it's no problem. And I'm not even cold because of the, the combination of uh, the torch. Uh, it's not windy. And also the um, um, the clothing I have so early in the game. So we're not cold at all. We're doing just fine. I'm going to keep moving. Sometimes there's a deer carcass here. And if there is, I will try and get this deer carcass. Uh, again, just to collect my stuff for crafting later. But other than that, so we're going to keep moving. <clears throat> Let's see here what we got. I don't see any deer carcass. But we are going to check this uh, hunter's blind. Unless is that a deer carcass? It is a deer carcass over here. So we're going to get that too. Get the feathers. Very often if you start harvesting a, um, a carcass if you loot the feathers first and then start harvesting it, uh, whether it's meat or hide, it will sometimes trigger more feathers to spawn. And then you can loot those and you can do the same and get some more. I think it only works if crows are actually circling above you. Uh, it won't work otherwise. But uh, generally it will, it will work. Okay, I'm gonna harvest all of this first because then that can cook while the rest of the deer is falling. There we go. I actually need a few sticks for that. Let's also have a drink. We need some more water soon, actually. All right, so let's check over here. What have we got? Let's get the uh, roll sips and things too. Let's see what we got. We don't have a bedroll, but we have first aid kit, nothing in it, we have uh, nothing really, that's disappointing, but at least we have these roll sips. We'll possibly make some water here, but probably I will just make some at the camp office I think. see 40 minutes till ready so we're going to make this while we wait there we go and we'll make another one of these as well while we wait still have some time what a nice Nice night today. What a night. Really beautiful. And then so we can we can make another one of these. That's all cooked. And then what we're going to do is let's put another one on. Let's also drop everything that smells. I'm going to make a liter of each of these. And then we're gonna grab the hide. Looks like the wind is picking up. 
That should be alright. I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. 19 minutes. Uh, we can do this. We don't really need need the last gut, but while we're at it, we might as well harvest it. It's all dry. We'll do another half a liter on each. That should be enough. <coughs> and there we go. We have everything now. Look at all this. Let's just drop this while I sort some stuff out. Yeah, all this stuff we got. <laughs> I think we'll cook the rest of this later. Alright. Just give me one second. Alright, I'm back. So, let's get all of this stuff moving. We're heavy, but not super heavy. We got a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna eat this. Uh, and we'll eat this too. And we can go. We smell a lot, as you can see. <laughs> uh, full scent lines here. So we're gonna be attracting wolves like a magnet. But that's okay, because um, it's not windy and I have the torch. So I'll just scare them off. Wolves are very easily deterred with a torch. Uh, as long as you have one, you will never be attacked by a wolf as long as you have one and doesn't blow out. Uh, bears doesn't work particularly well against bears, although you can use fire to stop a bear charge, like a campfire will work. Uh, moose just ignores everything. But with wolves, you can safely uh, stop them. You can have uh, five wolves on you and you can scare them all away with uh, with a torch. Let me see if I can grab this rabbit. i also try and grab this rabbit. This for the pelts. Oh, he stopped moving. Okay. Get that one later. But I heard a wolf. Grab all these cattails. I think I saw some bird saplings too. But yeah, the wolves are not a problem. Even if I get swarmed by wolves now, I am perfectly safe as long as this torch does not flow out. Uh, if it does, I can make a fire like I did earlier, and that will work just fine too. Um, if you have a flare, it's even easier because the flare is windproof, and you can just use the flare to um, to do exactly the same thing but in wind. <clears throat> I'll try and get this rabbit too. I want the pelts for the gloves. I want all these things for food as well. Let's see him. Where did the rabbit go? There he is. Where are you? Is that it? I think he got scared of the torch. But not that, yeah, there he is. Come here, rabbit. There we go. Now we're too heavy to actually walk, but that's okay. Let's have a drink. To sprint rather. We will soon get well fed so we can carry more stuff. Uh, after we get the bow we also want to head to Ash Canyon to get the technical backpack. Let's see, I want these birch saplings there. I want them to cure while I uh, go crafting. 
Thermia's kicking in. Just get some more of these. We'll probably sleep in the camp office. And then we'll head to Trappers and dump the stuff. Probably. Uh, actually, we might not need it. We might actually base in uh, camp office for the time being. Just because uh, there's five of these saplings sent. I thought there would be a bit less. But five, that's plenty to make uh, arrows. I forgot to break down some metal in the dam. I was going to break down one shelf just for some extra metal. But it's fine because I have four here. I'll probably find another four or so in full and musket. And you can break down the uh, shelf that's there too. So in total I'll probably have like 14, 15, uh, well, something like that. And we need to make the um, the hatchet and the knife. But we can probably make like 10 arrows or something like that. And that's fine. Shouldn't be an issue. There comes the wolves. It is windy now though, so I'll have to be a little bit careful here. You can see the wolves ahead of me. We have a deer though, that is uh, blocking the path between the wolves and me. And they're gonna go for the deer, as you can see. I don't think it's too windy though, it's more like that the fog is coming in. We're just gonna keep walking. Here's the wolf coming towards me right here. There's the other one, you can see the glimmer in its eyes. If an aurora suddenly hits, that would be very, very bad. But other than that, uh, we are good. Then we drop this torch, scare them off, scare this torch, this wolf off. And rinse and repeat. We're going to have to do this several times because there's going to be, I think, three wolves here. Rinse and repeat. This will always work. It works 100% of the time. If you're doing this and for some reason it doesn't work, then it either bugged out or you made a mistake. Because it should always work. I've never not had it work. Uh, it will work consistently with the torch and flares. If you have one in your hand and you drop it on the ground and then you aim at the wolf, it will always run away. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be exactly near, you can also throw it. Like, as long as you're near the torch, it creates kind of like a barrier. You can actually use the light. You see the light around the torch? It creates this little light barrier here. That's kind of the range of the torch. As long as you are within that range and then aim at the wolf with something, then it will scare the wolf away and it will flee. However, if you for some reason don't have a weapon, if you don't have a stone even, you don't have anything, you can also throw uh, the torch at the wolf and it will also run away. The way that works is a little bit different. You have to wait for the wolf to charge you. If you throw the torch at the wolf and he doesn't charge, it won't work. Yeah, he will just... Uh, well, it can work, but you're not guaranteed. You could mess it up and nothing happens. Instead, you have to do it like this. Uh, let's wait to get him a bit closer. So he'll start charging, then he's going to stop, go into this little stance, and then you can throw the torch. And then he runs away. You gotta throw it at him also. If you don't do it that way, if you throw it too early while he's charging you, or you throw it too high or something like that, then the wolf may not run away and uh, it will just flee, uh, it will just attack you, sorry. So that's not good. So throwing the torch works just fine, but it's a little bit more precise and a little bit more risky in general, I guess. So that's something you should only really do um, if you don't have a stone, but it works just fine. You can also throw the torch at the wolf, but if you throw it too high, uh, it will do nothing. And if you throw it too low, it might also do nothing. Uh, when I have thrown the torch at the wolf, 
I would say it works 90% of the time, but every now and then you'll throw a torch too low or too high or something and the wolf doesn't react. But if, uh, if, if you hit him close enough, he will run away. But if you scare him off with a, a stone or any kind of weapon, they always flee. And the same thing will work with flares, including red flares and marine flares. It will not work with the storm lantern, so don't do that. It will, generally speaking, work on campfires, although it does happen uh, that if you have a campfire and the wolf gets too close to the campfire, then it won't necessarily run away. Uh, it can sometimes attack through you, but if you aim at the wolf before, then it will usually scare it off. Um, so basically, if you have a campfire and then a wolf comes towards you and you aim at it with a rock, the wolf will start attacking you, then it will flee. But if the wolf is coming towards you and then it stops in front of the campfire and then it charges again, if you now aim at it with a stone, it won't run away necessarily. Okay, we're going to go in here because we have everything we need now, so we don't really need to go to trappers. We might still make trappers our base, but for now we're going to go in here and have this as a temporary base at least to sort things out. So yeah, that's how you deal with wolves. As you can see, I'm smelling like crazy and I'm just ignoring it pretty much. So we're going to put down, we have three there hides here. We have uh, soon three of these. And we're going to put the guts here, a bunch of guts. And we're going to put some of these here. And we can also make two bows, we'll put these here. And let's loot this place before we do anything else. <clears throat> let's see... We've got another book here You're that we don't really need. Like putting this here. Let's see if we have a mag lens. The, in Mystery Lake, you're guaranteed to find a mag lens. Mystery Lake is one of those few areas in the game that does not have guaranteed matches. Pretty much every other area in the game will have at least one place where you will always find matches. Like in Pleasant Valley, we found the matches in the farm. And Mystery Lake is one of the areas where we don't have that. You are not guaranteed to find matches. However, you are guaranteed to find a mag lens in Mystery Lake. You will usually find it in uh, in here, but there's four places that it can be. It will either be here in the camp office, in that corner over here. I didn't really explain it when I was there, but right here in the corner here, uh, in right here. If not, it will be upstairs between some crates. And if it's not there, then it's either going to be in the forest lookout tower or in Trapper's Cabin. If you went to all of those four places and you didn't find the maglens, then most likely you just didn't look close enough because it should be there. We have a jerry can, that's great. We have another one of these cooking pots, which we don't need, but we'll take it upstairs to place it there. And see, we got the corpse here. I think we'll make this our base for now, but if we if we discover that there is a moose in Trappers, we will probably relocate them. So we got all this stuff. No bedroll though. Which would be nice, but we can do. Oops. Uh, what happened there? Well, we, oh, here's the bedroll. Fantastic. We now have the bedroll. That's great. That takes care of that problem. If it wasn't here, it probably would be in the lookout tower or in trappers. So you usually also find a bedroll here in Mr. Lake. Right, let's see if there's a mag lens. It will be here, like between the uh, boxes, usually. But it doesn't seem like it. So it's probably going to be in trappers or in the lookout tower then. Okay, so we have that, and I think we'll then do some sleeping. We don't need to do any cooking right now. Let's see, we're quite heavy, but we'll sort that out in the morning. Well, 
Uh, let's actually, before we sleep, we're going to harvest this stuff. We'll do that first. And then this is this guy. We're gonna harvest all this. I could have actually cooked it with the fire, but that's okay. I'm gonna use our hands to grab this. There we go. Nice. Ah, we got well fed, that's fantastic. So now we can carry more stuff and we also have more health. Since I'm going to sleep a little bit before we do anything else, I'm going to drop this uh, meat outside because otherwise it's going to deteriorate too fast. Let's drop these guts here. And also we have these pelts here. And then I'm going to just drop this food outside. I'll cook it later. I just want it to be outdoors because it will uh, it will last longer. It won't uh, it won't deteriorate that fast. All right. Let's also sort some inventory out. We're going to be making arrows here in this bench, so we might as well put in the drawer. We can put our feathers. Looks like we have enough to make five arrows. So some more that will be good. We're also going to put our tools because you can use these to make arrows faster which is great we'll put that there and then i usually just use this surface as like a little desk for things it's not strictly necessary or anything but it's just a neat way of doing things so you can literally see visually what you have so let's put everything we're not going to need when we travel now we don't need to bring these books so let's place those neatly here for later reading. We could arguably bring one of the books and it might be read. So this is just firewood, this one. Um, but yeah, that's fine. We have six matches. Oh, that's not so much, but we have more matches. We'll find some matches in the forge. There'll be more matches then. This is quite a lot of stuff, but it doesn't weigh much. I'm not gonna take this. I'm gonna leave this here. And I'm instead going to make these. I'll do that right now. Because they weigh less. So having two of these will weigh 0.2, while having antiseptic weighs 0.5. So there's a big difference. We're going to eat the food here. And uh, let's just eat this as well. And because we're going to sleep in a minute, we'll also eat the low condition food. Let's have a drink. We're not going to have a full night's sleep though. Uh, clothing, there is this one, which is, I think, better than this by a little bit. So let's actually try and repair this and swap them out. Right, so let's have a look at that. I think this one is slightly better. Not by a lot, but it is a bit better. We'll just for now drop this and I come back to this. Uh, well, so we got uh, some tools that we don't need the jerry can. Uh, this we can harvest. Let's put the jerry can here. And we also, uh, we don't need this one, I guess. Put that there. This doesn't really weigh anything, so I'll just carry it, even though we don't need that either. And then I think we got most stuff sorted. We're carrying quite a few things here, but that's all right. We'll craft this while we're at it. And, uh, We'll also just put in this drawer, we'll put a few misc things that we don't need to take with us. Like we don't need to take all this cloth, for example. We can take one of them. And uh, we don't need to bring these, but we can bring we can bring three, we can get two. 
Uh, we don't need to take this, I suppose, now that I'm thinking of it. We can leave one of these, and we can leave a couple of these. And uh, I guess that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah, that seems fine. Cool. So now we're ready to go to the forge. And we have this stuff curing, so when we come back, we can... I don't think these will be cured by the time we come back. But by the time we come back from the forging, these might be cured. Mm. Well, these probably will be cured. And I think we can... I can never remember if it's three or four, but I think that means we can make... Yeah, we can make the hat if we want to. We should make it one. So we can always make this. And then while we make that, maybe if we're lucky, this will be curing as well. And if so, we can make the uh, boots or the pants if we want to. And then this should be cured after that. It needs another day. And then we can make these. Oh, we can make arrows first. These only take four days. So regardless, when we come back, we can make at least one thing per day, it seems like, I would think. And then, yeah, there's nothing to break down here of metal wise, is there? No, I mean, we can break down the pan if we want to, but that's about it. So we're going to sleep a bit here. Uh, not full, though. Uh, we'll sleep more at the forge, probably. Let's see what time it is. Getting into the day, but we'll sleep maybe six hours. I think that probably will do it. We're going to forge into the night anyway, so probably six hours will do it. Uh, would be nice to be fully rested up. But yeah, we'll sleep six hours for start at least. <clears throat> All right. Um, it is late in the day, but I think I will start making my way there right now while it's still kind of warm outside. So let's, uh, we're going to leave all this stuff. Let's eat something first. Uh, let's eat a few of these. Make our load a bit lighter. We're going to find more cattails anyway on the way there. We'll eat all of this. I would like to be more rested, but we do have coffee. I um, just like using the coffee in the early game anyway, so it will be fine. Let me just see if there's anything else I should leave behind. I've got coal, I'll take that. Uh, this is uh, maybe a bit too many teas. Actually, I don't think I need all of these. Let's leave a few of them here. We'll take the rest, though. Yeah, that's that's fine. We'll take those. And yeah, I guess that's it. So let's uh, let's go. Let's go to the forge right away and uh, start making <coughs> some arrows and everything. Arrows and um, hatchet. But I, I would like to get some more feathers if I can, because I think I can only make five arrows. Because of the uh, of the feathers I have, so some more would be good. As you can see, it's warm. It's late in the afternoon. Uh, I got plus ten degrees, and I'm on day three or four, four. Uh, so I'm not cold. It's four degrees plus. This is the benefit of utilizing cloth and just being as warm as you can early. So going to like the plain or Signal Hill, or Summit, or something like that, Ash Canyon, or, or HLV if you spawn there, like, uh, just spawn early and get as much cloth, uh, or clothing rather, that you can, and then you use that to stay warm, and it just makes traveling so much easier. If this was day 50, and I was out now, it probably would not work, I would be closer to minus 15, or something like that. But for now, with the clothing we have, this is fine. Uh, as much as I would like to run there, I'm not going to because I don't have that much energy. So we're going to uh, take this route. We're going to head straight to the uh, train cart. 
and then down towards the forge we will probably find some um, we'll find some more scrap metal and everything there and we should be good yeah Excuse me, I was just having some water. Stay hydrated, people. There's sometimes a wolf here, but uh, the wolf is not here right now. Down there, you'll usually find a maple. So if you're really struggling to find maple, there'll usually be one down there. We don't really need that. We have two, and that should be enough. Let's just check here quick. There's very often a corpse or a backpack here. And off. Not today, though. On lower difficulties, you'll also find a knife there. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah. Only this container this time. Nothing there. We'll grab these roll hips. Any wood? No. Sometimes there's wood there, and sometimes when you come back to this region, the wood will be there for a few frames and then it disappears. <laughs> it's some sort of bug. Five, so. And while I'm here, I always like to do one thing because the moose in Fallen Muskeg, if there is one, can be in three different locations. So I want to just quickly check to see if there is a moose to my right because there can be a moose up here to my, my right. So we're going to go there and just see if I see either markings or the moose and then we'll continue along our journey. <coughs> Let's see what we can find here, if anything. We're going to keep this walking to save some energy here. We have moose markings, so it will spawn here. It's not here right now, but if we want to find a moose later, we can always pop by and see if we can find it. And then we'll have a moose hide satchel pretty quick as well, <coughs> which would be great. So after we craft the bow, We'll go and see if we can uh, find a moose. Either here or somewhere else. I didn't see any markings uh, at the dam either. So if there's a, a moose in Monsieur Lake, there'll be trappers um, and or unnamed pond. Here, the moose spawn can be right where I checked now by the little lake. It can also be next to the bleak inlet cave. And it can be up by Marsh Ridge. Looks like we got fog coming in. Fog is a uh, well, like light fog. It can be annoying, but when it's uh, dusk or dawn, it can make the game really, really beautiful. So a good reason to go to Fallen Muskeg is all the cattails. There is so many cattails in this region, so it really is no issue at all to survive here. Just cattails alone will sustain you for for days. So we'll pick up everything we we find of them. Uh, there is a tally of how many cattails there are, but I don't remember exactly how many. I think I think it's 197 or something, but I I don't remember exactly. There we go. Our birds flying overhead. And I know I say this in every video, but if you are new and this is the first video you're watching, uh, crows flying overhead like this, it means nothing. Uh, you tend to see them during three times of day, which is in the early morning, late evening, and around noon. If you check, it's roughly around that time they appear, but it does vary. And <clears throat> some people claim that the crows flying overhead will signal a weather change. But there is no evidence for that. This is a myth. And if you think that they do that, then you are the one making the claim and you need to prove that that is the case. If I say they don't do that, then I don't need to prove anything because you're the one who's saying they actually do something, if you understand. So you have the burden of evidence on you. Uh, but that being said, it's quite easy to test. Just log when things happen. So, for example, now we saw crows. You can go in here and you can type, you know, uh, day four, 
uh, late evening crows, right? And then you make a note of when the weather changes. It did change a little bit before the crows, so you could say maybe you could argue that immediately when the fog came in, the um, the crows triggered and they have been flying across the map throughout the entire fog. But that doesn't seem likely. Let's go over here. Sometimes there's stuff up here, but not today. All right. So yeah, the crows don't really mean anything. They are pure ambience, and there is also a developer post where they say that they don't do anything. But, you know, if they do something and you can show it, then uh, I'll be open to admit that I'm wrong. <laughs> there we are. But enough about the crows. They are it's a nice little feature anyway. I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to leave that book. It's still warm, so I'm going to keep moving. The weather's fine. It's uh, nice and open. Fairly still. So we're going to just head to the forge. And I found quite a bit of scrap metal there, which is what I expected. I'll find a little bit more near the uh, forge. And there's also a like a metal shelf we can break down. I'm going to grab all of these. Food is really not going to be an issue at all because we have so many of these. But we're still going to grab them anyway. Because it is food at the end of the day. It is <coughs> very often a good idea to take advantage of uh, warmth and clear weather. So uh, right now my fatigue is uh, draining. I'm quite tired. But because it's so warm and it's so clear it's a good opportunity to just take advantage of that and start moving so that you can get there way more easily than if it was very windy and cold and a lot of wolves around and so on. So it's a lot more advantageous to do it now. That's something I would recommend doing. Take advantage of the weather. As long as you feel though that you can actually survive. If you're really drained, like if I had hardly any energy left and then I left, there would be more risk involved but for now it's uh, this is fine it's nice and clear it still is warm another thing is you could um, <clears throat> uh, if it's if the weather's like this and you don't have anything specific you need to do let's say for example that I am back in the camp office the weather is like this and I decide you know what I don't want to go to the forge just yet it's too late in the day I'm tired, I'd like to wait one evening, uh, one night, and recover some energy, so I'm going to go the next day. So let's say you think that. Uh, you can then take advantage of this warmth, and you can go outside, and you can start harvesting um, a wood. You can go and... Uh, there can be loot over there, by the way, but we're going to leave that. You can uh, take advantage of the weather and go and get some wood from limbs. So harvesting wood from limbs, like cedar and fir limbs, is something you don't do very often on interlope. It's not really necessary. Instead, you tend to use things like sticks and coal. Uh, but if, but sometimes you'll need it, but not very often. So sticks and coal is fine. But if you do want wood, uh, then going out and sawing some wood with a hacksaw or, or the uh, hatchet, if you have it, uh, when the weather's like this, it's a good opportunity because you'll be warm getting the wood. So you, normally, if it's too cold, you have to make a fire. So you have to spend wood to make wood. So if you cut a cedar limb, you, it will give you three pieces of wood. Oh, let me just loot this first. It has uh, a lot of loot here, which we'll use at the forge. Sometimes there's nothing here. Today there was lots of stuff. So if I want to go out when it's cold and cut a wood, I would very often have to go out and spend at least one piece of wood or a piece of coal to start a fire next to the wood, uh, to the limb, and then I can cut it. And then when I cut it, I need to do the same thing next time. So I'm basically spending one third of the wood I harvest just to maintain warmth while harvesting more wood. So it's, it's a little bit of a tricky situation on interloper to harvest wood from limbs. But if it's warm like this, you can take advantage, go outside, and cut it. 
We're not going to do that though, we don't need wood. And we have uh, probably a corpse, hopefully uh, feathers. Really beautiful game by the way. Now look at this picture day. Let's see if we get some feathers on us. We did have a might have Polaroid. No. Usually the when there is a Polaroid here, it's very often in this like green metal box. Uh, not this one. But a similar one here. that is out here. Yeah, it will be next to the corpse usually. There's another set of crows. This is probably the uh, deer carcass, which we might take advantage of in this harvest out in the open because it's uh, nice and warm. So let's see here. Must be over the hill here because I can't actually. There it is. Yeah, I can see the antlers now. Let's also grab these rose hips here. And let's harvest this stuff first. Or not harvest, but loot this stuff. So we got this. Oh, storm lantern. Hope nobody needs this Fantastic. Anymore. Not very good condition, but that's okay. We'll be filling that up and repairing it later. Oh, another thin wool sweater, and it's almost new. That is good. Look at that. I don't think there's much more. There's some. Ah, oh, we can grab this as well. Let's grab these. Whole bunch of cattails here. And we are doing really well with food. Because there are so many of these cattails. Yeah, and we're also going to harvest this deer. Mostly for feathers, but uh, we also want the other stuff. Only one feather, it seems. Seems like it. Okay, we want uh, all of this. An hour six, that's fine. Harvest that. The sun is setting. Gonna get a lot colder soon. Yeah, and then I also want to hide. And now we're gonna start getting cold soon. Oh, we have an aurora. One slight complication with that is that if there is a wolf now in front of me, I would have to kind of like circle around it so I can get to the forge easier. Once I'm in the forge, the wolf will not bother you. So when I get inside the actual homestead here and start forging, we're not going to have an issue with wolves. They, they won't come in. Or even if they do come in, they won't go upstairs and things like that. So we're going to go over here. There's wolves over there. I can hear them. So we're going to drop these guts once we can. We're going to drop them over here. Grab the coal. We're gonna drop them in here. Uh, what am I doing? Here. Oh yeah. Uh, and we're gonna loot this stuff after, but first we're gonna start a fire. Let's grab this coal. Let's grab the matches, and also let's just loot this while we're at it. Yeah. Okay. Let's start a fire. We're gonna do this. Uh, do an all nighter. So we're not going to care too much about fatigue here. Let's start a fire with the cedar wood. <clears throat> and while it's uh, warming up and getting warmer, we will uh, loot the stuff around while it's heating up. We need to get 150 degrees. And a coal will add 20, but we'll add some regular wood first. <sighs> All right. So let's put on uh, the fur. Boom, boom. Put on that as well. Some of these. And I'll put on one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll see while that heats up. So let's loot around a little bit while we Not sure I can wait for this more. to heat up. Let's check here. So inside this box here, 
Oh, let's grab that. Uh, this box here, you'll find some accelerants. Uh, if we need wood, we'll break this down, but I don't really need it. And then under here, uh, we have this container, of course. We yeah, have this wood, and then there's a few secrets here. It looks like just crates, but actually behind this crate here, there's dog food. And behind these two crates is a safe. You can actually see it here. And it sometimes it's possible to reach it from here without breaking down the crates because of uh, this little gap here. But normally you'd have to break down these crates to actually reach it. However, there is a trick to this. You can actually avoid the whole thing by going out and around. So you go out here. And you go through this little crack in the wall here. And you can see the safe. And now you can open it. Let's see what we got. Okay. High numbers. 55. Okay, low numbers. 55. And 55.10. Now I'll do it a bit slower. 55.10. Come on. Let's see what we got in here. Wow. got accelerant and scarf and that's it sometimes this will bug and you'll get two safes like a double safe but not today which is fine it's clearly a buggy anyway if that happened let's also loot this it's one of the few green lockers in the game but there's a few of them ski jacket that's great which is definitely better than this although not right now let's open these doors And I think that's everything looted. So how's the warmth there? 130. We need one more exactly. Okay. And let's eat a bit first, because this is going to take a little while. And let's actually cook this. I almost forgot that I had that. So let's do some eating first. <coughs> We're going to eat these cattails, because they pretty much weigh the most of everything that we have. Except for these, uh, this, which you might as well cook here on the side. Yeah, and yeah, now it's 150. Perfect. We're going to keep eating these. Until we are almost full. We're going to be forging for a while to get all the tools and all the arrows that we want. That's, I think that's probably enough. And we have uh, nine of these. That's also while we wait, we can craft this. There we go. That's done. We'll eat that. And then we'll have a, a drink. We'll put this excess can down. So it's four minutes, let's grab that. And now we can do some forging. So let's see here. We want the uh, hatchet and the knife. So we'll go for the hatchet first. The hatchet is less important because we have the hacksaw, but I still want it. So we're gonna go for that first. Man, I'll rest soon, I'm gonna fight. There we are. Then we want the knife, but I need another piece of cloth, but I found some cloth on the way here. And we don't need all this stuff, so we're going to harvest this for 10 minutes. And then we're going to make the knife, which will make things a lot easier in terms of uh, uh, harvesting carcasses and things. So now we have the full tools, which is great. Let's put on some cedar wood to make this last a bit longer. And let's eat this. 
And let's have a drink. And one thing you can do now, you, it's not really worth it when uh, doing the, the knives and things, but you can start making water. You can make two liters. This will take an hour, and I think this takes an hour and a half to break down. Yeah, it does. So we're going to do that. Get a bit more. Like a new day is dawning. And let's see, is there any more metal? I don't think there is much more metal. Although we sometimes can find some of that. Wow, look at this. Look how amazing this game is. This is stunning how well designed and beautiful this is. It's just so gorgeous. You could just stand here and, and watch. It's, it's beautiful. <clears throat> so yeah, we might as well wait for this to finish boiling. And let's see. So I have five, so I can make ten arrows. That's probably good enough. But I will go and check though. So let's wait for this to be done. Take that. And now I want to make sure this lasts long enough. So I'm going to put on some more sticks. Now this on two. And there a few more. There we are. And I'm going to make this, it will take two hours, and then it also will take me two hours to make four arrowheads. So we're going to do exactly that. Craft that. Then the water will be done. So we're kind of multitasking here. We drink this. Then we do this again. go and we still have enough for one more so we'll put one liter and then we'll make some more arrowheads there we go and we are done we now have the tools and we have 10 arrowheads i am going to check though even though i am quite tired and everything but i am going to just check if there is um uh, a couple of scrap metal over by the bunkhouses. So I'm just going to do that, but I'm going to eat this first. So let's just do that. There we go. And we'll have a drink as well. And let's drop all of this stuff. Alright, while this is boiling, we might as well put on what, like one liter to make this. And then while I'm out grabbing that stuff, we'll just dump some heavy things, like these things. Uh, we'll grab these, so this, and also all the water. Just so we can move a little bit faster. There might also be wolves over here. So we'll see. Oh, noon, and there's crows. <laughs> You notice that the weather didn't really change uh, earlier. Oh, I forgot to bring a torch. And I think there's some wolves there. Let's go back and grab a torch quickly so we don't waste the match. Let's just go and do that quickly. I don't know if I have enough feathers to actually make more arrows, but in case I do, I just want to just wanna check. Let's just grab a torch quick. But then if we run into these wolves, which seems likely, we'll, um, we'll be able to defend ourselves. So let's just go and check here. I think we got two wolves. We might go back this way, just to get some more loot and everything. But uh, for now, though, I'm just going to check if there's any scrap metal here. You can sometimes find one or two laying about. You can also find a hacksaw here. It's, it's a possible hacksaw spawn. You can also get a hacksaw at the forge itself. You will never get a hammer at the forge, though. It, it seems like the most obvious place to look for a hammer, but you won't find a hammer on the forge. There is, however, a small chance, I think it's 25%, so in one in four times, you will find a forge in Broken Railroad on the forge. So you'll, you can find a hammer there. But other than that, you won't find one at the forge. Not on this difficulty, at least. Let's 
of these uh, wolves. That one uh, bugged out a little bit. Let's see here what we got. If anything, we got a book, which we don't need. We'll check this briefcase. Oh, we got the Polaroid for the... What is it? I think that's the northern one. Okay, so we have that at least. I don't see anything else. Let's put a wood. Uh, yes, I, oh, there's one. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anything else. No. But we got one. And that's more than zero. So we'll head back. I'll get rid of this wolf. There we go. Let's head back and the water will probably be done now. And then we'll make one more set of arrows and we'll have 12 arrows, which is great. Uh, I don't know though if we can actually... Yeah, we can make 12 arrows, but I don't think we have feathers for 12 arrows. We can go check quickly at the um, carcass we looted to see if there's more feathers, but probably not. We'll have to, it's better to find uh, the next carcass. In the beginning, you want to grab all the feathers you can, but in the long game, you're probably going to find a lot of feathers just around. So uh, it's going to become more and more common to find that. All right. There we are. Hold on. Oh yeah, of course. I was like, didn't I pick up a bedroll somewhere? <laughs> That's of course here. I'll take all of this stuff. I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. Is this almost boiled? And then we can drop the, this one is ruined. And how is this looking for time? Okay, that's fine. We'll also drop some coal because we don't need that much of it. We're gonna drop 10 of that maybe as well as this. And then we're going to make oh it got colder somehow. Oh because I took a torch out that's why. Oh, we'll put one one of these on then. Take that and then we'll do the last forge. And then we need to sleep and we might have to keep this fire going so we might break down something we'll probably be all right though because we're quite warm but just to be sure we will break down a few things to keep this fire going so let's grab this for example if you break these things down make sure you uh, actually leave some of them left so you can actually go up and sleep up here and i tell you what we'll also break down the crate uh, that has the accelerants in it, which is this crate up here. This big one here. Let's do that. And we get a couple of accelerants. And that's about it, I guess. So let's uh, let's now prepare a little bit. We're going to eat a bunch of these. And come full. And we'll have a drink and everything, and then we'll sleep throughout the entire night. This fire is not going to go out because it's a forge, like a closed fire. So it's not going to go out regardless. Let's do that. Let's keep doing this until we're pretty much full. You can see how important cattails are. If you didn't have cattail, this would be much harder uh, food-wise. Don't need a herbal tea, I don't think. So we'll keep drinking this, or eating this rather. Then we'll have a drink. And then we will put on enough wood here so it can burn through our entire sleep. Might need to put a couple of coals on here. Uh, I think we'll just do that. Yeah, that's fine. Now we'll grab. Uh, two of these to take back when we finish and then we're gonna sleep for 10 hours go 
and then we're gonna head back. Hopefully things will be cured. It's been two more days, or at least some things will be cured. How is this doing uh, time-wise? We got two more hours left because it's an outdoor fire. So we're going to sleep another two hours because of that. So we'll sleep two more hours. And then it's going to be morning. It's going to be quite cold, but that's fine. And we're going to keep moving. So there we are. Dawn is going to come out soon. And we have this. We might want to displace, not this one really, but a few, a few of these things to warm up. Just for the travel. Nice little circle of warmth. Let's not forget these things. And I think we are good to go. We got everything. Uh, we might grab another torch or two. Yeah, this is some of this we can just put here. We will get some more coal soon, so um, I'm going to leave some of these. And there we are. And one second. Alright, let's go. I'm not sure I can carry much more. There we are. It's fairly cold, but not super cold. I'm going to just quickly check here to see if there's more feathers, although it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna have a look. Kind of hard to see the crows like black on black, you know. Oops. We're just gonna see if there's any more feathers that spawned here. And there is a feather. Nice. Oops. Exactly what I wanted. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go back then. It's windy and a bit cold. I did find a flare though, so if if the wind gets too strong and I run into a wolf, I can still use the uh, flare to scare off the wolf. So we're going to be just fine. It's getting quite cold, so I'm going to drink a tea in a minute. We barely moved an inch because I wanted the feather. But that's okay. Let's drink this. If your cold isn't draining too fast, if it's kind of like normal speed so to speak you can probably only drink about three teas uh before they stop being warm and you, you lose the warmth bonus from the teas about three uh, however as you saw if it's very cold like when i was in the blizzard yeah you can drink a lot more how many did i drink there i lost track maybe eight so you can definitely drink more We're going to be attracting some wolves because we smell. Not terribly much, but a bit. So let's just uh, get rid of these wolves. I said no weapons in inventory for a second there. I was like, huh? If that had bugged out, I would have to throw the torch at them. Sometimes there's a sapling here, so I just want to check that quickly. But it doesn't seem to be the case today. Unless I'm just not seeing it. But we'll grab these mushrooms. Let's drink another tea. Just stay warm. Although, like, like I said before, don't be afraid to get cold in this uh, difficulty. Because you'll just... Heal it back up. We're gonna have wolves on us for a few t few times now because we're gonna be attracting it with the guts that I picked up. So we smell a little bit. It's not the end of the world though, but we are gonna have the wolves on us a little bit. Get quite a few mushrooms here. Uh, 
very often I just ignore the mushrooms and things like I just because uh, we don't need them all and I like leaving some behind for later but in the early game very often I will grab pretty much every mushroom and every rose hip and every birch bark I see because I want to use them primarily to level up cooking but also for warmth bonuses like I'm doing right now so that's the main reason to harvest them once I reach level 5 cooking though then I will usually stop picking up mushrooms and rose hips and I just leave them and I will instead go and harvest them if I want to get some teas for my base like for example if uh, I have a base near a moose and I want to make sure I have some rose hips uh, teas um, spare there so that if I get stomped then I can recover the broken ribs so I, I sometimes go out and harvest a few mushrooms and, and rose hips to have a stock of teas back in the base but I don't do it for everything oh is my alerts on? but I turn the alerts off oh, yeah. the sound alerts were not off sorry about that um, but yeah, so once you reach cooking level 5, I very often just leave the, the mushrooms and stuff alone unless I want to have some spare in my base. So if you watch me on my main run, you'll see that even when I'm around day 1000, I'll go around here and there and you'll see some mushrooms and things just around because I've left them. Here in Fallen Musky, there is a lot of mushrooms, and I mean a lot. As you can see, there's all over the place here. There's going to be even more of them further up. Now they've gotten cold, as you can see. So you're not going to struggle with plants in, in Fallen Mask at all. This is so much of it. I'm just going to go in here to see if there's coal here, but it doesn't seem to be anything. We're going to keep moving then. Might take a little bit of coal damage, but it's not too bad. Made it through another night. And... Uh, Grab some more of these mushrooms here. And usually there'll be one or sometimes two dead carcasses towards the uh, radio tower. So we're going to grab that as well. Same. Yeah. We'll keep chaining this torch. Jesus, it's cold. Yeah, I know. We'll be fine, Astrid. So here, there's more mushrooms. There'll be even more up there. We'll go inside the bleak inlet cave a little bit, uh, but for the most part, we're just gonna keep moving. We'll pick up a few sticks as well because I didn't really have that many. I see. Also, another reason you want to harvest, especially all the mushrooms you see in the early game, not just for cooking, but once you can hunt and you can start uh, getting bear and wolf meat, you might want to eat some of that meat. And if you do, uh, God, then you might get parasites. And if you get parasites, then you need to drink 20 Raishi teas. Uh, or they take antibiotic pills. So 20 teas over the course of 20 days, or so one per day. So yeah, you're going to need then 40 of these mushrooms to do that. So that's one reason you also want to uh, harvest them, just in case that happens. By the way, if you're wondering how I drop the torch, uh, I'm playing on a computer, so all you do is just uh, use the quick key. So the default is uh, number two on the keyboard, which will bring up a weapon you're holding like this. And then it will just drop the torch. Um, don't know if there's a shortcut for that on console, if you're playing on that, but maybe if there is one, maybe someone in chat can say what they are. But if you don't have that, you can just use the radial menu and just do this. It achieves the same thing. We'll grab these berries too. Might be handy in case we get moose stumped. We 
we'll go inside this cave quickly, but we're not going to stay in there very long. We might warm up, but I don't think we will too much because I want to keep moving. Uh, fun fact, see these coal here? So now it says leave for Volon Maske. So yeah, this must be aesthetic. But actually you can grab these, especially if you crouch and get close. You can actually pick these up. Not all of them though, some will be out of reach. I think you can grab this one. No, you can't. <clears throat> but you can usually get between two and four. And now we're indoors and I'm not going to go very far here. I'm just going to see if there's a coal or two around. And also in this cave, in this particular cave, you can find Larry, the only indoor rabbit in the game. Larry doesn't seem to be home right now. That's a shame. But if he is here, he will usually be exactly here running about. He is kind of a rare spawn, I think. Um, when I start new runs and go through here, I usually don't see Larry around. Uh, by the way, I call him Larry because I call all rabbits Barry. <laughs> I don't know how I started doing that, but all the ba the rabbits are called Barrys to me. And on Twitch, I have a Barry emote as well uh, that you can unlock. <laughs> and then because they're all called Barry, well, then the indoor rabbit, that's the special one. So that's Larry. Uh, but he is a bit rare, so I don't go and check all the time. But if I happen to be in this area, I often drop by to see if he's there. And uh, on my main run, I went on day 520 or something to give him a gift. It was like a peace offering. It was like a, something that a viewer suggested. So I left him like a little gift that he could um, eat, which of course he didn't. Uh, but I left it there on day 520 and he wasn't there. And then I kept going back whenever I was nearby, check again and again whenever I was nearby. And I didn't see him again until day 700 something. So it took almost 200 days before I saw Larry again. And I think I only saw him in those, those 1000 days. Obviously I didn't check a thousand times, but whenever I was there, I think I only saw him maybe four times in total. So he, I think he is a bit rare. And I never kill Barry. <laughs> Sorry, Larry. Barry so you can kill. I never kill uh, Larry because, yeah, let's just say it's bad luck to kill. Um, right, we can just take this, I guess. So I'm going to kill him. Doesn't make any difference, of course, but, you know, for the fun of it, I never kill Larry. I only kill the Barrys. We're going to go up here. There was no carcass or even corpse this time, but we're going to go up and around. If you're wondering how to get up here to this uh, radio tower that's up there, it's up here through this little clearing here. And I'll show you exactly how. And there's usually always a deer carcass up there. So when we get there, we will uh, make a fire and get that there as well. Let's get rid of this wolf. You see, wolves really are not an issue at all. They're more of a nuisance than anything. If it's windy though, it's a bit more of an issue. <laughs> but other than that, nah, not much to worry about. No weapon, I don't know why it says that. It's strange, but... Right, we need to make another one soon. Or rather, fight another one. So a few more mushrooms there, so even more mushrooms. There we are. We'll grab all of these. They're not going to go to waste or anything, so we'll just grab what we can and level teas. And I often just craft the teas when I do something else. So it's very often good to multitask Especially in the early game, not so much in the late game, but in the early game especially. It's often good to multitask a bit. Ah, here's a maple as well. we'll grab that. And uh, for example, while water is boiling, I will leave those mushrooms over there. We don't need to go out of the way to get all of them. But for example, while water is boiling, you can craft or like cut, prepare some mushrooms uh, just so that you're always doing something. So. If, if, you, if you're putting a piece of meat to cook and that meat takes an hour to cook, then unless there's nothing to, for you to do, don't just pass time 
for one hour. Instead, see if you can do something in that hour. Can you prepare some mushrooms? Can you prepare some roll sips? Can you repair some clothing? Can you uh, break something down? Can you read a book for one hour? Uh, and so on. Just see if there's something you can do to basically maximize your time and do two things at once. That way you will optimize your fuel, you'll optimize your time, and things will just be a lot more efficient that way. It doesn't mean that you need to do that in order to survive and do well. Of course, you can just play it anyway, and uh, but it's just a way to maximize efficiency. You'll see me do that, generally speaking. Sometimes I don't, but usually I do. Here we have it there, but there should be a carcass there as well. And even though I'm giving you all these like tips and guides, and you know, this is how I play it, and you don't have to play it this way, but this is just tips that I do. Uh, I want you to remember the golden rule of the long dark. Okay? My number one tip for surviving in the long dark. Okay, you ready? Number one, number one rule of thumb you need to remember, and it's this: if you are still alive, then you are not doing it wrong. So let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> so that's what you need to remember: if you are still alive, then you're not doing it wrong. Okay, because obviously you are still alive. So you must have done something right. Maybe you are about to die, but when you did die, then maybe you did something wrong. But it could also be that you just got unlucky and you um, got ambushed by a wolf that came out of nowhere or something. Maybe. So you didn't necessarily do something wrong, but you're just unlucky. But maybe you did something wrong. But if you're still alive, if you are still alive in the game, then you are doing it right. You are living in the game. This is the last torch, so I'm going to sprint. But usually there is a deer carcass up here. And even if there isn't, we're still going to make a fire just to warm up and get some more torches. Uh, is there a deer carcass? Is there no deer carcass today or what? It does look like we have no deer carcass today. That is a shame. Okay, we'll see. Actually, we'll use a uh, accelerant because there's so many of them. And we can uh, do this to warm up. Oh, is this. All right. And uh, here is the single tile. So we didn't find a, a deer carcass up here this time. But we found some uh, saplings though, which is which is great. We're doing water wise, we're doing just fine. So we might actually make a couple of teas. Now you can see this takes 10 minutes and then preparing one of these things, you've got 47 of them, it takes 15 minutes, so it's not a perfect match, but you know, it's all right. God, I need anything right about now. And we're actually gonna just eat this. And I'm just going to uh, let this burn for a little bit here and not really do anything I'll need, need to. But I'm going back down here because I want to see if I can grab these rabbits. Again, we don't need these rabbits, but just would like them for some pelts. So let's just see if I can grab them. They're over there, okay. We will grab these mushrooms while we're at it. I do believe that the, yeah, it was the northern Polaroid we found, so we're not going to go do that now. The other one is typically here, but I haven't found the actual Polaroid yet. Let's grab all of these. So many mushrooms. And this is the subscriber badge on my Twitch, <laughs> is this stump with uh, mushrooms on it. <laughs> that's my, uh, if you subscribe to my Twitch, that's the... Uh, the badge you get. <laughs> okay. Um, these are not essential to get, but if I can get them, it would be great. Yeah. 
Let's see if the spermidor there is not going to do anything. But there's another rabbit though, isn't there? Where did the other one go? Mm, eh, well. Not a big deal, I guess. We can just head back. So let's head back and we'll uh, warm up a bit and just get some torches and that sort of thing. And then we'll Skyrim down and head back home and start making things in the base. Let's see how we can do. Grab a few sticks too. I don't have that many sticks. You can never have too many sticks. Wow. So we have some. <laughs> Alright, so we're warming up. Here we go now with that. And I think we will have a look. First, I'm going to drop this. And then I'm going... You can also do this. You can drop the rabbit on the ground. And then you can harvest it on the ground. Rather than... Uh, in your inventory, because then you won't smell for the wolves. Alright, let's put this one here to just cook this and eat it. And then we'll also put this, and this will take 38 minutes. And I think that's enough to do this. Seven minutes, we'll just pass time and eat this. And we'll grab the hide as well. Let's put on some more sticks. Is there anything I should cook? I don't think so. And I'm carrying a bunch of stuff, so there isn't really anything to to cook, really. I'm pretty much just doing this to warm up. But we can also harvest this. Uh, takes an hour. Use the, the hide is one of those unusual things where it takes equally long using your hands as your tool. It's just how it works. Let's eat a few things before we keep moving, just to lighten the load a little bit. We do need, we need to grab some torches as well. If we can be under 40 kilos, it'd be good, because then we're slightly lighter. We'll make some more teas and stuff later. comes the crows. And we'll have a drink too. Get rid of like a kilo of weight there, or two kilos almost. There we are. We're going to grab some torches. Uh, might want some more torches actually, because it's not a lot. Although we don't really need it as such, but uh, we might as well capitalize on this. We'll find more sticks, so running out of sticks is not a big deal. And then uh, we might as well maybe just do this. Heat those two up. Grab a torch. Take these two. And then we'll take this and that. And then we can leave. So Let's just check, there's nothing here, but there's usually nothing ever here, but we'll just check. Doesn't seem like we can go down this way. A little shortcut, there's several ways to get down really, but here's one of them. And you can just Skyrim down like this. Very common to get a sprain here. So don't worry if you do. Very often there's wolves patrolling this ice, so you gotta be a little bit careful. Let's keep moving. Should be fine now. There we go. And over here, between these uh, rocks over here, there's very often a corpse or some misc, like random loot. So you should always go this direction right here. Uh, not guaranteed though. Let's see what we got here. What time of day is it? Noon? Okay. Yeah, we do have some random loot. We have, looks like, uh, dog food and a backpack. There we go. This stuff will come in handy. 
Uh, sometimes there's nothing there, sometimes there's a corpse there instead. So it varies, but it's a, it's a little thing. There comes the wolf again. They're gonna be on me for a while. I could start running home, but I don't think there's any point in doing it. Let's just keep going here. Let's head home. Uh, I could actually run a little bit. I'm not that heavy. So I might as well utilize this a bit. We're not in a hurry as such to get home, but might as well get there faster. More mushrooms. Ooh, mushrooms. I'm gonna just keep harvesting them because we can make a lot of teas. We can probably level up a whole level of cooking with just teas alone if we want to. <coughs> All of these. What do you think? You think, uh. Well, they. Uh, do you think 60 uh, mushrooms is enough? <laughs> I should make us quite a few teas that we can cook. Especially handy if you're in a, on a six stove uh, hob where you can cook six things at a time, uh, which is only a few places where you can do that in the world. But you can also just put down three fires and you achieve the same thing. But you also need three times as much wood. If you do have a six stove burner or a hob or whatever it's called, then uh, that's often a good choice for a base as well because you have more cooking options. Uh, there's only a few of them in the world. I think it's six of them in the world. There is one in Greymother's house. There is one in Milton Farm. <coughs> I can't remember what that's called. It's called like Paradise Meadows Farm or something like that. I always call it Milton Farm. But yeah, there's there's one there. There's one in Greymother's house. There's one in Pleasant Valley Farm, uh, where we were earlier. There's also one in Thompson's Crossing. And there is one in Bleak Inlet, in the Broken Lighthouse. So that's five. And there is a sixth one. Uh, oh yes, the Hunting Lodge in Broken Railroad also has one. So there's six of them in the world. So having a base in one of those regions is pretty great. Uh, Pleasant Valley, the farm, is a very good base. Uh, either main or secondary. Of course it's very large, you got a lot of floor space. You got a six stove burner. Uh, you will find deer, rabbits, wolves, and bear pretty much just outside your door. Um, and you have a moose spawn not particularly far away. So it's a pretty pretty good base, generally, I would say. The only thing is you don't have much like wood nearby. Uh, you'd have to go into the, the forest and grab sticks and things. But that's not such a big deal. Alright, so sometimes when you enter the region, there will be, for a few frames, there will be a some wood on the bottom right corner. Let's see what happens. Okay, it didn't happen this time. <laughs> sometimes you see it here. Because I could swear that when I used to play Interloper before, there would always be a couple of wood there, like a few uh, cedar logs or something. And then I just started noticing that it wasn't there anymore. Uh, so I haven't seen it in a while, and I think it's just probably something they removed. The sprinting to get back, but we're not in a hurry, really. One little thing about sprinting, by the way, that uh, it's, it is not going to affect your gameplay, but just for you to know, if you'd like to know this, there is a trick you can use with the sprint mechanic to sprint uh, longer, to utilize your stamina. So normally when you sprint, you hold down the shift button or whichever button you have bind to it or on your controller, 
and you'll drain the stamina like in the bottom right like this right so it drains by running but what you can also do is when you sprint you don't hold the sprint button you tap it you tap it between these like little intervals and what it does is it gives your character sprinting momentum and then you let go and while the character is still moving you let go so you don't use the sprint meter and then you click again to maintain it so you're basically tapping the sprint button to maintain the speed uh, but you only use a little bit of stamina and uh, by doing that you can run much further so it looks like this so tap 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 you see that it stops intermittently as i do this and if you do it this way you can run further this makes very little difference to the game uh, you, if you watch me closely you'll see me do it sometimes uh, like if I want to go long distances for example or something like that uh, or if it's very cold and I'm trying to rush to get somewhere ASAP then you'll sometimes see me do this just because I want to get this slightly faster so it's a mechanic that could be useful, but it's not game changing. And if you ignore it altogether, it won't make any difference. The only area where it makes a big difference is when you play uh, speed run challenges. So if you want to do the challenges in the long dark on a speed run, then using the tapping mechanic to sprint will come in handy a little bit. Okay, we're gonna take these torches back. <clears throat> and we might light a fire uh, down here in the uh, camp office but I don't know if there's anything we need to cook though we're now probably going to spend the next three days in here <coughs> and uh, just make stuff craft stuff get the bow and get some gear and everything uh, there were some rabbit meat I left out there that I can cook now that I have this fire going. Notice, by the way, that I'm still using the same match that I used to light this uh, torch when I lit the forge all the way back in Fall of Mask. I, I lit a torch, started a uh, fire, uh, and then forged and then I slept through it grabbed the torch and I've used that all the way back here So all of that was just one match and Let's see here. Like this. Let's start a fire here uh, Oh, did I not pick up any? Uh... Oh. It looks like I didn't actually pick up any you can actually light a fire with your own torch. That's funny. So you're using your own torch that you're active to actually light a fire. I never tried that before. Well, you know, why not? Might as well use it. Come on, little fire. Only 40% chance, though, is the only thing. Uh, but yeah, I forgot to pick up some sticks while I was walking and talking, so I don't have any, like, easy tinder, I suppose, or easy wood, but that's okay. Wow, that didn't work. We're just going to keep doing this until this works. Oh, I run out of tinder. One more try. Or oh, I can use an accelerant. Uh, but if if it fails, I'll just go outside and grab some sticks. Yeah, which exactly <sighs> is what happened. We're just going to grab some sticks outside then. I don't think I have any more tinder, although I can uh, grab some. Uh, these can be tinder. You can also harvest them for tinder, but we can also just ignore that. I have one more torch here. It's really not that big a deal to make this fire, but might as well just do it. There's usually a few sticks laying about here. Yeah, so we can use these. I think it's fine. We'll use like a piece of coal or something to uh, cook this rabbit meat. It's quite likely that we're going to get cabin fever. 
by doing all this crafting. But I want to make this fire before I uh, do anything else, just to utilize the time. And we'll grab, I think there's a book here, we'll just use the book here. And I'll use that instead. And there we go. Now it should be significantly easier. And I have a stick as well. I didn't really need the sticks, but it was just to have something come to on, put on the fire. fire. Oh, come on. There's been uh, quite a few failed fires this run, I must say. When you, It is quite satisfying when you get to fire starter level 5. It's not a game changer That's in terms of what it does and affects your game. But it is quite satisfying in the sense on, that fire. when you're level 5, it takes half the time to light the fire. And you, you know, you're pretty much always succeed if you have uh, a, to a, a stick you always succeed and it, it's happening very fast we'll put on a piece of coal and we're going to cook the rabbit actually let's do the other rabbit or not the small piece this one out so that takes 38 we're going to grab a torch and this will be our torch from now on Okay, so we're going to leave that, and then I'm going to sort myself out a bit. And let's go down here. And we have these. These are not cured yet, but that's okay. We're going to put these here. We have some extra maple, which we'll put here. We have another uh, rabbit pelt, which we'll put here. We have another dip that we put just underneath here, which is not as cured. And we have some more guts we should also put like here or something. And we have a few misc things. We can uh, put these in here. And now I'm going to take actually everything that's not related to crafting out and put them upstairs because it's going to be most likely our base. That can stay there. All the misc stuff is going to be upstairs. How are we doing with teas? We, we might as well put some more of these because we're going to get a lot more teas. So we'll put these nicely stacked here. All right, I'm going to grab this because I want to refill this, uh, this one. There we go. And then we're going to drop this. We're going to drop this. We're going to drop that, and this as well, and we don't need a hammer anymore. In fact, I could have I could have left the hammer back at the forge, and that's probably a good idea in general. But I usually take the first hammer with me, uh, mostly because um, it's also used for breaking things down, and it's very easy to repair it, so... I often do that. Okay, I think that was all the small stuff. Let's go upstairs. And let's see what we got here. We got 10 minutes. Let's actually then harvest this for tinder. <coughs> Get two tinder plugs. There we go. And we'll grab these two. Put this, this, like that. And then we will also harvest a stick for some more tinder. So we have four at least. And I you think that's fine. We have all this other stuff which we'll sort out now. Let's also harvest these for an extra stick. And for now we're just going to have one torch, but that might change later. But we don't really need more than one right now. And then because things haven't cured quite yet, we might uh, do I want to make some teas actually? We could do that, but I don't think so. I'm going to probably read instead. So that's fine. So let's uh, eat this stuff. Rabbit has very poor calorie count in terms of what it weighs. So these are good to just eat and not save 
for any particular reason, it's really not worth it. Have a drink. <clears throat> and then we're going to sort some inventory out in our baser. We're going to put all of these accelerants at one. And then here, uh, now these we can take with us. Uh, that's fine. All of this is fine. Six bandages is a bit much. We only need four. We have this and that, which we'll sort out. And we have uh, this, and we don't need all of these things. We'll put that back too. And then we have all of these mushrooms, which we're just going to put them in here for now, because we don't need to carry them around. And I want to repair this thing, so we're going to do that first, uh, because that's going to make things a lot warmer for us if we can get this repaired. That's good, let's do it again. Okay, let's try one more time. All right, 81 is, is fine, so we'll do that. And then we can, for now, just uh, put these clothing items in here because they, even if they break, they'll be cloth at some point. So there we are, we're good with that. And then I think we will have time to read one hour of a book. And because we have a few books here. So we're going to read one of them, uh, most likely a cooking one. We'll take this one in the back. And let's see if we're going to read one hour of this before it gets too dark or I get too tired. Yeah, we should be fine reading one hour, but I don't think we can read two hours. We can try, but I don't think it will work. Well, it did work exactly just before we got tired. <coughs> so let's head upstairs now. And we'll sleep, and in the morning, uh, I think it'll be fine to craft. And if not, we'll do some reading or preparing some you know, mushrooms or something. So we'll be fine. Let's do this. And then we're going to sleep for 10 hours until pretty much it's light. So we're getting all our health back as well. There we are. We've survived six days. That's nice. We can actually craft now because of um, it's light, but we don't really need to do it just yet. Eat this dog food, this juicy dog food. <laughs> there we are. Also drop the can. And the way you can tell that you can craft is if you look at the sun in the upper right corner, when the horizontal sun rays have crossed the horizon, then it's actually uh, light. Right now, it looks like it's just barely not light. So I think if I try and read now, it will, won't let me. Uh, it will let me. Okay, so it was, it was just barely above. It kind of has to be right in the middle. So it seemed like it was just above the horizon there. Uh, but if it's just under, then it's too dark. But when it's, it doesn't work the opposite way though. So when the moon has crossed the horizon on the left, it's not dark. It doesn't get dark until the moon is like fully covering the, over the horizon. So in effect, it means that there's only maybe, maybe like nine hours of darkness and then uh, 15 hours of daylight or, or something to that effect. We're gonna sleep one more hour just so I can see to get practical daylight. <clears throat> yeah, so now we can actually see. So that's great. Uh, so now we're going to see what we got downstairs in terms of curing and everything. So let's have a look. Is there anything that's cured yet that we can actually make now? So these are close. So the next day we can make uh, arrows. These still need probably two days. These also have not cured yet. These have cured, but the guts have not cured, except for one is very close and same here. So we can't actually make anything yet. So what I think we'll do instead, we're gonna read. I'm gonna actually take the second of these books. Oh, this one I can put upstairs. This doesn't have to be here. Um, and we'll also prepare some 
mushrooms for tea and that sort of stuff. So we're basically killing time. I could alternatively just go outside and I could uh, loot the area nearby while I wait. Uh, no, no problem doing that. And what was it? It was this, yeah. Uh, that probably would be the most efficient way, but because I'm so... everything's fine with food and everything, I'm just going to read this instead. And more or less is kill time. That's done. Uh, I'm going to read the other book too. <clears throat> There's a level cooking even more. See if we can read four or five hours. I think we can. Yeah. So these are now done. We level cooking quite a lot. There we are. And then what we'll do, just to kill some more time, we'll start preparing some of these mushrooms and bro sips and what have you. That's because that's easier. Let's uh, keep eating a bit. If we do run out, which I don't think we will, uh, we can uh, always grab some more of these on Mystery Lake itself. So let's keep doing this. I do wish there was a eat more button here. There's something like, you know, eat 10 at a time or something. <laughs> it would make this a bit easier, not having to click things all the time uh, to maintain the well-fed bonus. But yeah, well, we are doing just fine here. And let's keep eating these yummy, yummy cattail stalks. There we go, and then we do this. And then we're just going to craft some uh, of this while we wait. Could read some other books, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do this. That's good. And then we'll also craft some more of these for yeah, three hours. Sounds sounds good. Crafting a whole bunch of mushrooms here. And I think we're just going to continue doing this until basically it won't let me do it anymore. It's going to stop at some point. Um, oh, it still lets me do it, even though it's. Oh uh, yeah, that's because, I know why. That's because I'm not using a tool. Generally speaking, if you are not using a tool to do something, then you don't need light. So if you try and break down a chair, for example, or a crate, let's say it's a crate, if you want to use a hammer to break it down, it won't let you if it's dark. But if you use a, a just your hands to break it down, then it will let you do it. Okay, so we crafted all of these things. Right, so now we can make a ton of teas and just level up uh, if we want to. So this now it also weighs half of what it used to weigh. So this we can just carry this with us now if we want to. We're going to sleep and uh, wait until morning. And I think things will be cured by then. So we'll do another, uh, let's do eight hours of sleep. We'll see what it looks like now. We're probably going to get cabin fever, but that's okay. So here we are. It's light. Uh, we're going to eat some more of things here to maintain this uh, food meter. I think a bit low on water, but not not terrible. We'll probably make a fire soonish. Break down some wood and make a fire and get some more water, make some more teas and things like that. But first let's just put this meter to the full. I think that's good enough. I will have a drink and let's see what things are looking like downstairs. If they're still not cured I'll go and loot a few things nearby instead or we'll break some things down. So let's see, these are cured, fantastic. And we got some some cured guts there as well. And these will probably be cured the next day. But we got these. And that's enough. So let's see how many arrows we can make. We're going to grab this as well. We're going to use this to speed up arrow crafting. And how many have we got? 22. So not that much. So we can make, I think that's 7 arrows. But we'll do that. So we'll start by making the actual shafts. We'll use the knife for that. So we're going to... Break these down. Each sapling gives you three. So I'm going to make, uh, we'll break down four of them, I suppose. 
And the good thing about when you make arrows, you actually do level uh, archery as well. So there's a benefit to actually doing that. So here we are, we have some arrow shafts. And then what you do, you go to simple arrow. And as you can see, it's going to take an hour and a half to do this. But uh, we don't need to do that. We can choose the quality tools. And now it takes 45 minutes. So you make arrows quite much faster, which is great. Let's make four arrows for starter. And we're leveling archery doing this, as you can see. So now we have four arrows. Have a drink as well. Uh, we'll keep making, I think we can make three more arrows. Yep. And then we need more feathers for the rest. <clears throat> so there we go. We now have seven arrows, which is not amazing, but it's, it's okay. Let's put that in there. And also we'll drop this here next to these because we don't need it right now. And I think I had an excess arrow shaft I forgot to put in here. Oops. Here. Uh, yep, yeah, put these in here. And then we also don't need these right now. So we'll put this here. And then, uh, how's this looking? These are cured, cured, cured. But what about this? We got one cured gut, two, oops, three, any more? One is 99. Because uh, I think we now can make, we have three of these, right? Yes. So we can now make the hat, I think it is. Let's see. Yes, we can make the hat. Okay. So we're fine. Let's uh, do that. So we'll do some more crafting. Make the rabbit skin hat. Three and a half hours. I think the sewing cable will break before we finish it, but that's okay. Yeah, it did break, but that's okay, we have another one. So there we go, we have the hat. So we can put that on now, boom. Now we're even warmer than before. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I don't have that much uh, water. Uh, we're gonna put this into a filing cabinet and it will despawn. If you put something that's broken or zero percent condition into a cabinet or any container, it will despawn. Uh, so that's just way, one way of tidying up the world. But we don't have that much water, so I'm considering maybe breaking down uh, some crates and things here. Just to get some wood. Let's see, I don't have much wood is the thing to make more water, but actually we don't really need it right now. We can um, we can wait until morning, uh, but we're not particularly tired actually. I might grab a few things from outside. Let's just eat a bit more. And actually let's, uh, let's drink a tea. Because <clears throat> we're going to make more of these anyway, so we might as well just use the calories that it gives. I'm not going to drink the birch tea though. And even though it's dark, uh, we're not carrying anything, so we're not going to smell. And I just want to check out the Overlook Cave. Oh, it's quite windy, but that's all right. We're just going to go and check up here. We're not very light, and uh, this shouldn't be an issue. There might also be a deer carcass there, if we're lucky. So there's two ways to get up to Lake Overlook Cave, which is this way here, or by climbing the ropes on the other side. Because it's night and I still have quite a lot of energy, uh, I'm just going to sprint like I'm doing now. And yeah, even at night here, I'm still quite warm. So this is going very well. Let's see here. And let's keep going and over here. See, now I'm not using that sprinting tactic I talked about because I'm not particularly worried about this. But let's see. Before I check to see if there's a carcass, or rather before I harvest a carcass if there is one, I'm going to check around, but let's just see if there is a carcass. Stick. Very often there's a carcass over here somewhere, but it doesn't seem like there is one today. 
unless it has despawned. Uh, I am playing on this particular run before a hotfix is being planned and it's possible you're watching this video after the hotfix has been installed which fixes that um, some carcasses despawn once you enter a region and a little bit of time goes by which is not supposed to happen. So it's possible that there it wasn't the dead carcass there this time but it could also be that it is bugged out. But it doesn't make a difference. The dead carcasses are not essential. Let's check the cave over here. We might find a fire striker or some such. And we did find some wood, which is great. Uh, there is a fire striker. Fantastic. So this is one of the few in the game that you'll find. So now we definitely don't need to worry about matches. We have found an archery book, which is also great. And a Polaroid which is the lookout tower, which we'll probably take and, and do. I actually have a couple. We can use the book for fire. He didn't have anything on him. Let's check the back here in case there's anything. Doesn't seem like it. Uh, we're kind of warm in here though, so we could sleep here just to reduce cabin fever a little bit, but not particularly worried about it. We're gonna head back, but I am going to take a short detour just to grab a bit more wood. I would like to make some more uh, water and everything soon. Oh, so cold. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a little detour through through here to see if I can see any sticks or anything. And we might also check the derailment while we're at it because it kind of leads down there. And let's have a look if we can find anything. It doesn't look like there's a lot of sticks up here. Now I am using the sprinting mechanic, as you can see. Okay, there's a few... It's more like branches, but I don't really want branches. I want sticks. We're gonna head down towards the... Uh, not that way, uh, this way. <laughs> Towards the, uh, uh, this might actually lead to the river, but if it does, that's fine. There we are. And let's see here. This should take us back down. But I haven't actually found any sticks. How about that? Weird. I think it was just not the right terrain for it. But let's see if we can find some here, though. We might actually check out the derailment, seeing as we're here. Uh, let's go around and see what we can find here. Not a lot. Ah, there we are. There's uh, the first aid kit. Container. And uh, anything else? Is it kind of low on sticks right now? But we'll get that sorted. So there's wood in here. Nothing today. Quite low loot and derailment this time. But that's okay. We're gonna head back. Going this way. Let's we'll see if we can see some sticks. Uh, along the route here. We'll have they all blown away. <laughs> uh, maybe I just can't see them there. I really really struggling to find sticks suddenly. There's, there's a bunch of branches. Not so many sticks. Uh, there's a few. There we go. That's more like it. I don't know if there'll be that much more sticks here, to be honest. Uh, one or two. There we go. If you're lost, if you're not sure where to go, just stop and look up. 
and you'll see these uh, power lines. That's going back to derailment there. That's going to fall in Muskeg, and that's going to camp office. So you just go to this way. It's basically how they do it in Jurassic Park when Ellie or whatever her name is can't find the power fuses. It's exactly the same thing. Just look up, and uh, you'll uh, you'll find it. There we are. We're coming back. We found a little, a few things, and we'll go and sleep and do some more crafting. I think we should be fine with food. But I would like to maintain this. I'm just going to keep eating the cattails for now. Might also eat some of these. Just to get rid of them for inventory space. Get some more of these. Get, get completely full here. <clears throat> and then we'll see if, the, if things aren't cured enough in the morning to make a bowl, then we will instead um, make some water and things. There we are, now we have a drink, and then we'll sleep. There we go, and we'll sleep for... Find a place to rest. Mm, yeah, we can sleep for 10 hours, that's fine. Should heal us right back up. It was warm and it should be light when we wake up as well. So let's have a look at our curing stuff. Uh, this is 94%. Oh, my tongue feels okay. like sandpaper. And these are cured as well. And I'm guessing these are cured. So we can actually make the pants instead. And I'm going to actually get dehydrated a little bit. I'm just going to take some dehydration damage. Because now what I want to do is I want to make something here. Now, I'm not sure which one to go for, to be quite honest. Because um, if we look, I have jeans, which aren't great. They give one degree each. And I have these that give one degree also. Uh, well, this will give two and a half. And this gives two. So the greatest benefit would be these, I think, so we will make that. <clears throat> so we're going to spend today doing that. Five hours. I'm going to take some dehydration damage doing this, but that's okay. Uh, we'll make water later. There we are. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's do another three hours, maybe. In the morning, we can make the last of this. We might. When it gets dark, make a little bit more water though, actually. <clears throat> I think we might be able to make it before it gets dark, or very close. One and a half, I need to eat something. Oh, this is almost broken, but that's okay, we will find a replacement for that soon. Let's eat one of these things. And let's make the rest of this. If it will allow us. It might be too dark. Yeah, okay, we still need 39 minutes. And I think I'm going to make a fire. To make some more water. So let's do that. Do I have a book I can burn? Yes, I do upstairs. So we're going to do that. So I'd like to get some more water. And also make some teas. Let's grab this. I will make a uh, fire. Oh, I had a regular book as well. Well, that's okay. We'll just do this. Go. <clears throat> and we're going to make some more uh, water and everything. I've been camping here for a few days now. Just to basically sort out all the stuff that I found and looted. And it's going pretty well, I'd say. We're getting kind of low on food, but not dangerously low. Put that here, and then we're going to put this and this. Let's also take that off. And we're going to just make a water here. <coughs> and we'll put on some sticks as well. Three hours is probably fine. 
This is going to take two hours. So now I'm going to actually have a drink. And we're going to pass time by reading this book for two hours. And this will actually level up archery when we're done with this book as well. There we go. Then we can do that. And we can do another two of these. Put some more sticks on. We do need to eat something though, so we'll eat some cattails. Let's eat quite a few more of these. And then we'll read another two hours of this. We'll make more water. And we might as well do one more hour of this. We don't have much uh, to go on. We'll put the book in. We don't really need it. And we'll put the coal in as well. And uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll do one liter now. One liter. And then we'll read the last hour of this. There we go. I think that brought us to archery level two, which it did, which is great. We haven't even used the bow and we're so good at it now. <laughs> and now we're going to start making some of these mushroom teas as well, because we have so much water now. We can drink it for some extra calories. Uh, let's also put some of these on. Um, I think there's some more crates here. I can't very well see. I think they were here. They are crates. We'll break this down. It takes 15 minutes. Grab that, grab that, put two more of these on. Go back, there's another crate there in the dark, there we are. I'm not sure there's any more crates. That's okay. Boom, boom. Can you eat trees? There we go, let me just see if there's any more crates that I just can't remember. Uh, this will take too long. Well, 29 minutes, that's not the worst. But I think... Are there any more crates? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. We can, however, break down this uh, chair over here. 29 minutes. Yeah. We'll wait a little bit, though. Uh, let's put on this and then we can put two more of these on and just while they are cooking we will break down this chair we have a light now so it's fine there we go and we can just keep doing this just make more teas Oh, and we level cooking. Cooking is now level three. We can now smash cans open even. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. We'll also put on some more wood, including this one, I think. And one of these. Pass some time. And we'll actually drink these. Uh, put some more of these on. We have so much uh, water that it's fine. And we'll drink some more teas. We get some calories this way as well. We don't have to use all our cattails because we're not going to need all of these teas. So we might as well just do this. Some of these. There we are. Can I drink another one? I can. Just keep drinking these just to get some more calories in the body. That's about it, really. Again, and rinse and repeat until we have all of this done. Can I drink another one? Yes, and just keep doing this to get some more calories. We don't need this many teas, so this is just fine. Just keep doing this. And 
this will get us lots of teas and lots of cooking leveling up. I'll put some more of these all the way. And we're just going to keep drinking it because it's, it's calories and we don't really need them. And there's plenty more of these to find if we need more. If we do get parasites, uh, it's fine. We'll just find more of them. For now, I'm just using them as pretty much as calories. And just cooking, cooking, cooking to get cooking to level 5 as fast as we can, really. I'm just going to keep drinking and filling up our calories with this. Let's put some roll sips on as well, just for a change. Riveting, I know. <laughs> this is the cooking channel right now. I'm just going to keep cooking and cooking and cooking until we use all of this. Uh, we run out of water. Uh, we might arguably do that in a minute. Let's see, do we have any more we can put on, or is that it? It's, uh, okay, in that case, we'll put the last stick on, do this, and then we'll make half a liter, should be enough, I think. We can make one more of these. Yeah, I think it will just barely be fine. And I can drink another one of these. Drinking lots of teas here. And we should be fine making one more before this burns out. And that should be enough. And now we have two of these again, right? Yes. And there we are. Oh, it didn't actually finish cooking. Oops. Oh well. That's right. It's still water. <laughs> Uh, we're going to sleep, but not very long, just like two hours, I would say. It's basically for it to get light. And then we can finish making the shoes. And then we can make the bowl, probably. Yeah, this is not cured. We'll grab one of these. We'll grab two of these. This is why I picked up all these guts. See, we ended up using all of them for crafting, pretty much. Let's finish making these. There we go. Now we have this. Sorry. This. These are about to break, but I'm not too bothered about that because of um they, they will be replaced by a rabbit uh, once I assume. We can also make cloth ones. But now what we want to do is we want to make the boat. So we're going to find a bow here, and we're going to start making that. Let's make three hours. It will probably be fine um, doing this in one day. And let's, we got so many teas, we're just going to keep drinking them. Use them for calories. I think that's fine. Let's keep making the bow. We can do the, probably the whole sitting, I think. We need to make another bow, but not right now. And there we are. Now we have the bow. And it's day nine. I think I need to lay down. Uh, so this is looking really, really good. Um, uh, really nice. We can sort ourselves out a bit, though. Uh, we don't need these, so let's put this back. We need another deer hide for the leggings later. We'll put this here. And oh, these are cured, starving. which we'll put here. And I'm actually going to craft, I think, until I get the rabbit ones, I'm going to craft the, the gloves, just until I make the rabbit gloves. We might as well utilize the cloth we have here to get something better than these terrible terrible uh driving gloves we have i could eat a horse so we'll do it like this and then i'll put these 
on, wear that, and we'll harvest these. And we need to drink some more teas. We've got so many of them. <laughs> We'll get more teas if we need to. For now, I'm just using them for calories, and that's pretty much it. Tight calories and hydration, that's what I'm using them for. And then we're also going to harvest these shoes, which we're definitely not going to be using again. So tired. There we are. And we'll go upstairs. And we'll just sleep until the next day. And then we can hunt again. Let's sort out some things, though. Um, actually, we can harvest this. So that was the crafting session. The whole, the pretty much the entire run up until when I got back to the camp office was setting up for these days for me to craft already the boots, the hat, and also the bow. I was setting up for all of those things, getting guts, hides, uh, and saplings, all of that. So that now on day uh, nine, uh, well, we survived nine days, but I guess we go back on day 10. Uh, we have pretty good gear. We have plus 14 warmth, and now we can go out and hunt, which is fantastic. So let's also sort some stuff out. Um, these ones actually should be downstairs. Uh, let's do that in a sec. Put a couple of these in here. We don't, don't need that many. We don't really need the can opener anymore because we can now smash them open without losing anything. We can also use these. Uh, but I will carry it on me for the moment. We don't need these. Uh, we can carry one of these. I always like carrying one piece of cloth on me. Uh, we'll leave this behind. I'm going to take one of these back because it's running low. And I think that's it. Uh, we'll carry these because they're hydration. We actually managed to cook most of our teas. So yeah, that's looking good. So then we're going to, uh, we might finish eating all these cattails. Let's actually drop this, we'll, we'll sort this out later. <coughs> so we did, let's eat all of these. We'll get some more cattails in the morning, probably. We're gonna go and see if we can find the moose. And uh, by doing so, we're going to loot a few places. We might kill some deer or something else and food shouldn't be an issue. And even if it were, I would just use a starvation tactic. There we go. Let's finish all of these. And I'll also drink a few teas. There we are. And there we, we might as well you drink one more. And we're also looking quite good with our skills. Cooking is getting to level four. This is almost level two, but it doesn't really change much. Archer is already level 2 and we haven't done anything, but we do have our bow though. So we're going to go out and do that. But first, sleep for 10 hours. And then we'll sleep for another 2 hours, and then unless there's a blizzard out or something like that, it is hunting time. <laughs> and we're going to keep doing that for a little bit before we uh, finish this video. So we'll do a few more things. So let's sleep another 2 hours. All right, so let's see, food-wise, it's, it's early morning, I'm going to eat this, and also eat, or drink rather this, and we should be fine, because now we have the bowl, let's make sure, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to see if I can find the moose first, and if it's not a moose, then we can probably just kill a bear or something like that. Uh, oh yes, these are meant to be put down here. I almost forgot. Oops. Hold on. There we are. That is a crafting tool. Let me just see if there's anything else I need to leave. I think I want to take this stuff, all of this stuff. Uh, yeah. We'll find or make some better gloves too. All right. It's going to be cold out because it's early 
but that's okay. So we're gonna head straight to Unnamed Pond because the moose is going to be in Unnamed Pond uh, and or in the uh, the trapper's cabin. So we're gonna head there so you can find it because we can get an early moose, we can get the satchel and then we can carry more stuff. And other than that, uh, it's just hunting there is really the priority on moose because of the the uh, food involved, but a bear is fine as well because you want to get the bear bedroll. I generally speaking, when you when you kill a bear or two bears to be precise, um, I generally speaking would recommend making the bear bedroll before you make the bear skin coats. And the reason you want to do that is because of the warmth it gives you. Let me set up here. Because the normal bedroll gives like, is it six degrees? Or is it, I can't remember exactly. Uh, was it four? This is 80%, so it's five degrees. Okay, it gives you five degrees. But uh, the bear bedroll gives you 12 degrees. And that means that even if your clothing is in low condition, you're not going to have a problem sleeping outdoors. You know, obviously don't sleep outdoors in the open. But if you go into any cave, even if this, this is all the clothing you have, and you go into a cave and you put on your bed bedroll, you're probably not ever going to freeze because it gives so much warmth uh, protection and that will make traveling easier. So now that when we have the bowl, we could theoretically just stay here in Misty Lake for a very long time, uh, hunt, build up our base, uh, and all of this stuff. But we don't need to do that either. Like we can also keep moving and just having the, the bare bedroll. And yes, it's heavy, but it will make it easier to travel around the world. It basically unlocks safety for all the caves in the world. So if you're especially in places like HRV or something like that, uh, Ash Canyon, then having the bear bed will, will just, it, it will make you uh, free because you don't have to worry so much about shelter. There'll always be shelter. Oops. Feathers, that's great. We need more feathers to make some more bow. <laughs> more bow, more arrows rather. He maybe could go up here to the broken tower, but I don't think so. So I want to see if there's a moose here. This is one of the moose spawns. It doesn't look like there is one, because I don't think I see any markings. But we will see. I don't really need to run, but uh, I don't really want to get cold, especially if I'm hunting. Start picking up more wood. Because we need wood for this. There's usually also a sapling here. It varies whether it's maple or birch. I don't see any markings. Uh, is there a sapling? Uh, I don't think so, no. They've also patched this tree. There used to be a tree here. I think it's this tree over there. It used to bend sideways and you could just walk into the tree. But now you can't anymore. <laughs> there should be some more corpses here with feathers. There's usually at least one corpse around here. Well, let's find out. Let's check in here. Sometimes there's a pry bar in here. Not today, though. There is the corpse. You can get two corpses here sometimes. More feathers. That's great. Need to make those arrows. By the way, uh, how you make the arrows has no impact on its durability or, or damage. It doesn't matter. Like uh, Your archery skill doesn't affect how good your arrows are. It doesn't make a difference if you make the arrows by hand or if you use a tool. 
uh, that none of that makes any difference. It, it will always be the same. How much damage you do depends on your archery skill. So it's not the arrows, it's, the, it's just your skill with the bow that does it. So your skill with the bow will impact uh, how much uh, damage you do, but also an RNG factor. So you can, with level one archery, you can down a moose if you with one hit, if you just hit him in the head and you score a critical hit. It's just that critical hits are quite a low chance on uh, lower levels, so it's not going to happen very often. We're going to sleep one hour just to warm up a bit and get a little bit of energy back that we just used. And then we're going to go out and find a uh, moose or bear, or both. Probably bear first, because there's presumably going to be one here. A mystery lake has four bear spawns, but you will normally only have two of them active in any given game. So one best one is over here by the trailers. One is over by the pond where we're heading now. One is by trappers and one is by mystery lake. And you'll usually only have two of those at a time. I don't think I've ever not had the spawn over here by the online pond. There's usually always a bear here. Uh, but then the third one will vary where it is. I think you can hear the bear. I could hear, there he is, yeah. Okay, so let's do some bear tutorial here. So there's many different ways you can hunt the bear. You can snipe him from far away, and if he doesn't die, he's going to bleed out and run away. So that's one way of doing it. The other way to do it is to get to safe ground and get high up, and then go somewhere to shoot it where it can't actually get to you. Basically, you want to have an escape route ready, so that if it goes for you, then you have a chance to actually get out of there. So a good example would be this tree here. Uh, or you can go up on these little rocks, and then if it gets too close, you can just uh, shoot. So let's crouch to reduce the aggro range. And I'm kind of tap crouching. Uh, the aggro range doesn't reset until you stand up a little bit, so you're safe to do that. So let's go on this log here. You can also do bear dodging, which is you stand next to a tree, and then you just uh shoot it and do run around the uh the edges of the tree or you can do bear dancing you can dance with the bear on the ice but i wouldn't recommend doing that so now we're quite safe we're going to attract the bear to us and let's throw a rock there we are and then we'll just try and shoot him in the face and if he comes up here we can jump down but he's probably just going to run away so we're going to wait for him to get close and then we'll try and just shoot him in the face and that's a pretty good tactic for getting a bear. There we are. Now he's going to try and get up here. But he kind of gave up, and now he runs away. Yeah, would have been something. So now he runs away, and uh, we have to go find him. This achieves the same thing as if I shot the bear from a distance, but it's much safer to do it this way. So let's follow the bear. We now have to track it using this system. You track the blood and the footprints, and eventually it will bleed out, but it could take a long time before the bear bleeds out, depending on where you hit. It could take anywhere uh, from <coughs> 90 minutes to several hours. Uh, how long it takes depends on where you hit the bear and also how uh, your skill is in, in archery. So higher skill means uh, faster bleed out time. So you have to find him and if we, even if you don't lose him, but oh, there is a sapling. If we, do, if we lose the bear, then uh, we'll find it by a crows. And he's got my arrow in it, so I would like to find the bear. We'll get this sapling later. Uh, one thing you should know about all animals, or rather, that is to say, uh, bear, moose, and wolves, if you if they run away from you, either because you hit them or they just ran away, if you shoot them while they run away, they will turn back and start heading towards you to attack you. So if you actually manage to hit a bear as it runs away, like I did now, but I missed. Um, the bear will come back. 
as a wolf. Uh, where does the bear gone? Let's go here. Oh, here he is. Well, this is a different bear. I don't think so, though. Because he's heading back to his spawn location. So this happens sometimes, especially with bears. Um, they will start bleeding out, but then they kind of stop, and they're still bleeding out, but they are... They stop running and they'll start walking and you'll see he's heading back to his spawn They still have his they see he's got my arrow in him if you look close no. that, aye. If you look close there, you can see he's got my arrow in him. So he's still wounded. He's still bleeding But he stopped the running animation So what he's doing now is that he's heading back to his territory. So he's basically starting to walk back and <clears throat> You now have two options You can either just wait for him to die uh, or you can shoot him again and get him to just uh, just kill him outright. I'm going to try and get him closer to the cabin up here because it will make things a lot easier in terms of harvesting the bear. So we're going to do that. He's having a little break, a little breather. If this wasn't the first bear, if I, if I had abundance of food and abundance of gear, then I play a lot more recklessly and I just shoot them in the face and hope for the best. <laughs> but here, because the first bear, I want to make sure it goes down. So let's see. Let's see if we can get this bear to follow me now. Good. Come here. Let's see if we can get him to come with me down this way. Oh, we didn't need to, he died. That is the bear death noise. So here we are, we got our first bear. It was a headshot, but it wasn't a critical hit, so he died pretty quickly after. There we go. And actually, we're barely cold at all, so we could uh, harvest this. And uh, I think what we will do is we will take and harvest this manually. How much food do we have, actually? I don't have that much wood, but that's okay. I want the bear hide first. Let me grab some more sticks. And we'll come back to this uh, guy. Not all sticks around. <laughs> the coal would be useful now, if we had that. There's the wolf, I'd rather not aggro the wolf. And look over there, you got way more birch saplings over there, which is great. We don't need them right now, though. For a future reference, that's good. That's the wolf. Uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue. I'll also kill a few wolves to show you how that's done. See, is it warming up? It is warming up, so uh, it might actually be warm enough to just do this without the fire, but just barely. So let's see, if I get into shelter, will that change anything? Two degrees. Okay, we'll harvest a little bit. Uh, we'll do the hide first. Yeah, it's getting colder now. We got a cold, cold winds. So I'm going to take this hide, head back to the cabin over here. Then we'll go back and harvest the rest of the bear. I wanted to get this curing as fast as I can because it takes 12 days to cure this uh, this bear hide. Anything right about now. <clears throat> 12 days. That's going to take a while. If we find another bear, we'll uh, kill that as well. And then we have two bear hides. Let's grab this too. And we'll head in here. And this is also when the... Uh, Raishi teas come in handy that I have so many of because I will probably eat quite a bit of this bear and that can give me parasite risks. But if that happens, I need Raishi teas to cure the parasites, but at least I can eat bear meat while I do it. We're going to go in here and we're going to drop this here. And also drop this here. And I'm going to make a note for myself. Uh, Like bear hide in a main pond cabin. Okay, 
I also would like to get some wood. So let me just see how much food I got there. Uh, let's eat this chocolate. Uh, we'll use the axe to break this down. Save some calories. There's the cabin fever risk. That's okay. We're going to go outside now for quite a bit of time. Uh, it gives eight, <sighs> two hours, 36. Here yeah, we can probably do that. We'll warm up while we're at it. Let's break this down. Eight of these is fine. Oh, wait. That drains way too much calories. I wasn't looking at the meter then. So we can't do that. But we killed some time. Oh. So that was a... I didn't look at the meter when I clicked on that. So I uh, drained more calories than I wanted to. And we don't want to do that. So we're going to start cooking now. I just want to make sure that I maintain my well-fed bonus. And now, we're again, we're actually not cold anymore. We don't even need a fire now. But I still want to cook this. But because I am not... Let me see, how much is this? This is... 244 calories. Then we'll do this. Now we're eating all of our leftover food, but that's fine. If I was struggling with food, then I could have just uh, done the um, starvation tactic. I could also have uh, gone and get some more uh, cattails over there. There's a load of cattails over there. All right, let's do some harvesting here. And we might get some more feathers as well. It's in a little bit of a slope, which makes things a little bit awkward. Yeah, but I think we can make a fire here. Invalid location. It might be slightly too much of a slope. Let's see. Yeah, it's not allowing me to put it uh, because it's too much slope, which is unfortunate. But because that's the case, I think we might have to quarter this guy. See, it's, it's not letting me do anything. So I think we might have to actually quarter him and then head back closer to towards the cabin. So let's do that. I'll use this. Uh, oh yes, of course, it's frozen. Okay, well that's all right. Then we'll just make a fire uh, somewhere. Mm, we can't even do it. It seems like we can't. Okay. That's frustrating. <clears throat> but then we'll just have to do it this way. We'll have to get some... Uh, some food oh. this way. There we are. And we're going to cook this in a location that's a bit more hospitable. Let's see. Where is the closest I can make a fire? Here, that's too far. Uh, what about over here? Is that also too far? Yeah, that happens sometimes. The animal will die in an awkward position, and there isn't anything you can really do about it. So we're gonna make, have to make a fire here then, just so we can cook the uh, the meat. There we go. And I don't want to lose this well-fed bonus. In a pinch, I can go and uh, grab some cattails by the lake. But I don't think it will be necessary. Okay, there we are. I will put on some of this wood. Uh, we'll start cooking this. And I might make a bit of water as well. go and that's going to take an hour and then we need to make sure that we don't uh, lose our well fed so we're going to eat a few things let's eat also let's get some half kilos of this we have the other bear okay uh, there is one thing we can do with this, which is that uh, if you have a fire, the bear will often stop attacking you, and then it will pause there. And if it doesn't, I can dodge now on the left, so 
So we might as well take advantage and try and kill both bears while we're at it. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, my arrow might hit hit it now, that's the only thing. There we go. Now we have two bears. Now uh, these are probably the only two bears in Mystery Lake. How's this looking? 41 minutes. We'll drink another of these to maintain our well fed. Once we cook this first piece of meat, we won't have a problem. And you want to drop these pieces once you harvest them, otherwise you attract predators. And as you saw now, I had two pieces of meat on me and I only cooked one. So I was carrying one and I had a stench line. And it just so happens that this other bear, this is the trailer bear, it spawns... Uh, I'm not sure exactly where its cave is, but it patrols this area from here to all the way over there. So it has this huge range here. So it probably came around here somewhere and it could smell me, so it came up here. But the upside is we have, uh, you know, two bears. Two bears, one screenshot. So let's see uh, how long has this got. Got 31 minutes. We'll harvest another half kilo. We'll do half kilos because of uh, more manageable pieces of meat for our hunger. And as you can see, no. I was hoping to be some more feathers, but not yet. So we're going to do some cooking now. 14 minutes, let's boil dry, and we can do, we can actually cook maybe a, oops, no, I did not mean to do that, but what you can do is you can take uh, the little water you did, boil, and just boil that, but we can make a uh, reishi tea, there we are, and we might as well then, while we're at it, drink one. And I don't think we'll need to drink any more of these teas for foods, because we'll have bear meat now. Wind is picking up. Uh, this might blow out. We'll have to see. And if so, we'll have to come back for this. Once we have more wood. Six minutes. Okay. Windy, but it seems to still be alright. We're going to eat this now. There we are. We get parasite risk, but that's okay. Okay, this did blow out. Let's see, uh, can I maybe make a fire here? I can. So we're going to make another fire here and just continue cooking right here. If uh, the fire burns out and you haven't finished cooking the meat, you can right click. Come you on. can right click on the meat and move it over here. That didn't work. Okay, well now I uh, hope this doesn't fail because I don't have any more tinder. I've had a lot of fire fails today. The, the odds are stacked Come against on, me fire. today in terms of fire. Not so much everything else. Perfect. And you'll yeah, we'll put see the wood on this. Grab some of these. <sighs> and we'll do the small pieces. But that's only, uh, I want to avoid using small pieces as much as I can. Because um, they also increase the parasite risk by the same amount. But for now I just did it to maximize the time efficiency. This is frozen. Uh, in fact, because this is probably not frozen. Yes, we can harvest this instead. It will be more efficient. So we'll do three kilos of this. That's now done. Now I can put these on. There we are. And we will probably eat these at some point, but maybe not right now. This needs an hour. Let's see if this is frozen. Is this frozen now? It's not frozen yet, so we can keep doing this, take advantage of that.
Uh, I think we can actually do more of that. We can do two more. Let's make sure we don't attract too many wolves doing this. And I get to hide after. I'm dropping all the meat here. Except for this. I need to find a place to rest. Yeah, we have a place nearby, Astrid, don't worry. Now it's probably frozen though. Yeah, now it's gonna take too long. We might get one of these guts. Yeah. Feels like night is coming. I can't feel my hands. Yeah, more well, would be would be good, but that's okay. These are now done. I'm gonna eat another one of these. And we're gonna put these on, start cooking that. And that's gonna take a while. So an hour fifteen. So we're gonna grab the other bear hide. Get that curing as well. How are we doing with warmth there? Mm, a little bit cold, but... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm up uh, tea. Just to make the harvesting of the hide a bit easier. Uh, we'll use this birch tea. And we'll use one of these herbal teas as well. I'll drink this. I'll drink this too. We'll generate some help while we're at it. And this is 47 minutes. And then we can go and grab this bear hide. Yeah. Let's do it. Sounds like the wind died out. There we go. Okay, so we have both hides now. Getting quite high, but that's alright. How long has this got? 12 minutes. Okay, then I think we will just... Do I have something to craft here? Nope. Then I think we'll just do this. We got some food here. Make some more of these. That on. Let's continue housing this. The guts are less of a priority uh, because uh, they are easy to get from anywhere. Let me just drop this in case a wolf shows up. Uh, we can only do about two kilos when it's frozen. Man, I am too tired to think straight. Thirteen minutes, okay. Let me, while we do that, I need some more tinder. So let's harvest this. And then we'll put the next one, and then we'll get ourselves organized with the hides. Let's also put in here. Uh, X2. <coughs> Four minutes, five minutes, I think. Let's eat this. We should have 9% I think now. Yeah, 9%. But if you get parasites, it's fine. It's something you should avoid, but it's not the end of the world. There we are. And uh, we need to put... Oh, I thought I had way more sticks than that. I must have misremembered. But that's okay. We'll then uh, we'll grab this. This. I've got 24 minutes. Let me just see if I can find a few sticks here. Maybe now we'll just come back. We'll just leave the fire there and uh, we'll come back later. We'll get some sleep instead. We could get these rabbits too, but we don't really need it. Right now I just need uh, wood, so I'm going to grab a whole bunch of sticks just to be able to cook all this stuff. Uh, cabin fever is going down because I'm outdoors, but it's not disappearing. Because it's also so uh, warm out, I'm going to use this opportunity to get some wood, uh, assuming it will let me to uh, do it. Uh, so let's go in here. Oh, I forgot to pick this thing up. Oh no, okay. I thought it was a note. <laughs> 
So we can put the other bear hide here. We put this here. We can go back out. Oops, we can go back outside. Now here we can drop our food. And I just want to see if I can get a bit more wood. I'm thinking I'm going to let that fire die down and we'll do some more cooking in the morning instead. So this is going to take too long. So I'm going to go get some wood for the morning. We're not cold at all, so this is just fine. It's quite a clear night, so I think we can actually break this down. Yeah. This is what I talked about earlier, that you don't use, need to do this very often. But if it is a clear day and it's nice and bright and you're not cold like I am now, it's an idea to do this just to get uh, more wood you can use. So yeah, and this is <laughs> this is interloper without any fires or anything, just going out, grabbing limbs. Starting to get cold though, we'll go and sleep soon. See any more of these? I don't see any. We've got quite a bit of wood now. So in the morning we'll go and uh, cook some more. Up by the bears. Both bears are at a slope and I can't quarter them because they are too frozen. What are you going to do? So we'll harvest what we can. I could only quarter those bears if I did it right away when they died. If I then immediately go and quarter them once they're fresh, then uh, it's fine. But other than that, you can't do it. Alright, we'll get some more sticks from these branches then. Let's get some more. We're going to take advantage of all of this. I see another limb over there. I might go get that. Because I'm still not cold. It doesn't really matter if we sleep into the morning a bit. We're probably going to spend a day or two uh, harvesting all this meat and cooking it. Especially because it's in such an awkward location that we kind of have to do it in small pieces. Otherwise, it will be, um, it will go away. It's, it's at an angle where we can't put a fire next to the bear. So therefore, I have to put a fire somewhere away and then go back. And I can only harvest a few kilos at a time. So things are much slower because of that. As I level up carcass harvesting, though, that will be slightly better. And I think it will probably close. I have a level two. Okay, that's, that's it. We'll eat another one of these. 14% now, I think. <laughs> That's all right. So we're gonna sleep now. Do that. I will sleep at least for a little while. We'll sleep until let's sleep eight hours, and then we'll go and continue harvesting these bears. We might not harvest all of it, depending on how we get on. But we'll see. Need to make some more water also. And if we get parasites, then we'll just deal with it. We're gonna have this as like the bear base. And actually, just to make things a bit easier, let me sort myself out a bit here. Uh, we're going to go in here. Let's just put this there. And I'm gonna leave heavy things on the ground that I'm not going to use. Uh, we might use one of these, not both. We won't be using this or this. Uh, we're not going to be using... We'll keep the clothes on, I suppose. Uh, I guess that's about it. We could take the clothes off if we're still too heavy. This is just to make the, the transition a bit easier. Okay, I guess that's, that's it for now. Don't let me forget it. <laughs> Wait, do I have a book to start a fire? Uh, I do not. Let's grab a book from in here. I might need two books, actually. Let's see. Then we'll go back out and uh, continue cooking. As you can see, it's again not cold. 
because of how well we're doing with, uh, with this. So I'm gonna grab some more sticks while I'm at it. Do a little detour back up to the bear, just to have as much uh, wood as I can. The cold is not an issue right now, but the wood is. I just want to be able to cook as much of that as I can. I'm going to take advantage of this warmth. And maybe there will be a blizzard doing this. Because the weather is quite clear now. But we'll deal with it if that's the case. The benefit of having a fire near a tree, like I did now, is that you can usually manage to reposition the fire if necessary. If, it, if the wind blows it out, you can get to cover, grab a torch or light a uh, torch, and then just light the fire again, like I just did. All right, let's head up here. I'm actually warming up now. <laughs> so now we can actually take advantage of that and harvest as much as we can of this bear before, uh, before we get cold. So here we have this. So we're going to wait to start the fire until we need the fire. We're going to have the bow out because a wolf might come prowling. Until then we're going to use this knife. And uh, yeah, four kilos. It takes a long time, you see, because they are frozen. But there's literally nothing I can do about that. We got some more feathers. <clears throat> it's great. Happens a lot when you harvest. Let's see if there's any more feathers. I don't think so. Oh, yes, there's some. We need all these feathers. I'm gonna focus on this bear because it died first. It's still warm, so I'm just gonna keep doing this. Uh, we're gonna actually use the hacksaw because it's faster. I should have done that in the beginning, but I was just uh, trying to use better pieces. But yeah, as you can see, the hacksaw is much faster. Um, I forgot to do that the first few four kilos I did there. <coughs> uh, because uh, I'm not used to the carcasses not being thawed. A carcass will usually... It, it's very rare that I kill something and it's on a slope. So therefore I usually have them uh, completely thawed. Uh, let's do 10 kilos. Oh, Let's uh, do this. And we need some uh, food. We'll eat these half kilo one. Increase our chance of uh, parasites even more. <laughs> and how are we looking with the amount of food left? I'm just going to grab the last six kilos of this. We'll use the knife for the guts if we want to. Right, parasites got here. We didn't get parasites. How nice. Alright, so now I want to actually uh, utilize a different fire. So I'm going to grab as many of these as I can. That's probably... Let's drop one. It'll be slightly easier there. You know? What I want to do is get back now to the cabin. And I want to leave it there. Because then I can make a fire by the cabin. And I can just go inside if I'm cold. It's just a much better tactic than doing it out here in the open. So yeah, we're just going to spend some time cooking now. And then after we've done that, we're going to see if we can find the moose. Maybe kill some wolves. And then we're pretty much set. Um, we will continue eating bear meat though. And if we get parasites, we'll just deal with it. The way the parasites work is that they, they give you a health loss every day which is temporary, but it will be like that while you have the parasites. And you, you drain fast, you lose energy every day as well. So you basically get more tired every day. And this will continue for 20 days. So it's a bit debilitating. Like it, doesn't, it means you can't go to the summit, for example. But other than that, um, uh, you, it at least allows you to eat more meat. Okay, so now... We need this. Now we're in a situation where I think I would like to drop some clothing. As crazy as it sounds. Because they are heavy and I want more space. 
to go and pick up the rest of this meat. <clears throat> I left behind the. We'll be walking faster this way. And then we'll probably make a chain of campfires just to cook all this stuff. Uh, you can also, of course, take your time now uh, because we are at day, what, day 12. We're on day 12 and we there's nothing really that needs doing at this point because we have our bowl. So if you want to just take your time and survive, you can make one fire and just cook these things slowly. After all, it's just about surviving as long as you want, as long as you can. But you can also speed up the process by having multiple fires. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think we can grab a bit more of this. So let's harvest a bit more from here. Grab another six kilos from here or something. <laughs> Glitchy bit. Uh, how's this? 26, okay. Now I'll grab these, head back with these as well. Do these other ones at last, I think. No, actually, we'll take them now. This pack is getting kind of heavy. This is a scrap, but we'll just take it. Now we smell it. We can attract wolves, and it's foggy, so that's a little bit risky. The wolves could uh, sneak up on us suddenly. And if you find a moose or a deer after this is done, I'll also show how you just use the bow in general. But using the bow isn't that hard. It takes a bit of practice to get used to exactly where to aim. But in short, the, remember the bow is a projectile weapon. So once you shoot it, it will drop down. But it follows the same rules as a lot of shooting games where if the target is very, very close, you need to aim actually underneath it. So let's see. Let's see if I can have an example here. <clears throat> I'll drop uh, drop this first. Let's drop all of this. Do you think we got enough bear meat? Let's put this back on. This is going to keep us warmer. So let's see. Um, all right, so let's say this is our target, right? So if you if you're very close, you just aim with the tip of the arrow, and you're going to hit. And even at medium range, this is going to be fine. Even if it's like over here, we more or less just aim with the tip of your arrow, and you will hit. If however you're very close, if it's coming right towards you, then you might want to aim a little bit under, because the arrow is going to hit uh, above it. Uh, I can maybe demonstrate like this. See, Boing. right in the head, because the arrow is underneath now. See, that's because uh, it's so close that um, uh, it hasn't really accounted for it yet. Where's the uh, where did that arrow go? Uh, it's just kind of messing about there, and I don't know where it went. <coughs> Didn't land on the roof, did it? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Well, if you are at, uh, I might lose some arrow durability doing this, but if you are at medium range, then you want to aim more or less with the tip of the arrow, like this. That was actually slightly too high because I am a bit too close still. But yeah, something like this. You see, it sways, and at high levels, it'll sway less. Point. That's more or less how you do it. And if it's from a longer distance, then you need to compensate even more. If you're in a long, long distance away, then it's much harder and you're going to miss a lot. But there's two ways to do it. Like one is to figure out roughly where to aim. So most likely I would have to aim somewhere like here, I think. So one way to do it is to just first aim at the head, right, or wherever you want to aim at, of course. Then you aim a bit higher and you shoot. There we go. I hit the corpse. The other way to do it is to, you know, figure out, okay, I think I need to aim roughly here, and then you do a quick shot like this. And that works just fine too. That make, gives you a little bit, it's a bit faster, basically. Let's see, uh, where's this arrow? 
And there's the other arrow. There we are. Nice. Okay. So that's that's pretty much how this uh, uh, archery thing works. Let's head back up and harvest more of this bear. If I can, I'll get the guts, but it's really not that big a deal. This is, by the way, also uh, why I often carry a hacksaw with me, because it's just my preferred method of harvesting a carcass. It's it's if the carcass is thawed and, and so it's not frozen, then the knife is the best. is is the fastest way of doing it. Uh, but even then, I often use the hacksaw because it's just it, it's not that much slower, and it's very easy to repair the hacksaw. You just need one scrap metal and tool and just repair it. So that's why I often have a hacksaw with me and just use it. Uh, however, when it's uh, thawed, the knife is better, and the knife is always best for guts. Uh, but uh, here I, I just uh, I did a few with the knife because I just forgot about it. I wasn't really thinking uh, because I I'm just used to always having a fire next to the bear carcass, so I didn't really think when I did that. But as you can see, the hacksaw is a, is a great harvesting tool here. Dropping all of this so I won't be detected by wolves as easily. I'll try and get the rest of this. I'm gonna take some dehydration damage here, but that's okay. I if I can drop I'll come back for here. the rest later. Because we're very heavy now. More feathers. And then in the morning, I think, we'll uh, cook all this stuff. See what we can do. Might make a chain of fires just to uh, get it all cooked. It's going to be a lot of meat, something like 40 kilos or something. And uh, it's uh, risky eating only this because of the parasites. But I'm not too worried about it, especially with our current condition and situation. Let's jump all of this. And there's a little bit left and maybe we can go for the guts, but I don't know if this is worth it. I might, might actually leave the rest because there's only about, I think it was about six kilos of meat left and then the guts and we don't really need the guts. Uh, some guts will be handy, but they're very easy to get from rabbits and things. So we, we might wait with that. So I think we'll go inside and sleep. And then we'll go and cook all this stuff. We don't have cabin fever, I don't think. Yeah, we have cabin fever a little bit. So we can sleep here, but not much else. There we are. Uh, we'll eat another piece of meat if we have it. We do. I don't think we need to eat any more for the time being. So 9% is probably going to be fine. So now we're going to sleep. And then we're going to do some cooking. Uh, stay hydrated. We don't actually have enough water to hydrate completely, but that's okay. We'll drink one of these. And if we need more, if we do get parasites, we'll just make more. Sleep for 10 hours. Get our rested meat to back up. And then we'll go out and cook. Provided that the weather's all right. Sounds like it might be a bit bad weather. Let's have a look. How bad is it? Mm, pretty bad. I would like this wind to stop. Hmm. We'll get a rabbit then. I think there might have been two rabbits. I'm not sure. Or was it just one? Let's grab a few of these. And we'll head back inside. We'll take dehydration damage, but that's okay. I just I think I would prefer if this wind died down before I start making any fires. Because it just complicates things. We'll harvest this uh, guy. 
Ahí está. Now we use the hands for this. And then if we want to speed this up, we can use the knife fastest. Axel is alright. And that hatchet is alright too. Uh, but 40 minutes is fine by hand because we're waiting for these, this wind to die down. It sounds like it did die down. So let's head back out then. And we have another gut here. And also this. Alright, see now it's uh, much better. So we're going to start some fires. Let me just make sure I have tinder. I have eight tinder. Okay. So let's and let's grab some more books because I think there was more books in here, weren't there? Uh, yeah, we got books there. Um, any more books? Ah, but we, I guess we don't need more. And I'm going to make a little bit of a fire. Uh, I think we'll do it around the bends here. So we'll light a torch and we'll start doing some fires. Can I make one here? No, that's okay. We'll make them here. Like this. <coughs> and we'll make them in like a uh, L shape around the corner here. So that if the wind were to pick up, most likely they wouldn't all blow out. And even if they do, I can reach them in one of the other corners. I'll die if I don't drink soon. As we know, Astrid. So I'm going to put the small piece on first, and this, and we'll put two liters here as well, and then we'll put another fire here, we're going to have four fires because there's so much food to cook that we're just going to use all the wood on, we have fire. and cook Come as on. much as we can. And if we run out of fuel, then that's fine. We'll just leave it and come back to cook the rest later. <sighs> See this. Cook that. And then we'll start moving this here. We're using the cooking bucket is faster, but we're just going to do it this way. 113. Oh, yeah. Then we'll try and make a fire here. Well, that's good enough. Apparently, it didn't allow us to do it. And I'll have four fires going. Three is probably enough, but I'm going to have four. It will make things a bit faster. Too windy, it says. It's not too windy. Touch, put a couple of sticks on it, and we'll make another one a bit closer here to the edge. Oh, yeah, using all our books just to increase the chance. And then we're gonna do a mass mass cooking basically. We also need some water. And then we're gonna find a moose. Come on, little fire. Come on. We'll probably kill some wolves too. There we are. Oh, yeah. Let's see the run. That's a good one. I can douse this. Now we'll do this. Now all this is cooking. Let me just check for feathers in. Oh. Let's grab a few of these. I'm not sure I can carry much more. Put these over here to be the cooking on this side. There we are. So this is all cooking now, so this is an hour eight. And this is how much? Eleven minutes. Okay. So we'll use these as our timer to make some more water. We'll make one liter here. And yeah, we're approaching the time for that. Let's put on some more cedar wood. We'll do this, and now I'm going to grab a few more of these. Let's 
seven minutes. Okay, I'll try and time them perfectly after. So six minutes, 17 minutes. I'm gonna wait until that's done before we start another one. Let's have a drink though. Let's drop the cooked meat here. There we are. And move all this to the fires. Let's have it a bit closer. I'm clicking three on my keyboard if you're wondering what I'm doing. That's the drop decoy button, which these days don't really do much because the decoy is barely, uh, barely a mechanic that it does anything. But that's what I'm doing. Uh, you can also drop meat that way. What do you find? Okay. <clears throat> now we'll try and change that timing. Is there something I can do while doing this? I think uh, if I had a book, I could read. How is this? I'll also harvest this. And I'm going to grab a better torch, probably. Uh, this is kind of a terrible torch. There we are. And let's just balance this out. 47. So let's put on. I like to have the roughly the same time. And because these have 37 minutes, let's look around if there's any more. Like wood or something I can grab. Might be some more sticks over here to find. Uh, has some cedar, but it's going to be too long to harvest that. So we'll just grab the sticks we can find instead. There's a few sticks. Not a lot, but something. We can probably break down two of these before the, it starts burning. And look at our situation now. So I was quite uh, close with running out of food, but that was pretty much only because I knew that it would be okay. If I thought, hmm, this might be too little, I would have instead gone, uh, I would have put some bear me to cook and then I would have gone over to the unnamed pond over there and grabbed a bunch of uh, cattails maybe killed some more rabbits and then I would have balanced it out with that instead but it's not really necessary here we got our oh no the cabin's on fire oh no oh, oh wait no I'm just cooking so let's see here uh, how is this looking now so this is done I'm actually going to eat one of these. How is this looking? Six minutes. How is this looking? Five minutes. We need to put some more on both of these. Let's get them both up to an hour. Uh, let's get them both of the, all of them up to two hours would be good. And I think that's probably going to be enough. We'll go go from there. And these are done too. And then we'll just put down the rest of this meat. And we can't, I don't think we can cook all of this. It's going to take too long. Uh, be close. There we are. And how long has this got? 43 minutes. Drop some more meat here. I'm going to do another wood round while we wait. Let's see what we can find. Uh, I could maybe harvest a cedar limb, but it's not really that important. I could also break down some stuff inside. There's a stick. Might be some up here in the woodcuts, but I don't know how many hemostics there are in the immediate area. But we have 
a little bit of time. Let's see, hold on. Give me one second. There we are, here's some more sticks. I was hoping to find some more sticks here because it's the uh, the clear cut or wood log and seeing as I cut down a lot of wood there would make sense you also find sticks here. We might also check the bear carcass. See if we can find some more feathers. It should be up here. There they are. Any more feathers around? Oh, I didn't pick this up. No more feathers. Uh, how long to do this? Uh, we'll do two of these. But that will probably be enough time. Yeah, and then we'll head back down to the fires. Look for the smoke. You can actually see it in the distance. There. See it? <laughs> Even in fog, you can you can see the fires. Let's do this. This is now boiled. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, we can make another two liters of this. Let's drop the guts in here. Just have a few more guts. Eventually, we'll have too many guts, but for now, it's fine. 16 more feathers is great. You can, uh, one thing you can do, a little trick, um, is when you kill an animal, if you quarter it and get those meat bags, what you can do is you can leave a meat bag somewhere and it acts as like a carcass, and then the, you'll get feathers around the meat bags. Uh, and because you can get crows over the, the meat, that does happen. Um, but it's not something you'll see me do very often. I almost never do it because also the meat bag can despawn. Uh, if enough time goes by and it degrades, it despawns. So it's not a very good tactic, in my opinion, uh, to do. But uh, it can can be done. In my experience, though, you, you don't get many feathers doing that. You get a couple here and there. So. <coughs> I don't think it's the best tactic. There we are. How long has this got? So this needs another... This needs quite a bit longer. This needs... This is almost enough. See, we won't be able to cook all of it. We just don't have the wood for it. Uh, yeah, we just barely have enough wood to make all of this. And let's make sure that this... That's enough. I'm gonna go and get final set of wood. Let's just see if there's some up here or something. As long as you'll find a maple up here, it's like a little clearing. And you can sometimes find a single piece of maple just growing up here. Let's just have a look around if you see anything. Doesn't seem to be anything. No uh, wood or anything at all. Oh, that's okay. I'll head back down there. We'll be fine. Let's head back to our feast. So the rest of this meat we'll have to cook another time. We just don't have the uh, the wood to cook all of this stuff. It takes too long and it's just too much of it. But what are you going to do? There isn't really anything we can do. We've got 45 minutes. Maybe there's something we can break down in here. Uh, I think these are all big things. How about this? 39 minutes. There is also an argument for breaking this down, because you can find stuff behind it. We found this candy bar now, but sometimes there'll be other stuff too. We can probably break this down though. I don't have to break this down, 15 minutes. I might do that. 
I don't know if we'll use this wood, we'll see. That is done, and this looks like it's all dying. And four minutes, okay, we'll put... I think this will, st it will turn into embers, and then I think it will still be okay. 22 minutes. Yeah, we'll put this meat here. We have quite a lot of meat, which is great. I'm gonna let this die out. Yeah, this will be fine. Yeah, embers. But it still cooks when it's embers, you see. This is 17 minutes, so we might as well do this. Map some area. And this is boiled now. We have a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of water. And I think we have enough to actually... Actually, this time, sorry. We'll put this. And we'll cook some more in these. But it's faster. Not a lot. It's like 10 minutes. But it's something. And we can do that. We can go back in here. It takes an hour. <laughs> Do you see that? Uh, this is going to take two hours and a half. It's way too long. And the rest of it also. But we'll break this down. Use it for repairs. And we'll also harvest this. <clears throat> and we'll spend the night here. And then we're going to head to Trappers. We might even take the stuff with us. Because we'll uh, start moving things towards that place. How's this looking? Uh, I might do what I said earlier and grab the, those cedar limbs over there. Because we could maybe continue cooking a bit. Let's do this. Parasites have been healed. That's great. We're actually going to take this and take that. And we're going to do this. And that. And I think... Will it be enough? No, it won't be. Okay, well then, we'll have to do this instead. And I think that will be enough. Might be just under, but we'll do this to get one stick. There we go, and now that will be cooked. And while it's warm out and everything is fine, I'll get some more wood for future use. And we'll come back and cook this another time. We don't need to cook all of this right now. Use the hatch because it's much faster. In fact, if I'm really lucky, I don't think it will work though, but if I'm lucky, I can actually continue cooking because the fire might have just barely not gone out. Let's see. Yeah, three minutes. If that's the case, we might as well keep going. Grab another limb then. We can cook a little bit more. But they're still warm, so we're taking advantage of this. It's dusk, so that can't be far yeah, we get a bit more cooking here because of these limbs and it being warm enough for me to actually harvest them. One more of these limbs. So one over here. Over here, there's one. So let's go and grab that too, and I think we'll be golden. Or like, rather, we have enough. Yeah, uh, this is the one I saw. Uh, this is fur, though. It might take longer. I'm not 100% sure how that works. We'll see. Now that I know the bear is here and in the trailers, I'll probably will move the base to trappers if the moose is there. We'll see. Okay, we got this. This also burns longer, which is great. 
I can't run back though, so it's possible that by the time I get back, the fire will have burned out. But if it has, that's okay. Uh, we can use this uh, next time to cook some more. But yeah, as you can see now, it is growing fantastic. We have the bowl. We have some stuff that we crafted already. And we have killed two bears, so we're moving towards getting the bear bedroll. We could... You could make the bear cloak. It will make life a lot easier in that you're going to be really warm because it gives six degrees warm. Six degrees is a lot. I mean, these ones just give two if they are uh, fully repaired. <clears throat> so six degrees warm is fantastic. But I like making the bear bread roll first just because it's, it allows you so much movement liberty. So I think it is better. Might try and get some rabbits, we'll see. Let's eat one of these. It hasn't burned out, so we might as well continue a bit. Put this in, put that in. Put a fur on this time. Now we have more wood again. Drop all this stuff here. Have a drink. Actually, we could try and um, get a rabbit. You can kill rabbits with the bow. The upside of doing that is that you level the archery skill doing it. It can be a little bit tricky to hit, though. As you saw there, I had to aim slightly under it. But the downside is it takes uh, arrow condition, so this arrow broke. Uh, the arrow loses equally much condition by the... Uh, regardless of the animal type. So here, for example, I shot two arrows at a rabbit, but the arrow condition is equally affected. So uh, when you shoot an arrow, it will always lose durability, but how much durability it loses depends on what you hit. And it's basically uh, wood, uh, snow, ice, stone, and animal. It's kind of like the five categories. If you miss and you just hit the ground, your arrow will only take three between three and five percent damage. So don't worry too much about missing and hitting the snow. If you hit um, uh, the ice, which isn't great, then it takes I think thirty-seven percent or something like that. I have a spreadsheet somewhere. And um, if you hit a stone, that's the worst. It takes like half percentage. If you hit an animal, it's 27%, which means that you can only get four shots in with an arrow before it breaks. But the thing is that it doesn't matter what animal it is. So if you shoot a rabbit or a moose, you know, you'd think that the moose is tougher hide, uh, but it doesn't matter. The arrow degrades equally uh, the same if you shoot a rabbit or a moose. It doesn't make a difference. So therefore, uh, I generally speaking don't hunt rabbits um, with the bow. I almost never do it. I only did it now to illustrate how it can be done. But generally speaking, I, I don't do it. <clears throat> and I can get some rabbit meat just to uh, have something non-parasitic. Cargo Siles in level 3, that's great. We have an Aurora again. Okay, I wouldn't recommend going outside during the Aurora. <laughs> Let's put the big ones here. 25 minutes, which means we can grab this. Let's use the hands for that. Let's eat this. Eat this. And let's just put this thing in quickly. It's going to take just five minutes. Let's eat that too. And we might as well keep cooking this uh, while we harvest this rabbit. I think we'll use this because we're not really pressed for time. Uh, 
and then 20 minutes, okay. I think we'll do... Mm, we'll do this because of the cooking time. Four minutes, it's done. We can keep doing this for a little, a little while. Pass the rest of this, then we'll use our hands for this. It sounds like the wind is picking up, so this fire might go down soon. We have cooking level four, so we're getting there. Amazing. I think we'll put a cedar on here, and that's probably going to be it. We'll cook the rest later. Let's sort this stuff out. And some of this. Go back outside. Okay, we're doing great now. We're going to leave the rest of the guts, I think, from the bear. We don't really need it. So anything else we can do over here? We'll harvest this. Uh, could repair the socks, but they're terrible socks. Yeah, I think we are pretty much good. Yeah. Nice. And we have very slow, small risk of parasites now. I think we're just going to wait for this. And then we'll take that. And okay, we can make one more of these. I wonder how much? I wonder there's quite, quite a lot of meat left, yeah. We got a lot of cooking done though, which is great. Alright, we're going to go sleep now. How much is actually left? I'm not sure I'm carrying much four. Bread. Not a lot of cooking left, but that's uh, we'll leave that for later, so we can keep moving. Take that, take that. We'll grab another torch as well. Now we have so much food. Look at that. So we're going to eat one of them, and then we'll drop. The rest for now. Go for one. Go back in here and we're going to sleep. I don't think there's anything. No. We're going to sleep and then we're going to go to Trapper's Cabin, see if we can find the moose. Right, I'm going to sleep pretty much the full time. I'm going to sleep 10 hours. Let's see how that goes. And yeah, so this is fine. So let's uh, have a drink. We're going to leave some of this water in here because we don't need all of this. So we will just leave uh, maybe... Yeah, this is fine. I'm going to take this with us because I want to see if I can find a moose in Trappers. And if I do, I'm going to set up base there. And if I don't, then I might stay in camp office. Okay, so we got all this stuff. Uh, we'll take one of these with us. And we're going to take some travel food as well. Four of these is probably fine. And we also smell a lot now because we're carrying all this gut. But that's okay because if I attract wolves, which is likely, we can use it as an instruction tutorial on how to kill wolves. So now we're going to head to Trapper's Cabin. <coughs> But I'm going to also grab some cattails on the way. Sometimes there's also a uh, deer carcass here. But it doesn't seem to be one today, or it could have uh, could have despawned. Or actually, it looks like it's a corpse instead. Very often it's one of, one of them, like not both. Let's grab these cattails. Keep an eye out for wolves, it's gonna come running over the hill and they smell me. <laughs> but then there should be a few uh, cattails here too. So let's just go grab these. 
Hunting predators is usually easier than hunting prey in the long dark because the predators will head towards you when they see you. So they'll start attacking you and then you can just shoot them in the face as they charge towards you. But of course the downside is if you don't kill it, they might kill you, <laughs> which is uh, not so great. But uh, other than that, the um, the predators are much easier to, to catch while the the uh, the deer and things they run away especially difficult before you get archery level 5 archery level 5 allows you to crouch and if you crouch you can then uh, sneak up on them and just shoot them very close so there's two skills in this game that you should try and level up as fast as possible and it's archery and cooking all other skills are secondary if you can get archery to level 5, you can crouch and you can um, uh, you can get close to animals and shoot them and they won't attack you and that's a great advantage. Plus you also get, uh, hold on, bandage, flare, uh, I guess we can this use this for cooking I guess, tools again. Plus, you can also um, you have a much higher chance of critical hits, so you are way more likely to one-shot an animal, like bears and moose, for example. So that's very important. But most important is to uh, get like cooking to level bear. five, and the only reason you want that is because at level five cooking, you get food poisoning ah. immunity, and that will make it so you can eat bear meat and wolf meat without any risk at all. I was going to see if there were any uh, birch there, but there weren't any. We don't need these rabbits, really. I'll just... since they were in my way. Let's head towards trappers, then. You can also see if there's a corpse or carcass over here. When you play this, it's quite likely that you'll find more deer carcasses than I am. Uh, because of the, um, uh, they sometimes despawn these days, but that's likely to be fixed. But other than that, if you're watching this in the future, the gameplay is likely to be exactly the same, except you'll probably have a bit more carcasses than I am having. But other than that, it'll be exactly the same. I really doubt there's going to be any major changes to anything that you see in this video. Let's see. We have a corpse. Nothing on him, any feathers. But one feather. Let's see. Let's see if we can find a moose up here. Now there won't be any moose markings. Um but it can still be there. And uh, one other thing is that I haven't for this video, a lot of my videos I put code words in the middle of the video, but I haven't done that this time, unless I edit one in, <laughs> somewhere subtle to see if you see it. <laughs> um, but for this video, the code word, if you're still watching by now and you're listening, it can be birch. Because it heals you. Life's a birch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and it heals you. So let's see here. There's usually also um, saplings here. I don't see moose, but it can respawn later. But if I don't see one, I'm just going to head to camp office and uh, continue basing there. No saplings here. But there were a bunch uh, near the trailers. There's a backpack here. Let's loot that. Nothing. Sometimes there's a backpack down here also, but it usually won't be here if you found this backpack up here. But sometimes there, there can be one like lurking here in the grass, just so you, you know that. A small rabbit hides is always good. 
grab some uh, more sticks while we're at it. We need more sticks. And let's see what we can find in the trapper's cabin. No moose yet. We might get a moose uh, later though. Should be enough uh, rabbits. We'll keep an eye out for our moose when we come out. We'll probably stay here one night. We don't have cabin fever risk anymore because we, we were outside cooking for ages. So cabin fever has gone away. And let's see what we got in here. Okay. Trapper's Cabin is one of our people's favorite bases. And it is one of mine too. And I very often base it. I might not do it this time, but we'll Nobody see. Needs this anymore. Uh, because it's a it's a neat little location. It has all sorts of things and has food nearby. Rabbits nearby, moose spawn, bear spawn. Not today though, but uh, not too far away. There's walls. There's the coal. This pack is getting too heavy to carry. Yeah, another one of these cooking pots, which we don't need. But so there's the mag lens there. No. Then the mag lens will be in the lookout tower, which we also need to get to. All right, let's open the safe. Maybe we can get an air wrap in there. That would be fantastic. Let's open that. Uh, 25 or something like that. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Okay. Twenty-six. Thirty-two. Another wool sweater and wool scarf, which are things I don't really need. Okay, we're going to go back outside because uh, it's not particularly cold out. So we might as well uh, drop these and harvest them. But before I do that, let me just dump everything in the floor here so they can cure while I'm doing stuff. Let's dump all of this. Oh, I can stay here. Then we can harvest the rabbit, and if I had a mag lens, I could also cook the rabbit right now, but I don't have one. I'm actually going to use our hands, I think, or maybe, yeah, we'll just use our hands. Because we're actually warm right now, so we're not really in a hurry to do anything. And we'll do the same thing here. I don't know if I've cooked this rabbit meat, though. Let's see. I just carry it with me. Track some. Uh, I'm gonna need to eat soon. Track some wolves or something. We'll leave this raw meat out here, and then we'll go inside. And we will leave what I just harvested, the guts and the pelt. Let me see quickly if there's something I need to like repair or anything. I have two of these. Uh, this one's worse. Uh, what are their conditions? So 82. There is an argument for repairing this even at 82 because it gives 0.4 warmth. Uh, these are terrible. I might repair them just to level up a bit and have better conditions. Let's just do that. Oh, it's failed. Let's try one more time. If it fails again, I think I'll just leave it. If it fails third time rather. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Okay, I think we will then just wait until morning. Uh, I could maybe do one more repair. Let's go for the parasite risk, which hopefully we won't get. But if we do, we'll deal with it. And let's, let's just see here. Oh, this is 67 only. Let's try and repair that before it gets too dark. And we failed. That's all right, we can harvest these. These are decent, they're probably the second best hat uh, in the game, on interloper at least, but that's about it. Uh, we can harvest this as well, it's easy to find more of these if we wanted to. I think we'll have enough light to repair this, assuming we succeed, which we've been failing a lot. We're going to fail the repairs a lot at lower levels. There we go, 97. 
and that one could be repaired too. Oops. If we repaired all of this to the max, we would get 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.3, 1.5, 1 1.7, 1 1.9, 2.3, 2 2.6. 2 so it's barely worth it. So if I repaired everything to the max, I would go up to 16 or maybe 17 degrees warmth bonus, which is great, but it's not essential. Uh, in the late game in Interloper, if you have 28 degrees warmth bonus or higher, then it's usually okay to just walk out during the day, as long as it's noon or later, and you're not going to get cold, or you will just barely get cold. And if you have the, uh, the cold fusion badge in addition, it makes it even better. And let's eat this chocolate, <clears throat> stale chocolate bar. We'll have a drink and we'll just sleep now, I think. And then we're gonna head back to Trapper's, not Trapper's, camp office, if there isn't a moose outside. We can't actually sleep for 10 hours because we're not tired enough, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll just see how far we go. That's healed, that's nice. Uh, we don't really have anything to do while it's dark. I can go out and just check to see if there is a moose out in the night, which I doubt, but we can go check. And we'll also go and check in full on muskeg as well. Moose? No moose. Alright. The moose can also despawn suddenly and also respawn suddenly. So I've had it twice happen to me that I've been hunting the moose. And it goes around a corner and then it just, hop oh, it vanishes. It happens. All right, well then, uh, there isn't really much to manage uh, to kill time, except we can do this. I don't think there's much else to really do here. Uh, we could read this, but it's too dark, so it won't allow us to do it. We can harvest this for Tinder. What else? Uh, anything else? I don't think so. Ah, actually, let's repair. So how much is repair? Uh, yeah, we're going to repair this one with the scrap metal we found. Oh, it's dark. Okay, we can't do it in the dark. I brought one of these whetstones, so we're going to sharpen these uh, knives we have to kill some time for light as well. You'll eventually run out of whetstones, but we'll easily find, oh, I don't know, at least 10 of these, probably more, probably 15, 20 of these in total in the game. And they will allow you to maintain the tools. You probably don't need to worry. Once you've made one uh, hatchet and one knife, you probably don't need to worry about making more of them until you get to day 300, two, two, 300 somewhere. <clears throat> at which point you'll run out of uh, whetstones. When you do run out of whetstones, you can still repair the, um, the hatchet and the knives though, using scrap metal. But you need to go to the milling machine in Bleak Inlet. If, if there's an Aurora on, you can use a milling machine there and it costs you one scrap metal and you'll repair your tools, which is great. That's a really, really strong feature. So that's one way of doing it. The only problem is if you have to go to the end it. But it's not uncommon that in the late game, uh, you will want to make several tools. You might, at some point, you decide that I'm going to need more arrows and my tools are running low. So you collect scrap metal and you take a little trip to the, um, to the dam or something and get that. And then you go to the forge and you make maybe two or three sets of knives and hatchets. And then you store them in your base. That's a very common way to do it. All right, let's see if there's a moose. And if not, we're going to go head back to camp office. Uh, we could go into the mines and get some coal, I suppose. Uh, that's an option as well. So let's see here. Uh, actually, let's, just before I forget, I want to repair this. Just have a high condition one. Okay, let's just grab this stuff. I'll go back inside with it if there's a moose. Sure I can carry much more. Oh, heavy, I might not. 
Moose? No moose. We're gonna have to keep looking for a moose then. It's there though. But we don't really need there right now. But I will go get some there later if we can't find a moose. Uh, one closer to the base. But you can also go in this cave over here. Which we could do, but because I'm carrying quite a bit, I won't do it right now. But in there there'll be coal. So here's wolves. This will be a good practice, except he's going for this deer. Let's see, it goes towards me instead. Mm, he seems kind of bent on getting this there, so we'll let him do that. <laughs> and I'll show you how to kill a wolf next time. But we'll run into at least one more wolf, I think, so it'll be fine. I'll explain to you how it works. So wolves is really not that big of an issue. As you can see, once you have fire, they are really easy to handle. Could have run for it. Uh, it killed it. Killed it up there. We could now go and kill the 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 wolf and take the meat, but we don't we don't need, really need it. And also, I want to get back to the base with all the stuff that I have. So yeah, if you have fire, you can scare off a wolf very easily. It's really no problem at all. Uh, you you need a torch. A stone also helps, but that's about it. It's very easy. However, if you want to hunt the wolf or kill a wolf that's in your way, or maybe you don't have fire or something, then it's quite easy. Uh, you just got to make them run towards you. That's the scary part. And then you want to shoot them in the face, but you want to zigzag. So a, a wolf will often run kind of like left and right. So when the wolf is running towards you, you want to move backwards and you want to match his movement. So if he runs left, and you run left, and he runs right, you run right, and so on. Until he runs in a straight line, straight at you. And when he does that, you wait until he's very close, and then you shoot him right in the face. Just aim at him when, with your arrow. If he gets very close, aim slightly at his jaw, or like underneath his face, and you'll hit him right in the eye. And they'll always die. A wolf, a headshot on a wolf will always kill it even with level one archery a wolf will always die with a headshot except just a little keynote uh or rather trivia except if it's an aurora wolf aurora wolves can take more damage uh the long dark wiki says that aurora wolves also do more damage which i don't think they actually do that's a myth i think uh, as far as i have experienced it doesn't seem to make a difference but they do seem to take more damage. Generally speaking, I don't really notice much difference. If you run into an Aurora Wolf and Aurora Bear, they take roughly the same amount of efforts and arrows and things to kill. But I have had it happen that I shot a wolf in the head with, uh, with level 5 archery, and he was an Aurora Wolf, and he survived. And then he bled out eventually. Uh, so... That has happened to me, so I mean, it could have been a bug, but I have, uh, I do feel like the Aurora is a bit more persistent. Generally speaking, you don't want to go out when it's an Aurora. It's just so risky. <clears throat> All right. Here's the maple I was talking about earlier in the run. But there's always a maple there. there. Seems to be two maple, actually. We'll just grab it, because we definitely need to make another bow. Uh, whenever you fire the bow, you will lose some bow condition and the problem is that eventually it will break. Uh, but the thing is that as you level up archery, the durability use of the bow will also go down. So you, you, um, the, the better you are at archery, the less damage your bow takes from each use. Here's a wolf, we can use this as practice. I'm getting cold though, so I might shake. So what you can do, uh, make, try and make it so you're on flat ground, it makes it a bit easier. And then what you, you want to do, you want to trigger the charge by aiming at the wolf, and then you zigzag to make him run straight. So I'm going to trigger the charge by aiming at it, because once you aim at the wolf, he'll start charging you. I am freezing, so I might shake a bit, and maybe I'll miss, but hopefully not. So let's charge him with this, and he comes towards me, and I'm going to match his movements. comes towards me, and... Oh. And there you go, except uh, I missed and I hit him in the back. 
But if you hit the wolf, <laughs> there wasn't a perfect demonstration there. But if you hit the wolf, and actually I think I'm going to harvest this because I want the hides for the wolf clock. Uh, so I think we will actually uh, cook this uh, wolf. If you miss, like I did there, it does happen. I would, I would say that I miss probably, let's think, mm, one in... One in thirty times, maybe, when I kill a wolf, then I miss like I did now. One little fire. But if that happens, as long as you hit the wolf, the wolf is already injured when it enters a struggle with you, and it will do very little damage to you. So as you can see now, I'm not even bleeding. I didn't take any real damage except a little bit of torn clothing, and the only thing he really damaged, he damaged these, and he. Damage this a little bit, that's about it, really. So you will win the struggle easily if you miss. Okay, so that's that. Uh, we are a bit cold, so let's put on a few sticks here. And we're going to harvest this wolf. We probably will attract more wolves. And what I really want is the hide. So we're gonna grab that first. <coughs> There we go. This is cooked, so we'll just eat the rabbit meat right away. It doesn't have parasite risk. Put that there, 11 minutes. Uh, can I make a tea? Yeah, might as well do that. Let's make a tea. We can maybe grab one of these. There we go. And we can maybe make some more teas while we're at it. And we can also do a kilo of wolf meat. Might as well cook that while we have a fire going. We can hammer wolves. But I am deliberately making myself smell because I want them to come to me right now so I can kill more of them. Do another tea. I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. Pretty much do one kilo of meat and then one tea. We're gonna leave the last half kilo, we don't really need that. Then we're going to craft some of these. Make one of them as well. And then we might as well use these to cook the wolf meat. Ultimate insult, cooking the wolf next to it up a bit and we might as well go grab some sticks so yeah so that wasn't the perfect demonstration of how to kill a wolf because I did miss and hit him in the back but these things happen sometimes and also sometimes it's like performance issues like oh don't mess this up they're all watching you know <laughs> but it happens but in a way it's also a good illustration because there's no such thing as playing this game perfect you will make mistakes, you will get attacked, you will miss with an arrow or whatever, and you will die. If you have watched my 500 day video, and soon there's a 1000 day video on Interloper, I have been close to death many times. Sometimes it's a wolf that comes out of nowhere, and sometimes it's a wolf that I think, ah, I'll kill this wolf, and then I don't manage. Uh, I was in a tournament last year in 2021, where uh, you had to kill as many animals as you could. And I joined it and it went really well until suddenly there was one wolf that just zigzagged so much and uh, I missed my shot. And I was, I had decent clothing and I was about 60, 70% 70, 70 health. And he just killed me, killed me right away. 
uh, one of the few deaths I've had uh, the last year or so. Sure but it, you know, it happens. It happens. People die. Uh, people make mistakes, or they're just unlucky. So uh, let it be a lesson that even if you're watching this video, and maybe you're thinking, you know, that I'm quite good at it, or I make it look easy, but I can make mistakes too, and I can die, and the, I'm not different from anyone else, you know. You will die in this game a lot, but if you die, let it just be a lesson that you can use to improve. In my case, it was aim slightly lower. <laughs> I think I didn't have any more meat, so we'll make a tea. And we'll also put on some sticks here. There isn't any more teas to craft, so we're just gonna cook oops, as many of these as we can. We'll also cook this uh, peaches here that we found. Uh, we might as well make a herbal tea. Oh, we don't have water. Oh, we don't have water because I used it all. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. There we are. All done. But I would like some more water, so I'm going to make some. It should be fine. And because of that, we might as well grab this. I'm not sure I'm carrying and this we might as well harvest this, even if we don't eat it. We might as well harvest it. Just because you level up harvesting this way. And let's grab some more sticks as well. The wood burns very quickly here. You run out of it very fast when you have to do so much cooking. Are we looking with time here? Thirty-one, thirty-one. Surprised that another wolf hasn't showed up yet because there was one that I could hear not that far off. But it doesn't seem to have a. Uh, like this one, you can hear it. It's surprising that it hasn't actually done anything. There we are. We have a bit more water now. Things are looking. Things are coming up Mill House. And now we can leave. We are heavy, but we got a bunch of stuff. Things are looking fine. If you want to hunt wolves in a bit of a safer way, what you can do is do exactly what I just did but also have a torch. So you drop the torch, and then you try and lure the wolf towards it, you know, do exactly the same thing, you know, and then try and get him towards you, uh, or just stand next to the torch. And then, as I talked about before, the, the light radius of the torch it will stop the wolf from actually attacking you. It will run away, just like I, I showed you with the stones. The wolf will run away if it gets too close to the torch. <clears throat> and you can take that opportunity to just shoot the wolf then, and you'll be much safer. If I had had a torch in my hand, I probably would have done that, but because I didn't have one, uh, I didn't do it. Let's grab all of these sticks here, so that we have wood. And we're also going to hunt, check for moose before this video wraps up. But it might not be that. <clears throat> I'm surprised there aren't more wolves at the moment. Usually there's uh, more wolves around here. Uh, it is early game and there's usually less wolves very early in the game but still it's a bit strange that there isn't more of them mm. let's see 
Okay. How many more torches do I have actually? Not that many. I think I would like to maintain this fire and make a bit more water back in the base. Because I'm definitely going to do some more crafting in not that long. So having some more water would be good. So I think I will try and maintain this torch. It should be fine. So we've been on a bit of a journey now, heading to trappers and everything. We, we didn't find a moose that I wanted, but we killed two bears. We killed a wolf and some rabbits. So I haven't killed a deer yet though, <clears throat> but deer is quite easy to kill. Um, you might have to shoot them from a distance, but you can also just sneak up on them, just crouch and get as close as you can. And then you, you just stand up and immediately shoot. And then the, they won't have time to react that you're standing so close. So that's uh, how you do it. You'll get the hang of it. There is, there is probably the hardest thing to hunt because they are so skitterish. So it will take a little bit of practice. And you should expect that hunting deer will often lead to a bleed out. There is a deer. We can actually, we could actually try and kill this deer as an example because it is close to the the trappers, not trappers, camp office. So we could actually try and uh, hunt this deer. Uh, you can use a, a glitch to make it turn towards you like this. It only works when it's uh, walking over. Bit of an expert, but if you want, you can actually change the trajectory of the, of the deer by turning like this. And sometimes it will change direction. Doesn't seem to work now. Okay, well that's fine. It's, it's an exploit anyway that shouldn't be in the game. So I'm going to try and get as close as I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up and try and hit him in the head as I stand up. Because I can't shoot now. See, it won't let me shoot. It just won't let me. So I need to get closer. I can either stand further away and try and hit him from a distance. Or I can try and get closer. If you get too close though, you'll still scare off. Get closer and then try and shoot him in the neck. Uh, this might be okay, but he's that's a bit of a short animation. This is a good one because he's in profile. We have a decent size to hit, uh, chance rather to hit him in the head or the neck. So let's see if he stops. Let's try now. Oh wow. I did actually hit him. I did look like I hit him in the neck to me. It looked like a neck shot. But he didn't die. It has nothing to do with the arrow breaking. Because uh, it does the same damage anyway. But, uh, huh. Okay, well that there is going to run uh, away and bleed off somewhere. Uh, he might bug out though, because I'm going to go indoors now. But yeah, that's how you do it. So that was uh, a little bit surprising. That maybe I didn't quite hit him in the neck. It might have been at the uh, shoulder. And that's why I didn't die. But if this was, if I wasn't heading back now, I would follow it and track it down, and then you just uh, harvest it there, and then you have their meat. So we'll kill some more there uh, another time. Yeah. Wait, what happened to my torch? I completely forgot about my uh, torch. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I dropped my torch, and I totally forgot about it. I'm not sure if it's still burning though. Let's see if it is. Because uh, I got too fixated on the on the deer. I think this is the one I dropped, isn't it? So this is now burnt out. Yeah. So I lost my, my fire. But that's okay. Um, that's alright. <clears throat> How much water do I have, actually? Uh, it will probably be enough. So let's head inside. We might do some more crafting while we're in here too. Make some more arrows, for example. Uh, this is why I wanted the water, but we'll be okay with that. How much food am I carrying? Quite a lot. I don't think I'll be eating this soon. Uh, we'll also drop this. We don't have anything that requires lots of crafting time. But. So here we have some more deer hide. How many is it? It's two, right? Yeah, it's two, so we can't craft anything with that. So we're gonna drop these 
down and we'll drop our bear hide here. Let's actually have the light on so we can see a bit better. We'll drop our bear hides here that are curing. This is going to take several days before these are ready. We have one rabbit pelt, but we need uh, more. But we have four of them so we can make the... Actually, it's more than that. And make the hat. We need more wolf pelts to make anything with that, which we'll get. And we have a bunch of guts here, which we'll also put here. There we are. And we have some more saplings. I'll probably use this. And then I'll put these this one down. We have more maple. They're all cured, so we can make a bunch of bowls if you want. Let's go over here and... Oops. Uh, open this. Let's just sort this out. We have feathers here. And actually, before it gets too dark, I think I am going to make a few arrow shafts here. Let's see if we can make some more arrows in the morning. Uh, so let's just sort this out. We'll put this in there and this in there. We can actually make 10 arrows, 11 arrows we can make. And how many shafts do we have? We have five, so we need, we need actually two more than of these birch ones. And we can make a lot of arrows. Then we can be a bit more reckless with the arrows as well, because um, it doesn't matter if you shoot and miss, for example, from a distance. Yeah. I don't know if I can actually make any uh, any arrows right now. Oh, I only have seven of these. Okay, so we can't make seven, and we can make. Sorry, we can't make. Um, can't make 11 we can make seven let's make see if we can make one nah it's too dark that's fine we're gonna go up and sleep and we'll sort our inventory out in the morning we'll do some crafting first though let's yeah let's eat uh we'll eat the wolf meat which doesn't give that much calories but it gives uh, a little bit we'll eat the rabbit I will also eat these uh, peaches here. Another drink. And then we'll drop the can, which we don't need. And we'll sleep. We can only sleep, I think, seven hours. And after that, it's gonna we're gonna be rested and probably light as well. Uh, it is not light yet, so I think because I don't think we have anything to like craft or break down. Except this. So we'll just pass time for two hours, I think. And then we'll sleep for one hour. <clears throat> yeah. And I might save some of this water. Uh, and not... Ah, we got quite a lot. We can, we can do it this way. Let's uh, sleep one hour. <laughs> And then I think you'll be light enough to make uh, some more arrows. So we're going to go do that. Use the, if you're walking in the dark and you can't figure out where you are, just use the windows to navigate and you'll find out where you are. And it'll be relative to the windows. Like this. Yeah. And now we can use the workbench. So now let's make some more arrows. Uh, see, this one it takes an hour and 12. This takes 45, this takes an hour and a half. So it's much better to use these. We can only make seven, so we'll make seven. And we'll level up some archery while we do it as well. Parasites got cured, that's great. And there we are. So let's sort out some inventory stuff. This now goes here. We also want to put in these here. I don't have more uh, arrowheads, but we can always make some at a later time. And then we're going to organize ourselves a bit. Here. So we don't need two of these. Uh, this one has a lot of fuel in it, but we'll use this another time. We're going to refill the one we have. I always like have a storm, having a storm lantern with me. Storm lantern's great. It gives uh, light when you don't actually need to use a torch or anything. So it's a really, really good tool. And it's windproof as well. What else? You don't need two flares. I don't think we need a can opener anymore either. <clears throat> so we'll put this here. 
Uh, let's put this there, actually. How many T's and things? We have a lot of T's that we won't be needing as of yet. If we do get parasites, we'll probably come, thirsty. We'll come back here. Because at the moment we have... Uh, we'll put 12 here. We need 20 if this happens. But if that happens, we'll go get the other 8. Yeah, that's fine. We also don't need this many pain-killing T's. So we'll put some of these here too. Uh, I guess we'll carry the rest with us for now. Then we have some clothing. We might do some repairs on that. We have a book that we don't need. We have this that we don't need. And another book we don't need, but we might read it later. We'll put this uh, just here. I like having them out so I can see these things, although it's not really that big deal. There we are, and let's see here. Let's go upstairs and organize ourselves a little bit. I'm also going to grab some cloth here for repairs. And I'll go upstairs, sort ourselves out a little bit. Then here we got, and we can put in uh, this. And we need to repair a few things here until we can craft any kind of leggings. We might, might need more cloth actually. Is there anything else to put in here? Uh, I think we got everything really. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think for the stuff we have in here, we'll, we can break these down. We don't need to keep those. And I'm going to take one of these out too. Yeah, let's also grab this. Uh, actually, let's grab this pillow here. It has two. And also this. Three. And then we're going to just do a few basic repairs to get the condition up a little bit. I could eat anything. Uh, we can repair this again just to make it warmer. And I probably will still go out to look for the moose even though it's a bit late. And we also want to repair this. Yeah, I think that's okay for now. So uh, we'll put in the stuff we're not using. I'll harvest this later. Uh, and I think that's it. Yes. So then we'll eat this bear meat here. And we'll have a drink. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do one last check. The last thing we do in this video, we're going to see if we can find a um, a moose of in fall on muskeg. And if not, maybe part two. Let's check to see if the deer has died. Deer killed one. So the the deer that I shot earlier, it's around in the world somewhere. And it's dead somewhere. <clears throat> it would be nice to try and find it, but I'm not that bothered about it because it didn't have an arrow in it. The arrow broke when I shot it, so the arrow is already kind of back in my possession. I wouldn't say no to the hide and also the meat since it's uh, dead meat. Or was it this one that was burning earlier? Oh, well. But uh, I don't really want to look for it right now. Uh, it can be anywhere, most likely in this direction. I don't want to look for it until crows are out and you can hear the crows. And right now they are uh, not out, I don't think. So what we're going to do now, we're going to check to see if there is a moose spawn. And if not, then this will probably be the end of this walkthrough, so to speak. Let's grab some sticks. Sticks are life. If I see another wolf, I can try and kill it as well. There's also another bear over here, uh, the fallen muskeg bear. But we don't really need to uh, to kill that, I suppose. But there is the moose spawn. So I'm gonna see if we can find a moose. And if you're still watching this, I have lost track of how long this video is, but I'm assuming it's going to be at least six hours, just like the first interloper walkthrough I did. I hope this has been useful. Some of the stuff I do in this video is very greedy. This is 
The way I play it now is kind of how I often normally play it. Uh, I still did a few things a bit slower to explain things than if I just were to play by myself, but you get the idea. And as you can see, I play a bit recklessly where in the early game I get guts and hides and I kill rabbits and I carry them with me and I have stink on me and I attract all the wolves in the whole area and I just scare them up. But I do it because, as you can see, I'm setting up for a crafting uh, day and getting as many uh, guts and hides and saplings that I can and eventually get to a base which is usually camp office or trappers dump all of it in there and then we go uh, forge if we haven't found the tools yet and if we have uh, haven't found them we need to go look and then once we've uh, forged and have all the tools and arrowheads very often the other stuff is cured we can start making stuff and before you know it you're just really well off and again look at where we are right now it is day 16 and we are walking around and we are not cold, it's three degrees because of the clothing we have. We, I could make the rabbit uh, hat and the deer skin boots right away. Uh, I have two ski jackets, actually three. And my warmth is high enough that I can pretty much just travel without any cold issue. Um, I sometimes have low food, but that's just because I know what I'm doing to go get food. Uh, but uh, I usually could go and get some old cattails. Uh, by the river on a pond, I can go here and get more cattails, I can go kill a deer, get some rabbits, it's really not an issue uh, at the moment. But if you want to be, if you're not sure what you're doing, you should make sure you always have food. So let's see if we see a moose here. We have the markings, but is there a moose? It doesn't look like there is one. That is unfortunate. We'll grab these cattails here though. Uh, because there should be a few cattails here. So let's grab those. We could kill the bear, but I don't really see the point. It would just mean that I uh, harvest the bear and um, and have to cook all of that stuff again. Uh, what inst I, I instead would do is something completely different. I would like to have a moose killed just so I could have the hide curing. Because in the ideal world I would find a moose here. And then I would, uh, I would kill it. <clears throat> then I would leave the hide in my base. And then I would leave that there to cure while I go and do something else, while I go to Summit or Ash Canyon or something to that effect. But I if there's... I would say Norway is pretty cool. Didn't I turn off the sound alerts? Yeah, it did. Okay, so someone followed me and uh, hmm, I have disabled the, the sound alerts, but uh, they still, <laughs> still show up. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, we might have one last look at the trappers, just to see if there is a moose there. And if there isn't one, well, that's going to be the end of this. But I can, I know exactly what to do for a follow-up if you'd like to see that. So we're going to head to trappers just to see if the moose is there. And if it isn't, then so be it. But until we get there, I will say a couple things before we end this. So we're heading towards the trapper's moose now to see if it's there. And I just wanted to point out a few things. Uh, this is not the first interloper video that I've made. I made the starter bow one and I also made a guide for Ash Canyon spawn, Timberwolf Mountain spawn and Hush River Valley spawn. So this is the fifth of these videos. Now in a lot of these videos, uh, at the end of it I say something like, <clears throat> if you would like to see um, you know, more of this type of thing, then I might do a part two. And uh, then I end up making more videos and uh, I always feel it's a bit awkward to go back to do part two of a Timberwolf Mountain spawn and not part two of an Ash Canyon spawn. And why would you do two part twos when it would be kind of, you'd lose the linearity of it. So, uh, some People have said in comments on my previous videos that they would like to see a part two of these interloper spawn videos. 
And of course, this one easily could have been in two parts because it's very long, but I thought I'd make like an ultimate video that you can binge through. And if you made it all this way, great job. Um, but if you would like to see a part two, then I will make a part two of this one and we can call it Interloper Made Easier <laughs> or whatever. And I know exactly what part two would be. Uh, regardless of whether we find a moose here or not, I know what we would do in part two. Here's the wolf. Actually, I might try and kill this wolf just to have another go at that. Yeah. So we're going to do this again and uh, see if I fare any better. Might be embarrassing, might not. So I'm going to walk backwards and try and get the wolf into my shot. And then we'll see what happens. So we are intriguing the charge. I'm waiting for him to get a bit closer. It's pretty much going straight forward, a bit left, a bit more left, more left, and there, right in the face. And that's how you kill a wolf. And I don't have the mag lens, but because it's a clear day, uh, I'm just going to harvest this right away and just take it with me. Not that, though. We'll just take these and this and this. Uh, but we're going to do it in segments. We're going to do it like this. Uh, meat first. We're not going to take the guts, I don't think. And then we'll do this. Which will be by hand. And now we have two of these wolf hides as well. We'll cook the meat later. I want to see if the moose is in. So yeah, that was a little bit better, but in effect I basically did the same thing, except this time I hit the wolf in the face. If you have a campfire or a torch, you just do the same thing. Uh, and you'll have more protection because the wolf might run away. If there's no uh, moose, we can also kill a deer here just to show how that's done. But yes, if you want to see a part two, I know what part two would be, uh, regardless of whether there's a moose here or not. What I would do now is I would head to Ash Canyon because I want the technical backpack. Uh, black rock with ballistic vest and a noise mate, that's really not important. You know, maybe do that one day, but that's really not a priority. Oh, what we want to do is we want to head to uh, Ash Canyon and get the technical backpack because then we can carry more stuff. So what I would do is I would travel from here to Ash Canyon and the gold mine, get the backpack, and I would also go to the summit on the way back, and get all I can there. And then I would, uh, if I see a moose or anything else on the way, I would kill that and take anything I can, leave it to cure, and then try and get all that stuff back here. And that whole shenanigans will probably take several hours to do. So that would be a part two. So if you would like to see that, I can make that uh, one day of this video, but I don't think I will do a part two of any of the other interloper tutorials I've done because it just takes too long. So we didn't have a moose. Uh, we're going to put this at the cure. And we're going to cook this afterwards. Uh, let's drop this. We'll cook it out here. But before we go, because we didn't have a moose, we'll try and kill another deer. <coughs> we'll try again this time and get closer. Or maybe we should try, just for illustration purposes, do a more of a long distance hunting. If you don't want to do the crouching tactic that I do, you could also try and shoot it from a distance. It is a lot harder though. Uh, you have to kind of plan your shot and hit pretty accurately. It is a bit harder and it's more likely that the deer will run away. But we can give it a try. Okay, we got it. And this one is quite close, so we could try getting this one too. Uh, maybe get him a bit further down the slope because then it won't be awkward with the, with the stupid campfire. Wait, I'm just stop. we should stop here. That one a hit, but it bled out. Let's see if we can hit uh, the moving target. Yeah, there we go. So we got both of them. Uh, so that's one way of doing it as well. It's much harder from a distance, as you saw that I, I did miss once. But it also is... Uh, uh, you're safer that way. Okay, I want... Uh, I want to harvest this. Unfortunately, the wind kind of picked up, but it's not so bad. We're going to do exactly what I did earlier because it's not that cold. So we're going to harvest all of this meat. Cook all of this stuff. Let's see though. Am I going to lose? Yeah, I am going to lose. 
the uh, well, fed of this, so we're going to do that. So before I call it, I'm actually going to harvest the cook this right now. Uh, we're going to make a little fire in here. This pack is getting kind of heavy. Uh, because I think the wind is going to blow this out, you see. We're going to make a little fire in here. I don't think you can uh, not. I don't think the fire in here can blow out, you see. Let's do it. Uh, too windy to start a fire. Right in here. Really? I'll do like this then. A little bit awkward, but... <clears throat> Let's cook some deer meat here. I think we have enough water. Maybe we should make one water as well. Yeah, we'll cook this. Or at least some of it. I cook the rest in the morning. I would like to go get the maglens as well. We got quite a few sticks. Two hour. Yeah. There we are. Drop this here. Let's just grab my arrows. Yeah, if you just click, yeah. if you click on the carcass, you'll collect the arrows that's in the carcass. If any of them have fallen off, then you won't collect those. One percent. I could eat anything right now. Maybe a couple more of these. I think that should be fine. Grab the rest of this meat. And I think we can also grab this. Hasn't frozen yet. I'm getting cold now. Taking some cold damage here. But we'll be fine. Ooh. I forgot that running drains it much faster. <laughs> I was close to losing well fed there. More wolves. Now yeah, this is now done. We can eat this. Eat that. Have a drink. And how much water do we have actually? We have not that much. So we're going to make some more water and cook that. And do this. And I want to warm up a bit before I harvest the rest of this deer. Although right now it seems like the wind has died down. So we actually are going to do this. This takes 45 minutes. This, this needs to burn for an hour and a half. This. <coughs> We're going to make another fire then, here, to harvest the rest of this, and just cook it. Come on, little fire, come on. There we go. And we'll put. Something. We don't actually have that many sticks, but it will we'll be fine. We can put the dead meat on here. I'm freezing. And we can harvest this at least as much as we can, which we I think four kilos will be the most. Oh, it got cold again. I guess we're going back here then. Let's just warm up a bit. How much water do we have now? Let's make one liter of water. Cook another one of these. We don't have much wood, unfortunately. But that's okay. We'll just do what we can. And I think we will warm up and just cook this too. That's too windy, really. Oh, that's okay. I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. Let's see if I can grab how much is left of this. Quite a lot. Nah, we need to grab this. 
Otherwise, we're gonna be it's too cold. We'll cook the rest later. Let's head indoors. See the hut in front of us there. We'll cook the rest of this in the morning. Go, and we're gonna drop the raw meat out here. Take the other stuff with us. <coughs> there we are. Let's also drop this. We'll put notes here. Now we took this with us. Uh, cook the meat inside. Finish all this thing there. Put it back to the camp office stuff. And to AC for backpack. That's our plan. Okay, let's sleep to uh, recover a bit. Because we have deer meat, we don't have to worry about parasites. Sleep for 10 hours. Hypothermia will be cured. Hopefully, the deer carcass didn't despawn, but I doubt it. And let's have another drink. And we'll sleep another one hour, I think. Still have parasite risk of 1%. Okay, yeah, so there we are. Uh, this has been a 17 day interloper tutorial or walkthrough, if you want to call it that. And we got everything really. We got the tools early, we got clothes early. And as you saw, the importance of getting clothing early, just go around and the plane crash was a big bonus. But even if you didn't have that, you just go and loot as much clothing as you can and you know dedicate one day to repairing it so that they get a little bit better. Because the warmth bonus, you can see, even now on day 17, just having 12 degrees warmth, it makes a big difference. You can just walk around and not be cold. It makes the game a lot easier. And the way I played it was very greedy. I got a lot of rabbit pelts and deer hides and things, and I smelled and attracted a lot of wolves, but you can just get rid of them with the torch and the stone. But it did allow me to craft this and also this, and it gives more warmth that way. And then uh, we killed two bears. That was, uh, when was that? That was over here somewhere, I think. Yeah, it was over here. We killed two bears and we also killed uh, three there, although one is out there somewhere, and two wolves. So this is looking uh, quite good. Uh, this is a pretty strong run. A couple of times I was close to losing well fed because I, I was paying attention to it, but I was quite close and I had to drink teas and uh, cattails to maintain it. But uh, I wasn't worried about parasites or eating bear food because we had so many raishi teas that if I had parasites we'd just deal with it, not a big deal. Uh, but some of the way I've played this uh, this video has been quite reckless, you know, I, I, I don't play it safe. I, I fight a wolf without having a fire, uh, which would protect me if I missed my shot at the wolf, for example. Um, I start harvesting in a blizzard. I walked from the barn to Mystery Lake in a blizzard. And all of these things are very risky to do. But if you feel confident doing them, then you'll be fine. But if you're not confident doing it, then you should play it safer. You don't need to rush. You can just take your time and do things slower. You know, do it in your pace. And remember the golden rule that I talked about earlier. The golden rule is if you are still alive, then you are not doing it wrong. Okay, so even if you don't play it how I play it here, if you're still alive, you're just fine. You don't need to do any of the stuff that I did. You play it your way. That's the beauty of this game. You can play it however you want to do. You can use exploits if you want, or you don't have to do it. You can play greedily, you can play it slow, you can do uh, higher or lower difficulty, whatever you want to do. You play it how you want to, and there's no judgment 
either way. But yeah, that has been this for this uh, walkthrough. It was uh, quite long, but I wanted to make something special, a kind of like ultimate guide. And we kind of were able to cover pretty much everything in this video except killing a moose. Uh, but I have done it in other videos. However, uh, and as I said before, I say this all the time, like if you want to see a part two, I can make one. And for this one, I do mean it. If you do want to see a continuation of this, I can make one. I can't promise when I'll do that, but I will keep this file. And if people would like to see a part two, I can do that, which would be me, uh, well, finishing some cooking here, of course, but then I would head to Ash Canyon while things like the bear hides cure. And I would look for a moose, especially on the way. And I would get the technical backpack. And then I would also summit. And then I would head back here. So it would be basically a, a tour going from here back to Pleasant Valley, Timberwolf Mountain, Ash Canyon, and then back down. Probably not to Black Rock, at least not this time. Uh, and then resituate ourselves. That probably would be the whole part two, I think. So yeah, I think that's it. I hope this has been useful or at least entertaining. If you fell asleep to this and you're just watching my videos to sleep, I hope you slept well. <laughs> Which is fine, I don't mind that. And I uh, hope you survive well. And I'll see you next time, survivors. Stay awesome and take care.